Hey guys, so I know you guys have been waiting for this for a very long time. However, before we start off, I just want to say there is no new parts to this. This is just all the parts that were on the old channel combined together into one large video, parts 1 to 17. When there is more parts, we will cover them. Don't worry. We get quest we get asked this on a, almost a daily basis. When's the next part coming? Truth is, we just don't know. Uh, not until the author comes back. And uh, hopefully he will, because... It's such a great story. If you haven't heard this one, you guys are really in for a treat. If you have, well, I'm sure you guys will be more than happy to hear this one again because it's, it is one of the best, I have to say. But before we get into this, I just want to say we got some definitely new science fiction models up for sale. So I'm just going to flash them up on screen and uh, they definitely look adequately scientifically gothic. Can we say that? I don't know. But look... I've kept you here long enough. Let's get into this one. Bimi, a reincarnated Anon, born in some early modernish world with fantasy elements. Father is a duke, so I am at least well off as a sixth son. Have some freedom as I am a distant spare, but I need to be seen as proper for the family. Invented a few minor stuff from Earth. Pen designs, smokeless powder, and the plastic wrap in the end of toothpicks. Early twenties I get sent by father to witness some speech by the king. Some stars are moving, and the eleven major kingdoms have called on some ancient treaty to rally together if such an omen occurs. What the hell is going on? Stars? Get closer. Is that a fucking ship? The Imperium has arrived, and I am freaking the fuck out. Based on how the Imperials greeted us, I am thinking this is the Great Crusade Era. The nobles of higher rank get invited to a party on board Big E's flagship. I can't say no without causing a huge scandal and possibly ruining things for my family. Shit. I'm trying to play cool and stay out of the way, and the other nobles know I'm an introvert so nothing too far out about that. While eating some of the bomb ass food in the corner, I see the custodies walk down the big ass stairs, announcing the emperor's arrival. He looks even more awe-inspiring than the artwork. I try to calm myself down. I almost forgot he is a hugely powerful psyker. I need to keep a low profile. I am just the distant spare to a jick and a minor inventor. I'm not that interesting. There is no way he can tell I am a reincarnate with meta-knowledge about the setting, him, his sons and chaos. From the midway down the stairs, the Emperor looks at me dead in the eyes. Gold lights seemingly peer into my soul. Fuck! I drop the wine I was drinking and run blindly in panic. I don't even know why I ran. I just bolted the second I felt those golden eyes peer into my soul. I don't even know where I could even run. I'm on his ship. I run past servants and menials and they don't even notice or try and stop me. I run into something and bounce off it into the ground. I see a custodian walking over to me. God, he looks like a giant. He doesn't seem to even notice me, likely just ignore me while preventing me from crossing the doorway. I just take it in stride and try to back to the other door in the hall. Another custodian is blocking that too. I didn't even see them arrive or follow. I start panicking more. I try telling them I was looking for a bathroom, that I need to get back to the party, that I need to know why they just won't let me leave this hallway. They aren't harming me, just preventing me from leaving and staying dead quiet. Time passes. I start coming down from the fight or flight energy and start falling into despair. I'm gonna die. I'm gonna get mind raped and blanked. I have no idea how long I've been held here. I'm still bawling and bemoaning my fate when I hear it. Calm down! Only I didn't hear it as a voice, more like a loud thought in my head. I feel cold, devoid of emotion, empty, nothingness. We have much to discuss. What? I turn and see a really old man in really plain brown robes and hood. Holy shit, it's Malkador! Well, <laughs> <laughs> I need you need to calm down and stop thinking so openly. Now be quiet and follow me. He turns around and starts walking, clearly expecting me to actually follow him. The custodies are seemingly gone. Why didn't I just fake sickness and skip the party? I am in some sort of study. Malkador is sorting through books and scrolls and is ignoring me. 
I sit at some chair in the corner, sipping a glass of water a servant silently handed me. I stop trying to talk with the sigillite and try to relax. The room is dead quiet besides a ticking grandfather clock. He will be here soon. And why does he want to speak with me? I hopelessly ask to try and bullshit my way out of here. He looks at me like an idiot and doesn't respond. We are back to awkward silence. Malco is writing something down... Please don't refer to me as Malco. Yeah, I don't think Malkador <laughs> said you like being too happy about being called Malkador. Listen, or Malcolm. listen. All right, Mally boy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Mally boy is pulling a Tywin Lannister on me. Well, hopefully the big E gets here quickly and steals my mind quickly. I'm now bored as shit. Though, Malkador has some cool shit in here. Is that a Soviet-era Sputnik satellite? Yeah, Malkador had a really weird thing with collecting old world human artifacts. There's a small, <laughs> there's a short story of him getting his hands on the Rosetta Stone. The Rosetta Stone? Yeah, but this is set like, you know, in the year like 30,000. Oh. So it is, it's actually really interesting. He's a bit like a magpie almost. <laughs> shiny! Yeah, it is. Give me the shiny! Yeah, I think it's pretty cool though. I really like it, you know. The writing stops. I peek at Mally Boy looking at me <laughs> with an Stop calling me Mally Boy! <laughs> <laughs> I peek at Mally Boy looking at me with an intense expression. Is that really Sputnik 1? Or a later model or replica? I ask, wondering. I don't know its name. Just that it's the oldest Terran satellite recovered. He takes a deep breath as if resigned. What is a Soviet? He asks me with great interest. A workers group. The name was co op by the USSR after the First World War. He looks at me with clearly more questions. I explained a bit of the world wars I knew of and a bit of layman knowledge of the era. He's taken quite a few notes. He seems conflicted. We should wait till the Emperor arrives to save time explaining your situation. I try desperately not to think of the big E's past. Malkador stares intently at me. Please stop reading my mind. It is really unsettling. He huffs. Then stop thinking so openly and at least guard your thoughts. I'm doing this without any effort on my part. Your mind's an open book, leaking all your surface thoughts. That explains Big E noticing me when I thought of his sons and chaos nature. How do you, Mally boy, seem... <laughs> I am suddenly pushed against the wall. Okay, I will stop. Our master has been delayed, but he should be heading here soon. That gets my attention. What will I even tell the emperor? Whatever he requires you to. I know that, but... What is going to be required of me? What will happen to me? I'm starting to panic again. We are more interested in what you know than you yourself, Malkador tells me, seemingly bored again. I start thinking about the time period I find myself in. How many of the Primarchs have been found? What can... Three. We currently have found three of his sons. I go deadly quiet. Is the second still around? He was the third found if I remember right. Should I even ask? Do you know where the others are? He is staring blankly at me now. Kinda. I know a few names of worlds, but not where those worlds are. Malkador stands from his desk. Even just the world's names might help us narrow our search. We must know. I start listing off the words I can recall off the top of my head, and a brief overview of some of them. With great vigour as if in victory. Did I just fuck the timeline? Oh shit, how will this change things? I suddenly feel something in my head. Malkador, is that you? He looks at me in question. I feel something in my head right now. The feeling vanishes, and I feel the numbness from when Malkador calmed me down in the hall. It is our lord checking up on you. Be at ease. That was him? How did I even notice if... He must have let me know, or was just pinging me to make sure I was still here or something? I ask for some more water. He should be here soon. Before Malkador even finished requesting my water, and some of my favourite spice breads from the plant side, the fucker is messing with me. The big E himself walks right in. He is wearing the white robes with a red scarf thing around his shoulders. He just walks in, no guards, or even Malkador greeting him. His eyes are like glowing molten gold. He just walks right in and up to me. He isn't as tall now as what he was at the party. Maybe that's just an attempt to keep me calm, or just moving around easier? Let's try this again without the panic running. His voice is like fucking silk. He offers his hand and I shake it without thinking about it. So you are Terran originally? Yes, how did you know? 
It is many a forgotten custom and all but Terra. Really? I guess nobody planet side did handshakes either. What era do you come from? I remember it was about 2020-ish AD when I died. I think I died. I don't recall what happened. I regained my former memories when I was six. They came slowly over a few years. He seemed quite stirred by this. I had my agents do a brief overview of your life so far. That would explain your inventions with your lack of much higher education as well as your reputation for being aloof. If you reincarnate again, don't stand out as much. It would have made you a target if you weren't not a duke's son. Shit, was I really that weird? I decided to take that advice, if my condition is repeated. Wait, am I a perpetual now? I don't believe so. He places his left hand on my head. I feel a shock and drop to my knees. You are now. What did you do? I was in shock, on the verge of tears. I didn't want to live forever. That was asking for trouble. I awakened your soul's potential. You have abysmal psychic talent, but your soul and mind are essentially natural relightning candles. I merely reinforced your soul. What? I boosted your soul, as it was capable of perpetual hood. But why? Your knowledge makes you too valuable to risk, and trustworthy agents are rare. But I have no skills you need, and you just met me. Doesn't matter. You now have all the time in the world, he says quietly. What if I don't want to live forever? I say with a tinge of anger. If you know about the setting, my sons, the enemy, and me, then you know humanity needs champions. Everyone that is able must be brought into the fold if the dream is to be achieved. By making you a perpetual, you're now tied to me and humanity as a whole. Our future is your future. Rest assured, you will be provided training and allies. My lord, we've talked about this. You need to ease him into it. Not now, Malkador. He just needs to see so he will hold nothing back. Don't I at least get to feel like I had a choice in this? No. No. <laughs> no. 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 You don't. Well, fuck. How will I explain this to my family? What do I even say to them? Malkador steps towards me, handing me a small scroll. You are being raised up as the Emperor's cupbearer, a post you will keep till you are fully prepped and trained. This will also give us time to get you your knowledge. After that, we will see what lays next. You are going to make me an errand boy, aren't you? Of sorts. He chuckles. Mate, that's a gift of a job in 40k. What the fuck are you bitching about? <laughs> Being an errand boy in 40k. Like, you just lucky not get turned into a servitor, right? You get your fucking brain scooped out and... <laughs> fuck that. <laughs> that's like the... Mate, I'd do anything for that job in 40k. <laughs> fuck that. You will not be taken with us yet. You will help us bring compliance to... Insert planet name here. And we will ensure your family are insured a place in the Imperium. Well, that is at least something. The hell even is my life. You get used to it, Malkador shrugs. My time back home didn't go well. What in the hells did you do, boy? Father was pissed. When I told him of my new job, he accused me of abandoning the family. I was stripped of my noble status by him disowning me. What the actual fuck? He should have been happy his spare got aligned to the motherfucking Emperor. It appears our king accused my father of subversion for me gaining my new post. Father thinks I'm at fault here, and I guess I kind of am in a way. But this is bullshit. Maybe the whole custodies escort back home bypassing the capital didn't help. My brothers want to know what happened, but I literally can't tell them, or any other, that the big E offered me a job. It also doesn't help that brother Legos, yeah that's his name, he gave me, doesn't speak a word to my family or our servants. Legos only reminds me each hour how long I have to pack and settle my affairs before he drags me back to the big E. On good news, I'm out of an arranged marriage I didn't know about, though mother is besides herself about it. Big E had his agents calm father and the king down. Official story is the emperor and I hit it off at the party and I totally didn't freak out like a little bitch. Home has been officially brought into the fold. The Northern Kingdom tried to go solo, they lost all trade, their economy shit itself, and their rival kingdom was granted first rights to uplifting. The North caved after the nobles put the king's heir in power instead. I don't know what their king was expecting. My room on the ship is nice, I have a whole suite. 
Even the sink is gold. What the fuck? Emps. 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 Like emps. Emps got me a sweet necklace. <laughs> And a humby sized bolt pistol with way too much bling that is somehow my badge of office. Emps and Mal. <laughs> Emps and Mal. Emps and Mal want me as a cupbearer so they can use my mind and reference material or something. Legos was made my personal guard. During my first lesson with Malkador, he tested my psyker abilities and potential. Utterly pathetic. If the average human is a match in the warp, you're birdie too. This is a waste of both of our lives. So much for that. I was chilling with Molly, bro. Cease! <laughs> <laughs> you need to relax sometime, Malkador. Also, get out of my head. Stop thinking so loud then. I lean across the desk towards the sigilite. You could just talk. He gives me an unamused glare. Points at the blackboard we are working on. Whose banner is this? How Seagree? Please be right. What do they specialise in? Water treatment? Wrong on both accounts. This is House Greasy. That mistake would cause massive backlash and scandal. They are the suppliers of lubricant to the Terrawatt clans. You cannot afford these types of mistakes when we must return to Terra. My head hits the desk. This is R4 of my third day of lessons under Malkador. Maybe you should take a break. You're not in a condition for my methods yet. Thanks. I will study the tombs you lent me. Promise. Lego appears out of nowhere to grab the pile of books before I'm even standing again. How do you do that? Do what? The custody tilts his head at me. How can someone so bulky and wearing that gold armour be so stealthy? Malkador puts his hand on my shoulder as he passes me to the door. We are assigning you staff and guards, but it will take time to vet and screen them properly. Until then, please stay out of trouble. I'm just a cupbearer. Won't that stand out? He scoffs, not bothering to answer. Legos, are we meeting the Emperor later today? I turn back towards the gold giant. He has been my minder lately, until my staff is granted to me, I guess. Not till way later. Our master will come to you. Okay, that's weird. I have yet to go to his personal study. Maybe they're still vetting me? I will deal with that thought later. I was back in my suite listening to an audio file of certain Terra noble families while eating my dinner. Grok's steak is fucking tasty, yo. Yo. <laughs> yo. Oh, see, see the way the guy likes this shit. It's like fucking... It's, so, it's, I don't it's, it's a really weird way. It's like, I, you know what it is? It's like a 90s comedy on like in 40k. Yeah, can we put in some laugh tracks? Can we have like some 41 playing in the background? <laughs> yes. While yeah. he's like stomping around with his books on his yeah, back. Yeah, exactly. I'm in too deep in. It's like, well, I just want to party, girl. Yeah. You know what I mean? Malgrove's like, oh, naughty, naughty boy. The reason why he hasn't been in the Emperor's studies because they're holding him up, cake down the <laughs> No, you know, you know what it is. This is Fresh Prince Power and Malgrove said you like is the butler. And the Emperor is Uncle Phil. <laughs> so it is. Yeah. And Legos is fucking Carlton. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We'll go with that. Yeah, That's a good analogy. <laughs> Somebody write a 40k Fresh Prince rap down below. Oh, I want to see that. Please, please, Fresh yeah. Prince rap down below. That'd be fun as fuck. <laughs> I have no idea what this mash paste is next to it, but it's filling and tasting great with butter, so whatever. I'm on my way. That's my call. I rush to finish my food and pause the recording. I hear the door tone just as I'm about to finish cleaning up. Coming! I yell as I rush to the door. Can't keep the master of mankind waiting after all. Oh my god. <laughs> I open the door to see Valdor and Lego standing there quietly. Valdor doesn't even glance at me. No emps though. Sorry, let me fix that. Suddenly the emperor is standing right in front of me between Valdor and Legos. Legos. Legos? Legos. Leg, Lego. I keep wanting to say leg, Legos. Legos. To try and make it sound better, but it's Legos. Well, it's not <laughs> no, no. Legos. I tend to block my presence when in this part of the ship. Force of habit. I just nod. Not the strangest thing I've seen lately. He walks in my quarters as I step aside and follow. Have you sent word to the world eight, sorry, warhounds yet? I'm not sure just when Angron got the nails. Honestly, that's a great idea. If you can get your whole hands on fucking angle on before you get some nails in, maybe you could actually not be a psychopath for five minutes. You know, <laughs> honestly, he's a bit over the top, but he's one of my favourite 
quite more experience for yeah. handgun. However, he's just so mentally unstable that honestly the nicest thing that you could do is to just put him down. <laughs> you know what I mean? He's just that mentally unhinged with the picture's nails in him. Like it's really bad, all right? I have confirmed the location of Nasseria. However, the twelfth are too far out to arrive there with any reasonable timeline. I have sent word to the thirteenth as they are closest and will have time to retrieve 12 as well on the way back. He casually sits on the couch that is in my main room. No offence, but you should stop that. He lifts his head slightly. Is there an issue with the 13th Legion? No, referring to the Primarchs by number. It's dehumanising and makes them feel like tools. It backfires hard. He pauses. Literal statue mode. Noted. Maybe that just fixed the whole timeline, be honest with you, at that point. You know, maybe... like. <laughs> Oh, I can't get into it. I'll be off. We just start talking about this. <laughs> Again, I reload and fire off three shots with the last pistol at the target down the track. My hand adjusts for a recoil that isn't there. Damn it! What is it with you? Yells the sergeant. Malco assists me to learn some basic combat skills. You're firing a damn las weapon. Primitive, not a powder weapon. Again. Turns out I'm not actually allowed to use the fancy bolt pistols. The trooper laughed at me when they saw I brought it to one of the ship's practice ranges. I fire off three more shots before I have time to adjust, but my mark is way off. Give me that. The Sarge rips the last pistol from my hands. He fires one-handed without looking at the target. Three shots while looking me in the eyes. I look to the target. One in the left eye, one in the centre mass, final in the target groin. Fucking showboating now? <laughs> Hi! I shout. He just does a few hand tricks Doc Holiday style and then hands me back the pistol. I get it, you're a badass. Can you just help me not suck already? I'm not a miracle worker. Fuck you. Oh my god, this is like fucking something like 90s. Yeah. I, I, I like it, but at the same time it's kind of like, uh, does it mesh well? I don't know. This is like one of the few times I've came across this right. I don't know if it's shit or if I don't know if it's decent or not. I don't I don't mind the setting, but yet again, I'm not you, a 40k. You're not a 40k. I'm not a 40k fag, like, so. This, this is kind of different for me. Yeah. So, I don't know. Let us know what you think down below. I was expecting you to be in worse shape. I stop my push-up to glare at the Sarge. Why is that? Was told you were a noble inventor. That doesn't speak to fitness. Makes sense. Father is a jerk. I had to keep image for the family. If we miss the morning run, no breakfast, that sort of thing. Good. Makes things easier. I finish my sets. Tired but ready for the rest of the day. Or ship cycle, whatever. He offers me a hand up. I take it. Never got your name, Sergeant. Unit tradition. Make it past your first firefight and I will tell you. I give him a confused look. I'm not joining your unit, nor am I expecting to be in the field. You're the boss's cop boy. Where he goes, you go. And he very much fights. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Scratch Scratch record. record. (laughs) Yeah, obviously. Yeah, this is what I fucked up. (laughs) What the hell? I'm a civvy. But I've never been in combat. I am a civvy. (laughs) Calm down. You're not going to be sent to your front, plus the custodies would keep you safe. Yeah, honestly, mm. you probably will be yeah. fine, you know what I mean? Fair point. I pause. Mm, what do I call you then? Just Sarge for now. I lead Roxy team. We ain't your guards, so don't bother remembering us. Okay, kind of rude. I got the banter when training, but this is getting old. Is there a problem? No, I'm just an ass. Sorry. That gets a chuckle from me. Are you really a noble? I'm caught blindsided from that question. I kinda got disowned, but yeah. The job gives me the status in of itself. Why? You don't act like one. I'm used to rippers. Even from low-tech backwaters. You act like a pleb, no offence. You do know when someone's a pleb or not. <laughs> you know when someone sticks a poverty line, yeah. you know what I mean? None taken. I'm a sixth son, I was never gonna take over the family. No need to have a stick up my ass then. He nods his head. That's my point. You're just too casual for a noble. It's kind of weird. You need to watch yourself around any officers. They won't react well. Thanks for the heads up. That'll be three credits. Ha! <laughs> no. <laughs> hey guys, do you like models in your tabletop role-playing games? Because we do too. Do you like having big bitty waifus on your table? Because we do too. <laughs> <laughs> we got 
human biddies, we got lizard biddies, we got orc biddies, oni biddies, cat bussies. We've got everything you want at neckbeardia.co.uk. <laughs> Check the links down below. It helps us out a lot. Sorry for interrupting the video. Let's get on the story. Roxy team threw me through a train course. I ran my ass off and didn't even get close to the goal time. I feel so weak and in pain. Before I even had time to catch my breath, it was target practice again. A tripper from Roxy team dragged me to the showers nearby. I thanked the good man. Thankfully, I get to use the office showers, so I get some time to relax by myself. Please come to my quarters quickly. I have need of you. Or not. I hurry up and finish, heading to the locker area. Legos is waiting with my plain white robes for when I refill Big E's wine glass. Guess this is official business. The few officers getting dressed seem tense, with a fully armoured custodies present. Guess they must have missed him till I walked in. How do they do that? I get dressed quickly and strap on my fancy ass bolter pistol that I still haven't fired even weeks later. As a warning, Horace is here. He has been briefed about your knowledge. Oh shit, Horace is gonna fucking yeet your ass. <laughs> you are fucked. Like, you're gonna get mad to death. <laughs> Thanks for the warning, Biggie. I would have panicked harder without it. As we approach the Emperor's personal part of the ship, I notice them. The Luna Wolves. I see a few in robes, but most are in armour and guarding certain points. It's kind of surreal, but I'm mostly used to custodies by now. The Luna Wolves mostly seem to ignore me, likely because I have Legos with me. We eventually get to a door with just Valdor outside. Well, there's a janitor cleaning some vent, but you get my point. Legos, you're dismissed. Understood. Valdor nods at me and I take that as the go-ahead to enter. The room is pretty simple, but the table is huge. The top comes up to my chin, and I am 6'2". Big E is wearing his casual wear of white robes and a red sash. Horace. Horace is short and had massive tiles on his shoulders. The hell? Big E greets with a nod, and Horace looks worried. I don't know what I expected. Please have a seat. We can discuss our business after we eat. I get seated in a special, totally not high chair, <laughs> and raise my eye at Horace. Forgive me, but what's with the shorts? I was ambushed right before I was summoned here. My transport was targeted by Cathy Resistance. They seem to have taken offence to seeing my face. I laugh. That was good. <laughs> my armour was in no shape for dinner, and Father summoned me up while I was showering. That makes two of us. But I still got dressed. Seemingly guessing my next question, Horace beat me to it. My robes were on the transport, they didn't make it. My personal ship is a day out, hunting the Cathy fleet remnants. I make a cross, Big E groans against it. Horace doesn't seem to get the reference. Our foot arrives. Just a simple but filling stew of I don't know what and some bomb ass bread that's amazing. Thanks, I worked hard on it. You baked bread? It's a hobby. I guess everyone got a pastime on long trips. Horace is a pretty cool dude. That might just be the whole Primark thing affecting my brain. He took the knowledge of heresy in stride, only asking for clarification on certain parts. It did bring about a depressing aura though. On more positive news, Angron has been contacted and just had the nails implanted. That's not good. That's not good. That's good. Not good. Honestly, you should just kill him at this point. He's fucked. He's completely done for, you know what I mean? He doesn't stand a chance. Don't get me wrong, I love me angle on, but he's fucked, like, you know? However, they have not fully set. We can remove them, but will need intensive medical treatment for years. Oh, well, that's not too bad. I feel a weight off my shoulders. That's amazing news, what of his friends? Horace lightly pounds the table and responds. They have been rescued as well. Many were armed by the army to take their revenge, and high riders are being purged as we speak. Honestly, that's a good thing, because that, if you don't know what happened with Angron, pretty much they picked him up. It was kind of like, um, you know, like the Serval Wars with, um, what's his face? What do you call that one? Um, I'm Spartacus. It's kind of like Spartacus. Basically, that's what Angron's based off of. Yeah. And pretty much, yeah, Bridge just shows up, beams up Angron, leaves the rest of the boys to die. And it just ended perfectly. Let's just put it like that. Fuckers had it coming. It's highly likely there were chaos cultists, even if unwilling. Will this slow down the crusade? A bit, but with your knowledge, we have been put ahead on many parts. Horace shakes his head while talking. Any luck contacting Magnus? I look to the Emperor. He smiles. 
I have. He has been told his legion is on its way. However, they still have many worlds to take on the way here. That's great. We need him on board ASAP. He will pinpoint the location of the others far easier. I have also decided to accept your tabletop idea. Oh, fuck off. He hasn't actually. <laughs> it has a merit for training officers as well as a fun way to pass time in transit. I light up like the nerd I am. This is great. However, the mini's idea isn't viable right now. We are starting with your backup idea first as a test run. Krieg spiel it is. My brothers, Solomon and Russ have expressed the desire to meet you. That's long off though as they're far off fighting orcs. I still have no idea how to feel about meeting the second Primarch, but meeting the Wolf King should be grand. Horace and Big E spend some time asking about different parts of lore. Then we hit something. You're telling me this Commissar Gaunt found a STC for the Men of Iron? One tainted as well? The Emperor has taken a much darker tone. Yeah, I don't remember where, but I did read it. Can you pull it from my mind? To do so safely will take time. That's why we mostly stick to talking. I can do so. I'm cancelling your training for the next few days as we'll be sorting this out. Understood. I nod. Not like we can risk another war of the Men of Iron. Will this hurt? It should only put you into a coma, but rest assured every precaution will be taken. Ah, that doesn't sound good. Only Man. put you into a coma. Only, only. A co- only a coma, boys. Only <laughs> a coma. You know, that's, that's no big deal, you know? The, that's actually better than what I was expecting. I was ready for a, here, bite this leather and try not to die. <laughs> yeah, to be honest with you, I don't know why they like, to me, when it comes to the whole 40k thing, maybe in the, like, you know, the Greek say that time period's not as grim dark, and I kind of half expect them to just skip this boy's brains out and just put it into a servitor <laughs> and just, like, read through it all. You know what yeah. I mean? Uh, that's kind of what I expect, but, you know, I suppose they're not as grim dark at this point. Horace speaks up. I think these Sabbat worlds are close to where the 8th Legion main forces are currently deployed. I suggest they handle it when we have proper location. Being strapped down by the dock was unnerving, as well as being hooked up to a medical device and what I hope was an IV. Turns out I was given a mouth guard, so I didn't bite my tongue off. Big E was right. I didn't feel a thing. Everything did smell of mint for a bit though. Apparently that's a thing. I've heard about that before. Apparently during brain surgery you can taste mint. Oh, that's weird. Because you know the way in brain surgery you need to be, they need to keep you awake. You can't be knocked out yeah, for it. Yeah. Um, and apparently when they're like digging about in your head, people you can, can taste, taste mint. mint. Apparently that's a thing. Someone let us know in the comments, but I have heard that before. I'm never going to taste mint the same again. Every time <laughs> I'm going to taste mint, I'm going to be like, oh, someone's touching oh, my brain. So I've always that, see the idea of brain surgery absolutely freaks me out. I know. The idea of you have like the way that they just cut your whole head. Open, uh, the, take oh, the oh, James, off. look, oh. just stop it. All right, okay, keep going. I didn't even dream. Just closed my eyes and opened to find out two months had passed. Two months? I was told a few days. The human doc was dead and I was being tended to by Luna Wolves medics. The doc tried to kill me while I was out. Legos cut him in half. Doc didn't even see him in the room. Big E lost his shit and personally beat some noble that ordered the hit. But why try and kill me? To the nobles, I was just the guy who held Big E's cup of wine during court. I at first thought the noble was a chaos agent, but no, just wanted me replaced. Fucker, I didn't even ever speak to the prick. I want to be the one to kill him. Horace looks me in the eye with a harsh glare. Can you? He speaks, with doubt. Yes! I speak with hatred. I want him to look me in the eye as I finally use this bolt pistol. I place my hand on said weapon. It would be wrong to deny you justice, but must you personally spill his blood? You have never killed before. Don't be so eager to do so. They drew first blood. Are you quoting something? Damn, he's on to me. (laughs) Maybe, he groans. It is your right. Just make it quick and clean. Damn, I was going to kneecap him. Let him suffer, then vent the airlock. Fine, I drag out. We have arrived. Where the fuck did Legos come from? Never mind. I give up trying to spot the custodies. We walk into the courtroom where the head noble is that ran the grip that tried to kill me. Luckily, after the doc slit my throat, I got better. Thank the emperor, I guess. They were not expecting me to be perpetual. Still, months I will never get back. The lord, whatever the fuck, is standing at a raised platform, clearly chuffed but trying to look regal. 
We are ushered right to him, about tenish paces. Why did your family want me dead? Politics. We didn't expect the Emperor to feel so personally offended he would kill my cousin personally. Personally offended? Mate, suck my balls. I know. Is he just admitting it? Politics. <laughs> really? Lord whatever the fuck shrugs. You win some, you lose some. You really suck at politics then. Now he is glaring at me. I changed my mind, just throw him out the airlock. I'm not wasting a bolt in this retard. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? The fuckwad noble starts losing it and ranting like a madman. I just walk out. Then I hear nothing. I look over my shoulder. Horace knocked him out cold. Some troopers drag the pump away. This has been a mess. Sorry about all the trouble. It's fine. The guy's family's dead. Emps and I are in a fancy suite. Much better than my room, which is still a nice place on par with a decent hotel. This place is more like a ball and penthouse. We're in a hot tub. <laughs> what the fuck is what? this? Big E looks great. No homo. <laughs> <laughs> like, what is this story? I, like, I really wasn't too sure with the first part. It's like, I don't know, is this shit or is this good? I don't really know. No. It's somewhere in... But- I don't know, but you like you guys wanted this, okay? You guys wanted this. Thanks, but this is not all right. You will be compensated appropriately. Examples will be made of the branch families. Lands and charters will be ceased. Damn, his voice is like ice. Is this really that drastic? I'm just a cup bearer officially. How will the other nobles react? This was an attack on my household. This cannot be allowed to stand unpunished. I lay my head back, enjoying the jet. <laughs> do I need to do anything? He nods a no. He this... nods a no? That's a really weird He way. nods a no. <laughs> he nods a no. Okay. Okay. This will be handled. Just take it easy for now. Light training only. Your lessons with Malkador will start again next week. How goes the vetting of my personnel? We have reassigned some staff. As for guard, we are assigning you a team of solar auxiliary veterans. We were going to do a standard trips from the army, but we decided to make a point after this mess. Damn, I let out a long whistle. Aren't they the elite vanilla Hume soldiers? Aren't they going to resent guarding my boring ass? Pardon my French. They have earned a softer assignment, but should they be needed, better to be safe. He takes a sip of some really strong drink. I can smell it from across the tub. What the hell even is that? Just building my tolerance up. I don't plan to lose the rust this time. Fuck yeah! I forgot about that. Yeah, that's the thing. Right, so what happens whenever the Emperor meets uh, Lehman Loss? He shows up and Loss is like being all big balls. He's like, I hey, tell you what, drinking competition it is because Vikings, yo. You yeah. know what I mean? <laughs> and uh, Lehman Loss actually beats him in a drinking competition. Um, so he does, yeah. So, so he's building up the stories. Yeah, and then I can't remember, I think they have a fight. And like Lehman gets his comp knocked in and he's like knocked out for like a week. I can't remember. It's been that long <laughs> so it is, since I've went over that. He chuckles and toasts. I return it laughing. We just kind of chill for a bit. I feel I really needed just to relax for a bit. Okay, this is getting a bit too far. I know. The boy's hanging out in the top hot tub. With, with Big E. Big e. The bo- and the boys are sitting having a drink. You know, this is going to turn into something like weird. Two 40- guys <laughs> chilling in a hot tub, tub. Five <laughs> feet apart because they're not gay. <laughs> yeah, like, is this going to turn into some weird homoerotic fucking <laughs> story about the emperor? Oh my god. This has all been so crazy. I try not to linger on how I might fuck up. This has been relaxing, but I must attend my duties. Farewell for now. Big E is up and already redressed by his custodies. Does he see the empty stick? I, f- I don't Are know. Are they in swimming costume? Please. I don't know. What's happening? Let us know in the comments. Down below. <laughs> Let us know in the comments how big the emperor's cock is. <laughs> or does he even have a cock? I don't know. Is he like a Ken doll down there? No, he has had children. He has yeah, but children. like, he's the imp, so does he just like touch them and be like, you're pregnant? Yeah, I don't know actually. Valid question. No one's really ever asked us. <laughs> look. Of questions you need to, need to be answered. <laughs> what was that one that mean from the other day? Like, real talk. What is fucking Big Fitz cock? Like, does he have, <laughs> yes. does he have like, a human cock? Or he's got one of those, like, we got a dog. Red rockets and a dog Big E is up and already being redressed by his custodies. I guess I better head back then, too. No need. This suite is yours. Damn, really? This is a really nice place. My old suite was nice, but... This is McMunchin tier. It belongs to the noble you had spaced. Consider it revenge. Ha! That just makes it better. 
I show the boss man out of my new digs. Oh my god. <laughs> I kind of want to look around. Mostly just storage and living quarters. A dining hall, kitchen, a terrarium. A terrarium where the hot tub is. Okay. okay. A lounge and bar. Noise. <laughs> Noise. <laughs> Some staff come by later with a few things from home, like new key cards. Also got a notice for the solar ox coming my way. Wonder if Legos is still going to stay as my guard as well. And now, the models of our website, brought to you by neckbeardia.co.uk. Get you all some of these titties. Dwarf titties, orc titties, cat titties, fat titties, the gases and we assist a bit. Vampires and goblins and all the buff champions and even hentai, yeah that too. Dragons, manticores, ogres and no some bugbearers and even more to you go still. Undead and demons and then our friend Pally and definitely not 40k. Wood elves, dark elves and lizards and Megan the Slither and James the look cool as he stands. Beholders and kobolds and tyrants and only in a donkey with a frying pan. If you don't want no models, then no need to bother. We now have subclasses and teas. Also, Garbro's book. Go have a look. Check out the link to Kofi. Thank you for watching our videos and giving our channel a hand. But this is the end, our viewers and friends. So let's get back to the video, man. <laughs> I fucking hate myself. <laughs> I've been hanging with Horace lately. He's been prepping to depart, but can still kick my ass at chess while he does paperwork. Horace just kind of multitasks small talk writing missives and order forms and chess calls. He seems to have really lightened up around me. Always had a sense of worry. Or maybe he's just that good of an actor? He's a Primark after all. That is checkmate. Hi! I thought I actually had you. You played right into my trap. I expected you to move differently, but adjusted. I'm not very good at chess, so he likely expected me to play better. I bitch and moan a bit and jest, finally decide to ask the question I have been holding on to. Where are you heading out to? I'm off to Nostramo. We believe we have narrowed down the sector and decided to score it for my brother. Makes sense. Conrad Kurz will need the most help after Angron. Are they both joining the Emperor or heading to Terra? Both. Gilliman as well will be joining you. What of Magnus? His situation is stable and he will be recovered on a more natural timetable. What is terror like? When I was last there, it still had a blue sky, and humanity had first been to Luna two generations ago, with Mars still but a dream. Horus raises his head from the papers, a depressed look in his eyes. It's a hive world now. Yeah, hive worlds are <laughs> fucking... Think of like a mega ghetto. <laughs> That's essentially what a hive world is, but the whole planet's a fucking ghetto. With all that comes with being the oldest. I knew that before, but it still kind of hurts. Like something is forever lost. I never drank in my former life, but to this I took a shot of Amasek. I saw Horus off as he and the Luna Wolves went to find his brother. I'm not supposed to, but I pray for the Legion's safety, that of Horus and Kurz. If Big E knows about it, he doesn't call me out on it. I'm currently in my dining room eating a nice grok steak and not potato paste. <laughs> Alright, whatever you say. I had dismissed my servant staff for the night rest cycle. My sleep patterns are likely ruined by the time cycle on ship, and my random classes fit between Malco and Biggie's free time. Soon I am going to follow the custodies to reintegrate a world passed over by the Crusade in favour of more vital targets. It is a quick territory grab on the way back to Terra. I am to follow the Big E's reps for the mission. Stay quiet and watch how it's done. If things go wrong, the custodies are to bail us out before the army crushes the world. Hopefully, it goes smoothly. Hopefully. Hopefully. <laughs> Hopefully. Hopefully, and 40k just don't mix very well. Let's be serious, guys. It went well. The world was mostly civilised and only really fighting orcs near the poles and some mountain ranges. They welcomed the Imperium with open arms as long-lost brothers. Some custodies and army units were sent to help the local purge the poles. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> Is that intended? <laughs> while Big E decided to personally, with his 300 companions, take over the mountain ranges just for fun. I tagged along for that, sort of. I watched it from a binocular range. It was fucking metal. <laughs> See, this is why... Fucking metal. metal. <laughs> no, this is exactly why it's a Flesh Prince. Yeah. Because, like, this is what... Like, this is just a sitcom to me. Yeah. It's like a weird sitcom set in 40K. <laughs> I don't know why. It's just... It, you it's, know it's, it's bad, It's the lingo you, that this guy uses. It's so funny. Yeah, it just doesn't... It just doesn't mesh. No, but, but it does. it kind of does at the same time, yeah. We stayed for a few weeks to help sort out integration. 
and attend some balls at a few noble estates. I mostly kept quiet and poured wine for the emperor. Got a job to do after all. Hey guys, sorry for the interruption, but a quick message from our sponsored affiliate with Amazon. So the basic concept of how this works is we get to recommend items from Amazon and if you choose to buy anything, Amazon gives us a small percentage of each sale. It's a pretty solid win-win all round. You get stuff, we get a couple of pennies. There are no extra fees or anything like that, just Amazon gives us a small percentage of each sale for sending you there. So go ahead and check the link below to your storefront and get everything you could possibly need for tabletop role-playing games through us. Thinking about getting a new battle map or been thinking about getting into a new system like Shadowrun or Call of Cthulhu? Get it through us. Now let's get back to the video. We enter Sol. It was amazing seeing the fleet and bases around Saturn. It was beautiful. Like seeing a polished sword arranged in an art piece. We passed by Mars. It was humbling to see the planets spanning factory cities and rails. It even had small seas. I don't remember reading about those. They must have been lost during the heresy. Luna was a bastion of war. Mighty cannon and shipyard everywhere. All proper settlement buried deep. It was utterly alien to the moon I knew. Terra was seemingly a single cityscape. Massive plates hovered above the world. The lights of the hives peeking above the smog while the larger spires peeked through like islands. I had expected a bleak world, but on arrival of Terra, I noticed the massive artwork everywhere. Murals, statues of victory over all odds, and mankind's struggle. I was never an artist, or even appreciated art, but these were beyond my words. I was granted a tour over the Imperial Palace. I spent a week seeing the main sights of interest, but that barely allowed me to see much. I got to see the top of what was once the Himalayas, now a bastion of the Custodes. I needed an oxygen mask as the air was so thin. It all really hit home as to what I needed to help save. Disney is going to sue us. <laughs> what? I have no idea. I stand before a massive medical tank, straight out of Star Wars. Angron is inside with the air mask and various tubes hooked up to keep him alive. Beggy and Malkador have been pulling shifts on stabilising Angorn's mind while his body healed. I don't understand what they are doing, but I think they are anchoring his mind or soul while his brain recovers. How does that even work? Yeah, it's better than what he was before anyway, yeah. so... I was eating lunch in the palace. Well, a garden area in the palace. Like a greenhouse, but as a park. Legos is standing a few paces away and I was told I have several more custodies guarding me but I haven't seen them. I was chatting with some servant girl, but she seemed put off by Legos and guarded about me. I took that as a hint and backed off to eat in silence. I totally didn't sulk, honest. <laughs> <laughs> Are you sure? <laughs> I turn around and see who else but Robo Girly Man. I'm not a psyker, but I guess. He raises an eyebrow at that. I offer him a seat at the table. No one else is in the garden now besides us. And whatever custodies I don't know about. He gets closer but stays standing. How do you know the future then? He asks with a worry in his voice. That's classified. I say with a click of my tongue and a finger pistol. <laughs> That's classified. <laughs> G-Man is not amused. G-Man. <laughs> Father mentioned you managed to save my brother before the fleet reached me. That was your legion? I just provided the information. He grunts, clearly annoyed. What are you after? What? I'm just trying to help. He looks me right in the eye and exhales dramatically. I was expecting a scheming soothsayer. I must apologize. No harm done, man. Mine is a weird story. He finally sits, with his legs out as he's just too large for the table. Meant for us normies. <laughs> <laughs> we chatted for a bit about being far from home and on the home world of mankind, as well as the weirdness of it all. I later returned to my room in the Emperor's personal district and sulk about getting rejected by the cutest servant, by the cute servant girl. <laughs> <laughs> no! <laughs> well, I was never popular with the ladies in this life or before. I guess some things just don't change. <laughs> this was a horrible idea. It sounded cool at first. Joining the soon-to-be Ultramarines on a bonding mission with their Primarch. Gulliman even was the one to ask me. How could I say no? 
Plus, it was a good way to get to know my new solar ox. I had been assigned a unit. Well, that unit was the remnants of a regiment that was being rewarded for surviving some apparently crazy shit. A few hundred men and their followers. Under a Colonel Razit Shaw, who was from Frank. They call themselves the Sunny Dogs. Okay then. <laughs> I had a fucking battalion assigned to me. What the fuck? So it was 300 Astartes from the 13th, their Primarch, me, and about 400-ish Solar Ox veterans going only a few levels into Terra Underhive. Should be a smooth, easy mission for G-Man to bond with some of his sons, and the Sunny Dogs to get used to me. And Legos, maybe. I haven't actually seen them yet. We aren't going deep, just the first two levels. Should be a cakewalk. I was riding on an armoured truck. One of many were granted for the mission. I was wearing carapace armour, painted gold and with a white chalice on each shoulder. Gotta let the enemy know I'm a unique unit. <laughs> the solars are kitted out the fuck. High-end armour, melt is, and the colonel has a volt kite gun. I have the armour, my fancy bolt pistol, and a standard combat knife in bronze sheath for some reason. I only had two mags, so 16 shots. Hopefully I don't need it. It starts out simple. We drive a few minutes, the boys clear out a camp of mutant gangers, move on and repeat. It's a massacre. The gangers and mutants only have pipe weapons and spears at best. They don't stand a chance. As we are finishing the second level, things go to shit. A hive quack throws me to the bed of the truck. I hear the haunting groaning of metal and collapsing cement. I'm thrown about the truck as it rolls around. There is weapons firing all around us. What the fuck is going on? I pick myself up. The truck is upside down. The four guards with me are dead from the fall or from the shattered glass ripping them up. Weapons fire is coming from all directions. I can barely get up. My left arm is fucked. Still there, but bloody as hell. I can move it, but it hurts like hell. I crawl out a busted window and see solars firing from the cover of ruined trucks and piled rubble. A few marines here and there. A solar spots me and drags me to cover, yelling at me to stay down. I follow his advice. He is a veteran and should know what to do. I'm trying not to panic. I just lay there and try not to get in their way. Shit is going down. I see a marine with a fet pack fly over us and then hear the revving of what I assume to be a chainsword tearing apart some gangers. Up and move! Orders from the sergeant of the group that find me. I'm dragged up and we start running to some other cover. I run looking complex. I see Gulliman and his sons fighting some trash mechs. The Primarch drives a blade through a pilot while blasting some with his bolter. A sunny dog forces me down to the ground. VIP moved! Throw him! Moving is one. Every dog throws what I assume is a grenade into the wave of gangers. Guess they weren't worried about harming the fully armoured marines. Explosions wipe out most of the enemy. And the marines don't even flinch and mop up the rest as solars assist. Without missing a beat, the remaining dogs rush the complex and start digging in. Windows are cleared, rooms swept for hostiles, and bastions established. Raza is pissed, but professional. He is yelling out orders left and right. One squad is setting up a Vox link. I get dragged into a more secure room with a medic to patch me and some of the wounded up. I lean against the wall trying to make room for more of the wounded to lay down. I'm handed a canteen and take a drink. What the fuck was all that? I can still hear firing outside, but it is less and less often. I'm in the fetal position now, trying desperately not to break down. The last thing the solars need is me having a breakdown. I just try and breathe and wait for instructions. We are on Terra. We can't have fallen too far into the Underhive. We should be fine. We have some of the Imperium's finest soldiers and a fucking Primarch. After a while, a sunny dog medic hands me another canteen and a ration pack. Eat as we walk. Lord Gulliman wants to speak to you. We walk to what appears to be a storage room. Gulliman is talking to Razit. They both pause and look at us as we walk in. G-Man nods and speaks first. I was hoping you could explain something for us. The gangers have strange markings on them. Could you examine them for us? I guess. A marine walks in carrying a corpse. Throw him right in front of me. I see an eight-pointed star on his forehead. 
covered in gore. It was literally carved into his skull. It hurts my eyes and gives me a headache just looking at it. I pull my bolt pistol and fire at the corpse, just to be safe. I think the recoil sprained my wrist. I drop the gun in pain. This startles the soldiers. Gulliman moves to restrain me, but he stops as I yell out. Burn the bodies, they might not be truly dead. Razit takes it in stride. You heard him. Burn the bodies. Groups of at least two while moving them. A sunny dog straps my pistol back in my holster. I nod and thank him. What was that? Gulliman is glaring me down, but not with hostile intent. He wants answers. The taint of the warp. They have moved against us. They have unnatural powers. Puppeting corpses is a favourite trick of theirs. I was just making sure. I'm on the verge of breaking down, but I try and not make things worse. They are likely trying to remove me. No us from the Emperor's board. It's just made too much sense. But a cult on Terra? We were less than a day out. A few bodies did in fact get back up, but the soldiers were ready for it. A few more ganger bands tried to salvage for weapons and loot, but were quickly dealt with. Report spotted no weird star tattoos. I was glad for that. I am thinking this was an opportunity raid. A roll of the dice just because it was cheap. Razit thinks the cult placed charges when he heard about us passing through, hoping to loot better gear. He is likely half right, but I think they were sent after me and G-Man. I don't know how aware the ruinous powers are of me, but they surely see Gulliman, and I must clearly be on their radar. We received word from the local hive government. They are sending help to retrieve us. Most of the gangers that are still trying to loot choose to die fighting rather than be captured. So interrogation isn't an option to learn about the cult. At least it seems we aren't being targeted by more cultists. Just the random gang here and there. We were camped down here for two days before the rescue teams arrived on some hover barge weapon platforms. I don't know what they're called. We board and get the hell out of Dodge. As we do so, the normie humans among us are handed gas masks. They have been ordered to vent super muster gas into the underhive once we are safe. Thankfully, a sunny dog helps me with the mask, as I had no idea how to put it on right. I hope any surviving cultists die in agony. They certainly had it coming. The ride back was awkward. Gulliman and Razit wanted answers. I kept telling them to wait. Razit eventually accepted he was going to need to wait till we were in a secure location. G-Man clearly thinks I'm trying to avoid telling him at all. I will tell you more once we're in with the Emperor. This isn't something we can talk about openly. Big E, if you're listening to my thoughts, please have some custodies waiting to get us right to you. Once we were back to the hive proper, we were all given time to wash up and be interviewed on what happened. No, fuck that. I told the hive forces this was now under the Emperor's personal control and to patch me into the Big E directly. They had the balls to laugh at me, until I realised the sunny dogs, marines and a fucking primarch were glaring them down. My post isn't meant to have any real power, but I'm hoping the Emperor doesn't mind me throwing his weight around right now. This needs to be handled carefully. I get a vid call right to Big E, with almost no wait time. The hive guard captain is freaking the fuck out. The great enemy has made a move. Say no more, I am on my way. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck is this? What the fuck is this? Hold on, hold on. Let, me, let me just call the Emperor here real quick. I'm on my way. It's, it's like whenever, you know that me, it's like my mom and dad aren't home. I can't, I have cookies. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no, yeah. The Solars and Marines lock the guard station down. We order all the non-essential staff to leave. We're taking no chances. Luckily, we're not put under siege by chaos forces. Ems arrives with over 2,000 custodies to personally deal with this. I mentally explain what happened, and he asks Gulliman and boys to join him on the purge. The underhive is now being gassed and scorned by the custodies and marines. The sunny dogs, Legos and I, are still holed up in the seas guard station. A group of local noble reps tried to get us to leave. We tell them to fuck off, this is imperial business. <laughs> I love that shit. They start yelling about how the station is their house's property. I go out with the best armoured sunny dog and Legos as guards and personally tell them to fuck off or be declared traitors. The sight of a custody and my word sends them off. This is going to be a political shitstorm. I can already hear the nobles of this hive reeing for blood. <laughs> I hope Emps doesn't get swamped in paperwork for this. 
He might make me do it. <laughs> oh no. Malkador called me. He is handling the scandal that is forming. The Emperor mobilising the custodies has the higher ranking terror nobles on edge. I don't get the full issue, but the news of a Primarch being attacked is somehow already leaked. People are panicking. How did that even get out? Our mission was being treated as low-level standard purge of the nearer parts of the Underhive. A fairly frequent deployment. Anyway, Malko wants me to stay put until Ems and Son return to pick me up on the way. The problem is, the mobs caused by the gassing of the Underhive. Yeah, parts of the lower levels are getting the fumes or something. Riots have broken out in panic. We are right in the middle of it. We had some guard staff here, running equipment. They were searched thoroughly for chaos marks. Most complied without issue. Those that did had a melt to put in their face and were told it was this or be thrown out. We had no takers on that offer. <laughs> yeah, I wonder why. <laughs> the Sunny Dogs looted some megaphones and were warning the rioters away. Those that don't comply are shot. Some of the guards we dismissed returned with their families to prevent a revolt from the guards already there. I allowed them in if they consented to the search. None were found. I looted a LAS pistol from the guard armory as I can't really use my bolt pistol. Oh, so you make so much more yeah. sense. Also, a shotgun, but only have four shells as I give the guards and soldiers first dibs on ammo. I offered to take a shift on guard duty, but Razit threatened to tie me to a chair if I didn't stay in my secure room. Legos offered to help him. <laughs> Damn, I feel so useless. I help look after the guard staff's families with the other civilian staff members. There are two squads of sunny dogs with us, ten trippers. They refuse to allow the staffers to be armed. As I was resting, I get shaken awake. My brothers are coming to extract us. Be ready. It is Legos. Great, when are we out of here? How are we going to get everyone back to the palace? The sunny dogs are to stay here. They will be extracted later once the riots have stopped. We just can't leave. Lego grabs me by my neck and lifts me to his eye level. My duty is to protect you. I will not feel my master. I will drag your unconscious body back to the place if I must. Well, fuck me. <laughs> oh, she. <laughs> we have to at least inform Razit. Fair enough. Lego puts me down. I yelled to one squad to get Razit for me. All Razit asks for is an ETA. The Sunny Dogs are going to help clear the crowds for the Custodes airship to land for Legos and I to be extracted. Thankfully, the Custodes are dropping off supplies for the siege, ammo and rations. This is at least something. I hate the idea of leaving here without everyone, but what can I even do? When this is over, I need to see about getting the Luther treatment. It will be hell, but I'm so sick of being just dead weight. Will that option even work for me though? Thoughts for later, gotta get prepped. We get Vox that the custodies are almost here. Legos and I move out to one of the doors. I can hear the craziness on the other side. I hold my shotgun tight and my armour feels heavier from the nerves. I hear grenades exploding, clearing the crowds, two dogs wish me luck and haul the doors open and Lego and I run out. Well, I run. I see the gold and red ship above. Four custodies jump down in pairs. Each are carrying massive crates, which they drop once on the ground. The custodies then draw their weapons and clear the riders further. This is slaughter, but I run to the ship now barely off the ground. I drop the shotgun as Legos grabs me and jumps aboard the ship. I look out the door of the ship as we speed away. I see the custodies cover the sunny dogs, pushing the crates to the station. Are the custodies staying with the sunny dogs? Legos pulls me away from the doors as they close. No, they will assist the hive's troops re-establish order. That is overkill. How did things get this bad? This is madness. Riots in the lower levels of the hive cities is fairly common. The local noble families are already mobilising the forces to crush the riot. What the fucking hell? This is beyond depressing. So much needless death. The speed of the ship is making me sick. Or at least, that's what I tell myself. We leave the hive without further issue. Damn, I need a shower. I'm pacing in my quarters at the palace. I was placed under lockdown. Not even getting properly cooked food, but a tasteless paste. At least it was filling. Custodes searched my room and removed all the record playing equipment for some reason. They even had a medic checking up on me every half hour. It's getting old real quick. I'm tired as fuck, as the medics don't want me to sleep, 
and are even insisting on watching me shower. What the fuck? Emperor's orders is all they tell me. Does he think I'm at risk? I cease all complaints. He would know how best to risk corruption. On a brighter note, I have mail. (laughs) Horus sent me a letter by Astropath. He is sending me a portrait of him and his sons fighting some monster. It won't get here for a while. Should be cool as shit. What the fuck is this? Nice meme to go. (laughs) I write a reply, wishing him the best and other small niceties. Nice of him to stay in touch, I guess. Sometime later, I'm escorted to a landing pad as Big E's forces arrive. Menials and staff are running around. I have a dozen custodies around me, that I can see. And I see a few tech priests, but they're way off. One of the hover ships, or barge, whatever, approaches the pad next to us. Valdor just jumps down before the ship is even in place to start landing. He thankfully doesn't squish a poor menial, just spooks the shit out of him. (laughs) All menials are hereby ordered to vacate the area, he yells. The menials scatter. The ship lands and Big E and his men just start walking. We head to a debriefing area next to the landing district. The Emperor tells me what's going on. Gulliman is leading a purge of the Underhive with his sons, the Sunny Dogs, and a few hundred custodies, and arriving Solar Ox. The Hive PDF and House Guards crushed the riots. Everyone that refused to return to their hubs were massacred. At least a million people are dead because we got ambushed on an easy mission. I am shell-shocked. I drop to my knees. How did this get so bad? It is not your fault. The enemy was always going to make a move. How did the riots even happen? I know the gas leaked to part of the lower levels, but that was insane. The lower levels of a hive are always abysmal. It just needs a spark to lead to rioting. It happens every few years. That doesn't help. I knew things were bad, but that being routine is unsettling. Big E is running symbols past me. I only know a few key ones. We sort through picks and feeds of the dead cultists being burned, weapons recovered, which I told the Emperor to destroy and place everyone that touched them under watch. He just nods, and custodies relay the order. I'm kind of confused why they didn't do that right away. Gullman will need to be informed of the enemy. He is unhappy I had you extracted before he could press you for answers. That's going to be awkward. How much should I tell him? That's your choice. Gullman is safe. I will be with you to help explain. That's a load off. Can I sleep now, please? I'm fucking tired. No idea how long I've been awake. Of course. We need to make sure you were not mentally tainted. Thought so. I nod and turn toward a custody that led me here. I down a paste packet and hit the bed. <laughs> I have to imagine this paste packet to be like, uh, you know, like a friction. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hey guys, so sorry to interrupt the video, but I just want to tell you to go ahead and check us out on Spotify. You can find all of our new videos normally a day early on Spotify, and it's a great way to help us out. It just makes sense at this point expanding outside of YouTube since it's a bit of a slowly sinking ship. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Also, you should check us out on Discord, Instagram, Twitter, and join the Facebook group link below. It really helps us out a lot being able to expand outside of YouTube. So go ahead and join us on whatever social media platform you use. However, let's get back into the video. I am wandering through darkness. I am walking aimlessly. Something is watching me. I can feel at least one gaze on me but see nothing but the void. I start hearing whispers in the dark. Knowing this can't be good, I covered my ears and start yelling out the Spongebob song, Best Day Ever! (laughs) as it's the most sickable song I could think of to force the whispers out. The darkness cracks and I wake. Did that actually work? I get up, down another paste tube, and ask my custody guards to pass a message to the Emperor. I go back to reading the massive list of books and tombs the Malkador issued me. Before the hour is up, Valdor and Legos burst in and drag me off. Big E and Mal didn't react well to my dream, but were glad I immediately reported it. I now have an Aquila tattoo on the back of my head, in the blood of a sister of silence. Okay, kind of gross, but it looks fine. 
I am bald now, though. <laughs> oh, for God's sake. <laughs> Denied. Damn it! But I'm basically useless right now. The biggies shot down my Luther tier augment idea. My hopes have been scattered. Emps chuckles. It's too risky right now. If it feels it would leave you catatonic for possibly decades, I need you nearby for your knowledge. You're not meant to be fighting. But the galaxy is a horrible and violent place. I need to be able to defend myself. He is outright laughing now. <laughs> Well, yeah, come on, here he is, kind of weird. It's like, what the fuck are you going to do about it? I know. You have a personal custody guard, a veteran soldier auxiliary battalion, and are almost always in my, Malkador's, or Primarch's company. You will be fine. They protected you in the underhive, didn't they? Emp sips some wine and signals for our food. <laughs> we are in a dining room, discussing my knowledge over light snacks and drinks. We talk shop for an hour or two each day, unless something affects Emp's agenda for the day. I had just finished talking about the Interrex and that other pocket empire with the near-perfect STC library. Horus wiped both in the original timeline. I didn't know where these realms were, just that they were near-planet murder with the Mecha Death Spiders. <laughs> yeah, that's a <just> thing, okay. <laughs> Those really got his attention. Not sure he can actually find them on a reasonable time frame, but he is the freaking Emperor. Can I at least get some more combat training? Not right now. Once Angron recovers, he will be entrusted to guard you, as he does his training and lessons. We can discuss your combat training then. Angron, really? Angron feels he owes you a life debt. Oh, that's nice. That is nice. Angron's all honor bang, but like, you know, in the original timeline... Yeah, he's a fucking fluffing meth head, let's be serious. <laughs> Angron feels he owes you a life debt. We put him in status shortly after purging the High Raiders. He knows that the Neils would have killed him without your warnings. We just barely managed to remove them before they utterly set in. I have no idea how to even think about that. I volunteered for gopher duty. Malkador was too busy for my lessons and doesn't trust anyone else to teach me, I guess. I have finished the reading material I had gotten. I was always a great reader, but those were some hard reading. Anyways, go for duty. I was bored as shit, so I signed up to run missives and recalf. I can't leave the Emperor's personal wing of the palace, but there are plenty of people working to keep the Imperium running, and I might as well help. The Imperial staff are nervous as hell around me, but seem to understand I just want to help. It likely doesn't help I have at least a squad of sunny dogs with me at all times. At least I'm not bored as much. I wonder how long Gulliman's gonna be gone. It's been weeks. I finished writing another letter to Horace. I got the painting, and it's badass as I expected. Horace truly delivers. It's him and his current Mournival standing on top of a giant bear like Xenos, with six arms. Truly brings a tear to my eye to know such a vile race of Xenos has been purged. I'm doing another recalf run when one of my guards gets a call on his Vox. It is word that G-Man is on his way back. I hurry to finish the run. He will want to talk right away. I rush back to my suite, clean myself up and wait. And wait. Still waiting. <laughs> I ask on the passing custodies if I'm to be called for a meeting. Turns out Gulliman barely slept during the Underhive purge. Even with his transhuman biology, he needs to rest for the day. I'm taken back. It's been a few months since the ambush. This boy hasn't slept for that long. Yeah, well he's Primark, you know what I mean? I know Primarchs are bullshit, but barely sleeping all this time is insane. Hope he rests soundly. Yeah, sleep well, Gullman. Sleep well. You go, OG. You go, OG. We are passing time this morning, till I get someone to tell Gulliman all about Chaos and Friends. My current squad of Sunny Dogs, Legos and I are playing poker. They still play Hold'em on Terra. Just the card art is different. Legos can't play to save his life though. He is constantly going for broke on pairs. Good thing we ain't playing for money. The Sunny Dogs think I'm a proper psyker and refund to play for and refuse to play for cash. <laughs> Whatever. Legos gets the call for us to head out. Guess we are doing brunch with the Emperor and Son. The Solars stay behind. Guess they weren't cleared. G-Man was already waiting when Legos and I arrived. 
He just nodded towards us. I sit down in my special normie chair, which totally is not a high chair. <laughs> yeah, well, the thing is, like, the Emperor is supposed to be, like, near 12 foot tall, and time marks are not that much smaller than him, <laughs> so, you know. Gulliman is wearing blue robes, of course. It's kind of weird that there are no servants nearby. I am so used to seeing them everywhere now. The Emperor arrives, and we eat in peace. Kind of weird the custodians are serving the food, but whatever. Gotta keep secrets secret. As we finish, Gulliman is clearly tense and wants answers. All right, I clap my hands. Ask away, you surely have questions. G-Man just looks at me, and then the big E. What did we fight down there? I gulp. The great enemy. Servants of chaos. A cult in service to mankind's greatest threat. Uh, the Tyranids are kind of a bigger threat. Biggie glares at me. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, but look, that's got armor and stuff, you know what I mean? What? I totally told you about the Nids. I shrug. There are beings in the warps. They feed on emotions and faith from our world to par themselves. They style themselves as the Chaos Gods. G-Man scoffs. That's not funny. Good, because I'm not joking. <laughs> this is not a laughing manner. Gulliman runs his hand through his hair. Then what about the Imperial Truth? Is that a lie? No, they are not actual gods, just the biggest warp beings. Big E nods. I try to explain how the Chaos Gods work, while the Emperor provides a bit of context here and there. I basically explained that there were piles of negative thought, feelings and aspects from our world given life in the warp. That they have become self-aware, like the AI of old. And to put them down, we need to stabilise the galaxy. It won't kill them, but make them dormant. Though, telling about how the Eldar murder-fucked a chaos god into existing had Gulliman livid. I don't know, like, see this new, like, 40k lore, like, you know, it sounds like Gulliman's got a wee dark Eldar GF, like, <laughs> To me, it sounds like he's got a GF, okay, guys? He actually broke the table and threw a chair. He totally lost his shit. Luckily, the Emperor calmed him down. Big E asked me to leave so he could talk one-on-one -on -one with his son for a while. As Legos and I were returning back to my suite, I noticed a monitor with a news feed. Holy shit, I'm on the news! There were a few staff and guards on break watching the feed. They bolt as I approach. The events in the lower levels were headed by Lord Anon, <laughs> the Emperor's new advisor. Advisor? What the fuck? How? What? I wasn't in charge of dealing with that insanity. Is that why the servants are nervous as hell around me? I return to my suite in a daze. I asked my guards to get info on what the public and servants think of me. I really wish I hadn't. Oh no, you don't want to know no. that shit. You know what I mean? You just, you just better it's off just not knowing. Not knowing yeah. The rumours about me are crazy. Some say I'm being trained as a second Malkador. Others, that I'm the Big East boy <laughs> toy, what the fuck? <laughs> Yeah, he is wee boy pussy. <laughs> no, not boy pussy, it's bussy. Bussy? Okay, Fucking yeah. bussy. Okay, we'll say that <laughs> One of the guards even brought me a newsletter with an article about me, scholar of ancient and forbidden lore, which is kind of right. Yeah, that's quite the closest you're going yeah. to get to what he actually is. Yeah. However, that same newsletter said I was having a love affair with that one's hive governor's daughter. Nice. <laughs> The hell? I've never even met them. I burned the newsletter. It made me feel better. Also, the local nobles are butthurt I kicked their guard staff out and are trying to press charges against me. Legos actually laughed at that. Yeah, then, yeah they're not going to get far No, far. fuck. I didn't even know he could laugh. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, actually, can speak some things laugh? Do they, well, they, he fucking did. They probably can. Yeah. Like, <laughs> what, what is it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, what the, you know what way they laugh? They laugh the same way Elon Musk laughs. Yes, yes. Ah, 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 ah. Very amusing. <laughs> yes. Ah, 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 ah. During our usual lore discussion, I brought up the calls for me to face justice from the Hive nobles. He also laughs. Malkador just huffs. I ask if we should deal with this. Just ignore them. That will do far more damage than just shutting them down. Mal just knocks on the table to get our focus. Angeron will be released from the medical bay and will be allowed to do light lessons as he recovers. What are we telling him? I am unsure. This is so far removed from any of my predictions. We will leave this to Anon. 
Angron already feels he owes you. What the hell will I even do with Angron? I will do my best. <laughs> Mal nods to me. This is all we can ask. Just be genuine with him. He is an empath. It will go a long way. I don't know about this, if this is going to go well or not. The problem is, Angron is a definition of pure warrior. He spent his whole life as a gladiator up to this point, mm -hmm. and he loves fighting. Now, without the butcher's nails, he's not going to have the bloodlust, mm -hmm. but he still really enjoys fighting. Mm -hmm. like, he's just really meant for it, and I don't think putting him on guard duty will do him any fa it'll, it'll make his mind wander. Yeah. It'll make him more dangerous, given the chance. Yeah. You know what I mean? I don't know. It's a very risky one. Let us know what you think down below. Be chilling in the study. Malkador ended my gopher job. Told me it wasn't proper. Now I am bored and feel like a bum. <laughs> yeah, okay. I finished the material Mal gave me, but he's too busy to chitter me right now. I am giving self-study more focus. Lord Anon! A servant runs in. My guards stop her at the door. I look over. Yes, I am here. I have stopped trying to tell people I am not a lord. Package for you from Lord Russ and Solomon. I nod to the guard and he takes the package to inspect it. The guards take a minute to check for threats, then hand me two letters from the package. Russ thanks me for saving one of his brothers. He wants to meet me, and have me join him on a campaign. Sounds cool as shit, but dangerous as hell. Russ sent me a fucking digi weapon. A ring with a one flamer. It of course has a wolf motif. Solomon's letter is more alarming. Some Eldar tried to convince him I am a massive threat to the galaxy at large, and tried to get him to hand me over when we eventually meet. The second Primarch sent me their leader's heads and their squad's soul stones. Ooh, For... That is hardcore. Unsettling that the knife ears want me handed over, but fuck those guys. What the hell will I do with an Eldar severed head and a bunch of soul stones? <laughs> I don't know, soul stones are creepy, you see. The whole, like, for you guys that don't know, soul stones hold the actual embodiment of the elder soul. And um, whenever elder die without a soul stone, they pretty much get eaten by Slaanesh, and it's like the worst torture ever. It's really bad. It's mm -hmm. like, think of it like hell times a million, and that's it. Um, but they actually keep their souls in soul stones, and then they get connected to, like, it's, it, it, soul stones are pretty cool. In the best lore, definitely check that, guy, that out, you know? Angron is finally cleared to leave the med bay. I was refused access to visit him while he was there. Even Malkador wasn't allowed. Big E refused to say why. Anyway, I can finally meet the Red Angel. He has been moved to a recovery room and is still being monitored. As I walk down the hall, guards flanking me, Legos appears at my side. I turn my head towards him as we still walk. Yes, Legos? Just passing word to you that Gulliman is leaving the palace to start his trials. Our master wanted you at the farewell feast. Odd. I usually only have to attend the rare times Big E holds court. He never really made me attend Terran feasts. I just nod and say thanks for the heads up. Legos is gone, or at least I can't notice him. We approach Angron's room and the custodians move aside to let me through. The Red Angel looks up from his bed. A new visitor? You must be an on. I walk to the side of his bed and offer my hand. That's me. Been waiting to meet you for a while now. He takes my handshake and stride, but seems confused by it. He thanked me for my help in saving him and his men, and we talked about small stuff for a while. He seems at peace, if a bit bored. I offered to get some reading material sent to him. He eagerly accepted. See, I don't know. I just don't trust a crime mark being left. They need to be focused on something. Yeah. Otherwise, like that, just like you know, uh, an empty mind fault. Like you know, what's yeah. the, what's a the quote? They what's can't just sit in the sofa and watch daytime TV yeah, all day. No, it doesn't work. They need to be. They need to be focused on something. Yeah. Otherwise, uh, chaos can really seep into them, big time. The feast was kind of lame. G Man was busy dealing with nobles to chat with, as was Big E and Mal. Angron and I basically just talked the whole time. He was in a huge wheelchair. I was approached by a few noble women to dance. I tried my best to decline as nicely as possible, citing my utter lack of Terran dances, as well as Lord Angron requesting my company. Hope I don't have any feuds to deal with. They were clearly sent by their families, but I tried not to be rude. The last one didn't take the hint, until Angron told her to fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that sounds about right. That made me spit-take. 
The look in her face was gold, but I tried to smooth things over. Don't think it really helped, but whatever. This is a den of snakes, Angron speaks. I agree, normally I avoid the feasts. However, Gulliman is leaving the palace for his trials. I want to support him. He nods. We go back to small talk and eating the great food. My guards start turning away any more nobles looking to talk to us as we eat. As we eat some really nice spiced bread. He fucking loves this <laughs> Some bread. fucking like. spiced bread. Some guy is making a scene with my sunny dogs. I will have you flogged. Trash. <laughs> I demand to speak to Lords Angron and Anon. So help me. <laughs> Legos appears and grabs the fat fuck by his neck. Drop him, Legos. I yelled out, hoping to prevent the bigger scandal. I get up from my chair and approach the noble. Guards and Legos. The noble's entourage is clearly nervous as hell. Hope they don't try something. I help him up. I took a bit. He was heavy as fuck. Angron joins us. What do you want? Angron is clearly pissed at the interruption. Lord Anon. He shakes my hand, then turns to Angron, who just glares at him. That seems to cut the noble's steam. Right. I wanted to meet you too. The Emperor's new advisor and one of his newly returned sons. I am an emissary of House MacDonald's. Sir Hurled Vic MacDonald's. Is this a fucking joke? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It wasn't his house banner was the golden fucking arches, <laughs> albeit with a few add-ons. It was still the red field and arches, but had cherubs holding the arches, and while the whole thing was set in an eagle border. I was stunned. I have no idea what to make that <laughs> no. But it, it, it does actually make a lot of sense, because, like, you know, maybe... What would McDonald's become? In like thousands of years, if you let a mass, you know what it would be like. Would it be no, the empire of McDonald's. No, you know what it'd be like. Remember the end of Wally. No, no, it would the be, end of Wally. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. Actually, yeah. It could be like that, or or it could be like um, the franchise wars. <laughs> the franchise wars. <laughs> they just have massive the, fucking the, the Burger King Warriors versus. They just have massive big robots like out of um, uh, what's that movie, um. Uh, Pacific Rim yes, and it would just be like animals. yeah it will just be like a massive like McDonald's one the Burger King and then KFC joins the chat oh, <laughs> like, oh, 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 Wendy's in the background oh, just oh, baiting people <laughs> what do you want Angron asks again making the noble herald flinch he starts giving us a clear sales pitch to visit a family estate on a nearby hive, etc. Whatever. Insert bullshit here. Legos, who are House MacDonald? I asked, talking over said noble. An ancient, if middling, house. They are widespread over Terra. They are food production and vehicle fuel. <laughs> middling house? Harold exclaims. I shake my head. Forgive him, my lord, but may I ask why you are actually here? I try and be polite, but I want to end this quick. I was meaning to discuss some plans to... I cut him off. I'm not involved with the running of the Imperium. I carry a fancy cup during court and keep the Imperial household company. Nothing more. Boy piss. <laughs> Boy piss. <and> Pussy. <laughs> he flusters, clearly in rage. Until Angron death glares him into backing down. From a wheelchair. <laughs> Damn! Lord Harold bolts away. Entourage in tow. Though one of his guards in a body glove waves at me. I just nod. We just turn to eating and small talk. Hope we didn't just make enemies. Or at least ones we would actually care about. Anon, can you get more weights? Angron. Doc said, pace yourself. No can do, ma'am. You need to take this slow. You're still recovering. Take it easy. Angron stops his reps and places the bar back on the rack. No, I'm not spotting, don't be silly. Legos had that in hand. <laughs> Angron is still a beast even when his body is wrecked. Wrecked! <laughs> he could only spend an hour and a half out of his chair and he spent it working out like a madman. The medical staff placed strict limits to stick to. But I expect that Angron is working out on his own as well. But I, <laughs> but I ain't no snitch. And he seems to be being careful. Ugh, let's go to the range. Might as well keep my aim sharp. That sounds cool. I give him the thumbs up and throw him a blanket-sized towel. Sounds good, champ. 
I nod to a sunny dog who checks his vox. It is open, my lord. Great. I clap my hands together. I have finally figured out how to hold my bolt pistol correctly. It was fun watching targets explode. I also need to practice with my digiring. Angron straps himself into his chair and we head off. We came to an unfortunately common sight now. An army unit is using the range we reserved and of course it's a McDonald's cousin, a CO. This is the fifth time this month. Fuck you McDonald's, <laughs> fuck you. I used to be mad but watching them try and bullshit a Primark is funny as hell. This time Angron doesn't even yell at the poor fool, just glares him down into leaving. What are they even thinking? Angron and I take turns firing at targets. A squad at the next range to our left heckled us and challenged us to a shit off till they actually saw our grip. A random chuckle fuck, four solar ox vets, a custodes, and a chair bound Primark. They just shut up and went back to their side. <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine that being the case. Angron is actually sad about it. He is competitive as heck. I step back and just let him cut loose. He downs every target as soon as they appear. I just clean my bow pistol and wait for him to get his fill. Later we meet up with the colonel to work on our war game idea. I can't believe he's actually making 40k the tabletop in 40k. In 40k. It's pretty cool, be honest with you, I'll give him credit. Meta as fuck. Yes. <laughs> it is a Kriegspiel type idea. Angron and I have been working on it whilst he isn't allowed to train and has really taken to it. I never actually played it in my old life but I think we are getting somewhere. Raza is totally on board. He has been having his officer play test it. It takes forever to play, but they seem to love it. Angron worked out a better dice system to speed up combat. It really helps. Raza wants to time each turn. We added different times to play testing, not including time to move the units between turns. Malkador walking in on us one day and was interested in the idea. He wants to be kept posted on progress. Cool, maybe this will help or at least keep soldiers entertained during long trips. Note to self, don't play cards with Angron. Empaths are bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wear my left boot for the rest of the night. Big E buzzed me for a meeting. I of course hurried over to our normal spot. I have found the flaw with the second legion's gene seed. The containment has been purged and around two thirds of the stock has been saved. Damn, that's great news. What was the issue? The Emperor glares to the side. A cultist managed to recruit a Gene Smith. Your knowledge made us watch closer. He looks at me with an intense look. You have done the Imperium immense service. I feel a bit overwhelmed and nod back at him. I don't even know what to say. Honestly, at this point, he's completely changed the timeline. The timeline is completely different. Yeah. There's, not, like, there's no going back at this point. Yeah. But we interested to see. I'm really looking forward to it. Big E has decided to grant me a boon at court in a week. I have to decide beforehand and actually run it by Malkador first. I have no idea what they ask for. What does one even ask of the Emperor? He already provides me with everything I have. I could ask for a planet, but he needs me by for my lore knowledge. Maybe a warrant for after the crusade. I can't bomb off the Emperor forever, can I? What would I even do after the Emperor no longer needs me? I was cleaning my bolt and Laz pistols in my suite. Lazitz was here, running ideas for a game by me, pacing while doing so. Angron was spending time with the Emperor. Something on your mind, Anon? Razit asks, clearly seeing me not really feeling like working on the game today. The Emperor offered me a boon. I'm utterly lost at what to do. He freezes. Razit and the other sunny dogs just stare at me. What? What? A boon? Razit seems bewildered by this. What did you do for such an honour? He asks on the edge of his breath. I don't think I can tell you right now. The Emperor will bring it up at the court soon. I need an answer before then. Our master doesn't just grant boons on a whim. This will cause even more attention to come your way. The noble houses already have no idea how to view you. This is only adding fuel to the fire. I completely forgot they think he's a whim. Copper? Yeah. No, more than a just copper. He's the he's Emperor's fucking lamp. <laughs> <laughs> I completely forgot about that. Razit has a thousand yard stare going on right now. Should I decline? No! He yelled at me. That will only make things beyond worse. He runs his hand through his short grey hair. Maybe ask for a title or he stops dead in his tracks. Forget it. I forgot who I was speaking to, you know. 
Razit turns back to me and gives me a short bow. Just be yourself and ask for what you will. What the hell was that? Hey guys, so are you looking to spice up your game night? Do you need some orcs to raid your camp? Do you need some illithids to suck out your brains? Do you need some undead to rise from the graves? What about a dragon to slap down in the table and fuck up your players with? Or if you prefer a frost giant or a manticore, we got him. It's a lot more fun than dropping rocks in your players' heads. Or maybe you just want short stacks. Because we know you love them. (laughs) We have such an expansive range of fantasy options. And we're currently trying to expand into not 40k. (laughs) Also, if models isn't your thing, go check out our subclasses. There's loads of stuff there that you might find interesting. But go ahead and check it out. Links are all down below. And let's get back into the video. It's weird being on the other side of court now. I walk down the giant hall overflowing with nobles and support staff. I've been here plenty of times now, but at the big E's left while holding a big ass gold cup, I have a full honour guard as I walk towards the Emperor and Malkador. Twenty sunny dogs on each side of me, fully kitted out. Raza and his officers are in dress uniform and follow just behind me. I try my best to remain calm. Thankfully, my training back home covered keeping a straight face. Legos kind of just appeared in front of me a third of the way to the Emperor's raised platform. This is the part things get weird. We finish our approach and my grip kneels to the Emperor. I just lower my head towards the Emperor. I can hear the gasps. I fear the nobles stare at me. I have just committed a huge breach of etiquette. However, I fully trust Malkador and he told me not to kneel. I assume he has a plan. Whatever, he is far smarter than me. Big E doesn't miss a beat, and gestures for me to approach. Another oddity. Nobody is ever asked to walk up the platform. Anon, you have done the Imperium as a whole, and my household enormous service. Two of my sons have been returned to me. One's life owed to that. That alone should see you rewarded. However, you also prevented sabotage of the Second Legion of Stardust preventing untold damage to said legion, but preventing the loss of progress from said legion as well. I would offer you a boon for your service. If it's within my power, you shall have it. I just nod, and I have talked this through with Malkador, worked through things the Big E won't accept. No warrant, as cool as that would be. The Emperor needed me close by. No Luther tier augmentation. I would be useless for a long ass time. He needed my lore. Nothing silly like a harm. That would just be insulting. I couldn't think of anything I wanted that the Big E would actually grant me, that he hadn't already provided me. So I went with spite. I would like my homeworld renamed Anon's World. That would piss off the nobles back home. My father would be livid at the disrespect. That would be all funnier. Cause fuck him for disowning me. The Big E just laughs. That is a good one. It's on me. Would you like anything else? I just answer on the spot. Can I get better armor? The carapace is nice, but I would feel safer with higher tier armor. Done. I shall craft you a fine set of power armor. Holy shit, actual power armor? I was only expecting the solar ox full body armor. This is amazing, I'm like a kid at Christmas. He grants me leave. Malkador has face palmed. <laughs> I walk out with a skip in my step. I'm getting power armor. Razit, Angron and I are still working on our war game. Angron is doing a lot better. He no longer needs his chair and gets around with a cane. At this rate, he should be able to start his trials in a year or so. It has been two months since I asked for my bin. Ems is still working on my armour. Gulliman is set to finish his trials and start his proper lessons under the Emperor. I suspect the plan is to then send G-Man to fight alongside Russ to get the experience. Russ has officially requested I join him as an advisor. Malkador says I would leave before G-Man if the Emperor accepts Russ's request. I'm nervous about actually going to the front of the Crusade. I know I would be insanely protected, but still. In other news, Horus sent me another letter. (laughs) He was approached by Eldrad. He wants to talk to me. That has me worried. What has the Farseer seen of me, or have I just thrown his visions into whack? If I do go see Eldrad, I will offer him the Soul Stones. Solomon sent me as a sort of peace offering. I still don't know what happened with that, other than they offended the second Primarch. And we are a print. 
Angron Razitz and I have our name on the manuals, and I even did a signed copy for a rogue trader at the Minor Feast. Angron wasn't interested in signing his book. Mal joins us for the first official game tournament. I got my teeth kicked in by Malkador in the first round. Razit managed to give Angron a fight, but it ended bitterly as Razitz refused to yield till he was kicked fully off the board. Mal won, but it was close. Angron yielded after seeing he was caught. It was fun. The game will be issued to army ships over time. Hope the troops like it. The Emperor decided to grant Lehman Ross his request for my aid. I leave once my armour is finished. I am honestly hyped. I walk with Mal down a dark hall deep in the palace. Thanks for helping me ID this artifact and on. It has weighed on me for some time. No problem, I'm here to help. It feels weird to travel without the Sunny Dogs now. They didn't have Mal's clearance on whatever it was he wanted to show me. We travelled pretty far down, past a bunch of relics. I'm sure I saw a Mars rover. Do the tech priests know he has that? Above my prey grade. Right this way, Mal gestured towards a sealed room. Wear those gloves on the side. The relic is fragile. Will do. We enter an airlock, get scanned by something, then we're in. Malkador walks over to a desk in the middle of the room. The room is really low light. Is it a book? It has seen better days, but it seems well maintained for how old it might be. Mal hands me a lens that I can see in the dark, and I inspect the book. I'm pretty sure this is Moby Dick, but it is either in Spanish or Portuguese, which I can't read. Mal was happy to know I knew the book, but was bummed that I can't actually read it for him. I was hoping it was a history text, but this is still a great relic. I will see about having it translated, now that we know that it isn't dangerous. Glad to have helped out. This is a classic. We left to head back up. Angron is going to undergo his next stage of operations. I won't see the guy for a while. We have become good friends, spending almost every day together. It would be weird not seeing him. Before he went back to the med bay, we exchanged gifts. I made a ring from silver. Just silver wire I fused together and pressed my cupbearer logo in. He gave me a badass looking chain to wrap around one of my arms. It was for my power armour. He asked me to only wear it if I was going into combat. It totally blew my ring out of the water. Each link was hand forged. I was touched. We said our farewells and he was off. Razat had one of his officers run me through training courses. They were like the one Roxy team put me through, but worse. And I would get hit by a stun button if I slowed down. Why did I agree to this? Oh right, I'm going to join Russ and his wolves in the crusade. I crossed the finish for the course for the whatever time today. And with that, you finally cross into making the minimum for solar standards, the officer yells at me. I drop to my knees in victory. I'm too tired to raise my arms. A sunny dog tripper hands me some water, which I down like a madman. My everything hurts. A lot. I really wish Big E would give me those augments. I see Razitz walking up to me. He throws me a tile. Glad to see you actually passed the minimum, barely, but you still made it. He nods his head. I worked my ass off on the way to Terra, kept up my reps between lessons, and your men put me through hell. How did I just barely pass? It took me three months to reach this point. I thought I was in decent shape after reaching Terra. Razit just laughs. The Solar Auxiliary are the best mortal soldiers in the Imperium. They have high standards. If one of my boys got your time, I would have flogged them. For you though, I feel proud. He places his hands on my shoulder. I drop like a rock. Sorry, I didn't realise how bad you actually are. Someone drag him back. I was bed restricted for two days. <laughs> Thankfully, Mal has a portable blackboard, so it wasn't lost time. Stop. I stop running the course as the Emperor walks into the training field. Well, it's in a dome, so into you, I guess. Everyone drops everything. Anon, stop this. You have been pushing yourself too far. But I have to be ready. You have collapsed twice today, Legos told himself. Legos, you snitch. He is charged with protecting you. He is doing his duty. I'm sick of being weak. You are only human. You need to pace yourself. If you won't, I will for you. And that is how I was placed under house arrest until my armour was finished. I wasn't even allowed to do push-ups in my room. My guards never left me alone, even stood outside my shower and bed. At least Mal is still holding his lessons. 
Turns out I may have indeed gone too far. Emps had a doc check me out to show me why he cut me off. Doc said if I had pushed much farther, I would have caused my muscles to burn out or something. Razitz was reprimanded for allowing me to go so far. It was light, a small fee, a mark on record, and a talking to by Malkador. I felt like shit. This might hurt Razitz, and it might prevent him from advancing from this. Razit was less stressed by this than I was. I don't intend to leave my unit, calm down and on. I have no intention of being a pen pusher. That is something, but I still feel like shit. I think Emps is trying to teach me a lesson on properly controlling myself or something. I do need a way to repay Razitz though. He got punished for my fuck up. It makes my blood boil. He has told me he would like to fight when we link up with Ross. I will talk to the Wolf King about Razitz and his men being allowed to cut loose. I watched the forces march. I was on some terrace, sipping a glass of some fruit whose name I didn't know. Millions of army troops paraded into massive ships that ferry them to the true warp-capable ships. They had been doing this for days. Another wave of soldiers, supplies and ships to be sent to forces reconquering a galaxy. I would be joining them. The fleet would divide along the way, of course, but my grip was to head to a mustering point for the Space Wolves. A random system called CARF 188B. There was a series of space stations around a gas giant where the army and legion tended to their ships, resupplied and redeployed. I would be one of the last aboard, and I would do so in my new armour. Big E wanted to make a show of it. Those that don't know me seem to think I'm a big deal, so Emps and Malv decided to play up to it for propaganda, I guessed. I am to march with Legos and the Sunny Dogs. Wave at the cameras and try not to look stupid. Thankfully, I don't have to give a speech. It's going to be weird not having Mal and Imps around. It's showtime. I'm in my brand new power armour. It took some time to put on. Almost an hour. I'm a fairly tall person, about 6'2 in freedom units. In the armour, I'm well over 7 foot. My left shoulder pauldron has my stylized cupbearer icon. The right has Biggie's double-headed eagle. A unique honour at this time. Not even any legions can use it right now. I am hugely honoured. It took a few minutes to learn to walk right. After 20, it was natural. Emps makes great gear. Power armour is meant to take way longer to get used to. The body of the armour is mostly plain custodies gold, with bits of red. I have a raised collar that is silvery, as are my graves and gauntlets. I feel like a badass. <laughs> this is a hallmark of this. I, I think, feel like yeah, a... Yeah, bro. Yeah, let's do this, you know what I mean? As I walk, I can feel the weight. I'm used to people clearing the way for my grip. Having a custodian Solars as your guard will do that. This is different though. People stare at my armour, likely the eagle giving them paws. Razitz is walking at my left, all business. Legos is likely behind me, but I can't actually feel him there. As we approach a gate to the landing zone, we are joined by the rest of the Sunny Dogs, as well as some menial tasks with carrying their standards. As the gate starts opening, I try to put on my best stoic face. Gotta look good for the cameras. <laughs> I really don't want to embarrass the Emperor of Mankind. As the gate truly opens, I can hear the crowds. As the front ranks leave, it gets louder. An endless roar of thunder. As I walk out, I try and wave to the crowds, and anything I think has a camera. I try not to look like a goof. I wish I was allowed to wear my helmet. Emps had that ship to my quarters on the ship ahead of time, so I couldn't. I feel sick, but hold it in. Try to focus on waving and make it to the landing ship. Once on board, some saint hands me a barf bag. I will ask about getting him a medal. <laughs> <laughs> my quarters on the ship are nice, but not like the Emps flagship. Basically an upscale hotel suite or a two-bedroom apartment. One room houses my armour and gear. I was given a few files about Russ's current goal and wars recently fought. So many orcs. Horus sent me another letter, as did Solomon. Horus is still in talks with Eldrad, who is set on meeting me. I'm open to the idea, as I will have a heavy guard. I don't know, like meeting up with Eldar, just... Eldar are always just going to shaft you. That's a problem. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, Eldar will just shaft you. I don't know about this. I don't think this is a good idea, but let's see what happens with it. Horus wants to pick up the location, have prep time, and have Solomon and Russ there as well. Eldrad isn't happy with that. As he wants to talk to me one-on-one. -on -one. Aye, so he can mind fuck you? <laughs> Fat chance. I want at least one Primarch there. 
Solomon has sworn to repay me for preventing his gene seed stock from being wrecked. Also told me the Eldar that approached him. Told him that I was dangerous and needed to be handed over for reasons, etc. Mere humans can't understand. I'm a super cool space elf, whatever. <laughs> yeah, that sounds about right, to be honest with you. Solomon did the right thing, wasting them. Kind of feel bad that I wasn't trying to help the Second Legion, but prevent the issue with Fulgrim's Legion being wrecked by bad gene seed. Hope that still gets caught beforehand. Mal told me to keep to myself during the trip, to meet up with the Wolf King. I still had to attend some official feasts, but hopefully the nobles just leave me alone. It will likely help I'm the only person to have more than three guards at the feast. Razet told me he's planning on having at least 80 sunny dogs at the first feast. And of course, Legos will be there. Visible. I'm open to talking to them, but I have horrible luck with nobles. Maybe that is just the McDonald's? I'm just going to wear some grey robes and red swash with my bolt pistol. It has my badge after all. We march towards the dining hall. 80 sunny dogs in full gear and armour, beside two holding standards. Razitz was in full dress uniform. Damn, he has a shit ton of medals. Me and my robe and sash packing heat, and Legos in plain view for once. The standards are my cup logo on one, and the Imperial Aquila on the other. We were going to bring the Sunny Dog standard, but Razitz wanted another gun in play for even spacing. The Herald announced our arrival to the feast. Well, mine and company. Razit picks a table by the wall and we are set. Raza and I sit at the table big enough for ten. The solar ox blocks us nearly completely. Legos is standing right behind me. A bold grip approaches us. I wave to allow them in. Lord Anon, it's an honour to meet you. I am Major Rupert Krasit of the Tashi 401st. He is a big guy and holy hell he is an actual Rupert. I thought that was a joke. Hello. I get up to greet him. Don't want to be rude. He continues. This is Lady Evitgit Kazit, my cousin who is on her way to be appointed Governor of Gath III. The future PG is what looks to be a woman in her 30s, but she has her arms covered, likely covering de-aging treatments. A pleasure, I nod toward her. Were you two planning on joining us? Oh no, it's clear you wanted privacy. I just wanted to meet you. I heard about you and Lord Gulliman leading trips into the Underhive. Messy business, that. Must have been harrowing. Yeah, it was a brutal affair. It was meant to be a quick bonding mission. Got really out of hand. I try to repress the memory. Bonding mission? So you must be very close to the Imperial household. It's my job, I shrug. They both laugh. Their guards are nervous as hell, though. We small talk for a bit, and they part with no issue. Later, some poor servant comes to serve drinks. She is clearly terrified. It makes me feel like shit. Razit tells her to breathe with a chuckle. A few more groups approached, but most stayed put. They were all clearly on edge about me. I couldn't understand why. A few officers were quite friendly. One techie boy... <laughs> I said tech. <laughs> I do <didn't> want <laughs> One tech boy even said hello. I assume eyes Lego's armour. The captain of the ship and her second joined us for the actual meal. She had a badass metal arm and was quite likeable. The second was an ass. Talked to me like I was retarded or something. Legos just placed a hand on his shoulder and he shut up. <laughs> what a fucking moron. How is he so high ranked in this ship? I just had a nice grok steak and some weird fish snacks. Razit was straight up drinking liquor like water. Totally unaffected. Made me feel silly drinking my wine. After the meal proper, more nobles and officers tried approaching me. It was mostly awkward but harmless. Until, of course... I demand you apologise for your insults to my most honourable house. Oh, fuck off, McDonald's. <laughs> of course one of the army officers was a McDonald's cousin. Fuck off, I dismissed him, and Grand style. I was seriously sick of dealing with these fucks now. They were everywhere. I will not be talked down to, Ben. Um, ju a few sunny dogs approached. One punched the McDonald's in the sternum, and the rest dragged him away. Lego stood in front of the noble's entourage and told him to leave. As in, the feast... The captain assured me that the McDonald's regiment would be on a house arrest. I'm also pretty sure the Sunny Dogs roughed him up. <laughs> well, fuck that guy. I wonder how this is going to come again. I think this is going to bite them. Mm. I think it's going to bite them. Yeah, it might. Definitely at some stage. Yeah. We are stopped at some spaceport above some Igri world. The whole planet is a shallow ocean peppered with islands, the largest of which is the size of Delaware basically non-stop fishing and harvesting some fast-growing coral that is harvested en masse for building material. 
Of course the coral spits acid until killed. The fleet is resupplying as well as trading trips between ships. We're going to be here for a few days, so Razak gave a rotation for the Sunny Dogs to have leave at port. The port has a casino. The boys are eager to waste their money at. I mostly just read more reports. The next feast was uneventful. I mostly small talk with the Kazits and the captain. A few officers tried to get me to talk about the big E and his sons. I just told them to wait till we linked up with Ross and ask him. That made them quiet. Our next stop was a forge world. We refueled, picked up some supplies, dropped off some fish and coral, and the archmages told us to basically kick rocks. Thankfully no feast after, as we didn't trade crew or trips. I did try to find a mural in one hall the captain told me about, and walked in on an off-duty couple in one of the empty rooms. It was awkward. Awkward! (laughs) Even worse, when they asked if I wanted in. (laughs) What the hell, people? (laughs) The Kazits visited me for a bit. Just some minor drinking and Ripper told me some war stories. Also kicked my ass at cards. I did have fun, though. Our next stop was a semi-feudal world. Same old resupply. We did have to attend a party, but none of the locals approached me. Likely didn't help I was wearing my armour and had all the sunny dogs with me. I was worried something would go down the first time I actually was off the ship. No go, thankfully. We should only have one more stop before we reach the mustering point. I was polishing my armour when I felt it. The ship lurched. My guards put their helmets on and helped me into my armour. We got a call from Razitz. He got word from the captain we got pulled from the warp. What's going on? I prepped both my pistols and my ring, debating to don my chain yet. The sunny dogs are on full alert. Our hall is on full lockdown. Ship lurches again, this time hard enough to rattle things. Fuck, that can't be good. We get word from the captain that the fleet is being attacked by Corsairs. Fucking Eldar! Always up, no good. <laughs> we might be boarded. Clearly heard explosion a few car doors down. Yep, we're being boarded. I'm being kept in my room. The living room slash kitchen is being guarded by sunny dogs that have fortified the place. The hall is a kill zone. I can hear fighting. After a bit, it stops. A guard hands me his vox. Anon, their leader wants to talk to you. Raza is on the other line. Tense and clearly focused. Put me through. On it. I can hear the vox being thrown. Is this the keeper of lore? (laughs) (laughs) Fuck, I'm keeping that one then. He ever speaks has heavily <laughs> He ever speaks has heavily accented Gothic. Who wants to know? Just the Farseer sent to bring you in. <laughs> I don't know why Eldar speaks. <laughs> I'm reading it how it's typed. <laughs> yeah, let's go with that. I like that. I like that voice. Which craft world do you heal from, child of Isha? There's a pause. Biltan. 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 I can't Biltan. <laughs> I don't know what type of accent that I don't is. Know. Is it like a Russian almost a kind of science? I- I don't know, it's like East... I'm, I don't know, Eastern like some European. Some it's some... Sort of. I don't know what... I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> Alright, let's just go with it. And what do you want, O oh vaulted farseer of Biltam? What do you want with us? Don't play games with us, monkey. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Straight up monkey, like monkey. <laughs> you know why we want you. I don't swing that way. <laughs> <laughs> I hope this farseer is male. It would be funnier that way. The farseer starts ranting and I only half listen. I lean towards another guard. Do they have their helmets on? He looks at me oddly, then asks his vox. No. Great, that makes this easy. Tell the captain to vent this section of the ship. We're all ready for void. He gives me a thumbs up. After a crashing sound, everyone is thrown around by the coming vacuum. The chaos gives Legos time to start butchering the Eldar. That gave the sunny dogs time to help out. Too bad enough Eldar escaped. Don't know how they survive vacuum like that, but it's total BS. By now the fleet has regrouped and the Eldar are forced to flee. I really hope many of these fuckers died for this. I order Razitz and the boys to bring me any soul stones that are found. It should be worth something to Eldrad. Yeah, soul stones are very valuable to them. Very valuable to them. We got a bunch of soul stones. I added them to the stash Solomon sent me. I'm kind of confused why Biltan would want me. And I thought they were led by Exarchs, so why was the Farseer after me? I thought Biltan were in the kill all monkey camp. We vented the Eldar bodies and tended to our dead. Thankfully ours was the only ship boarded, but that is concerning. How did they know which ship I was on? 
I thought the Eldar were kind of cool in my old life, but actually living in the same galaxy with them is unacceptable. <laughs> yeah, I'm quite an Eldar fan though myself. Like, we all know, James. Yeah. <laughs> we reached our next stop, with no more issues. Another Igri world, this time devoted to Grox raising, as well as harvesting minerals from their manure. We were delayed a bit at port for repairs, but we are still ahead of our estimated time. The spaceport did have a resort, so I got a massage. Really helped with the stress. Next stop is the mustering point. As we enter the system, we are healed by the wolves. They tell us which of the six spaceports orbiting the moon of the local gas giant. I get in my armour. I'm eager to meet Lehman Russ. We hit a snag, though. Papers, please. The army guards are insisting I show my papers and ID. But I don't have any. I literally don't have any. Russ is expecting me. Yeah, and I play cards with the Emperor on weekends. Don't try that grok shit. Nobody gets passed without proper ID and papers. You've got to be shitting me. Is this a joke? Is our job a joke to you, asshole? I am Lord Anon. Never heard of you. I am the Emperor's cupbearer and was personally requested to be here by Lehman Russ. Likely story. Still need to show us your papers, jackass. I have a custodies with me. And a bunch of solar ox with me. But you still have not provided ID and papers. This went on for a while. This is giving me little Monty Python vibes. It's like, I'm the king! It's like, I didn't vote for you! <laughs> That's exactly what it is to them yeah. peasants. <laughs> I literally have the Emperor's sigil on my armour. And we have already filed a report against you for lack of respect towards the Imperial household. But the Emperor literally made my armour as a gift. Yeah, and I bet you're pen pals with Horus as well. Yes, actually, I am. <laughs> Whatever, just give me your papers and ID. And you can enter. I'm about to shoot this fucker. We've been here for an hour. I am beyond pissed. Will you let me pass? I have a meeting with Russ you're making me late for. You ain't passing this gate without proper ID and papers. I'm rubbing my temples. When the guards get a call. The guard has a thousand yard stare as he is yelled at over Vox. Sorry sir, I was just following orders. You're free to pass. I walked past, just wanting to move on. Then they stop Razzitz. Are you fucking kidding me? Oh my god. <laughs> Breaking news. Terror Lord intimidates Station Guard, utilising an ancient Terran battle stance. <laughs> the Station Guard appeared to have backed himself into a corner. The Emperor's cupbearer has both arms extended at a 90 degree angle from his legs, as he glared beefily. His guards and even an exhausted Emperor's custody joined the Lord in his intimidation tactic. The guards and all guards of the station have been thoroughly cowed. Just flexing on these retrobates, bruh, commented the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> Thankfully, Legos was just as sick of this as I was. He simply picked up both guards by the throat and the sunny dogs passed. That was retarded. At least it's over, Razzit replies. No, we still have to report these fuckers. Thankfully, a group of space wolves were sent to show us the way to Russ. Razzit hands me a pouch. What is it? Pills that allow someone to drink liquor like water. You're going to need them. Oh, God. Is that how you... No, I just have an augmented liver. Won it in a card game against Magos. Eh? That sounds useful. We approach Lehman's personal office. If it isn't my father's cupbearer, Lehman Russ greeted us warmly. Basically forced mugs in mine and Razzit's hand. Even with the pills, the drink makes my head and gut spin. The fuck even is this? I cannot thank you enough for helping my brothers. Horace had plenty of good things to say about you. It's great to meet you too, Lehman Russ. I look forward to following you and your sons into battle. I really hope I don't make a fool of myself. There are plenty of minor orc fiefs around this sector. You should get to see plenty of action. Me and my boys will keep you safe while ensuring you get properly blooded. Then he downs his whole oversized mug. But first, we will be holding some games to welcome you to our legions as an honoured guest. Sounds great. Russ reaches for something on his desk and shoves it into my arms. It's a spear. I knew you'd be all for it. Well, shit. <laughs> What's he signed himself up for? <laughs> I don't think I'm ready for this. Russ pushes me towards the gate to the arena. Nonsense, you'll do fine. I enter in and see my foes. It's a pair of Torellian who looks like they've seen some better days. Is the Imperium already fighting the dog face fox? I thought they bombed their world way later. Whatever, time to fight. My spear goes right through the first one's gut, thanks to the boost from my armour. It curses at me in some weird tongue. The other takes the chance to swipe at my face with a long knife. I burn him with my digi weapon. I quickly pull my spear out of the first to mercy kill the second. No sense at letting him suffer needlessly. 
Even if he is a Xenos, I would grant him a quick death. Death by fire is a brutal way to go. The crowd of Astartes and army staff cheer. It was an easy fight, and a quick one. Thankfully, Russ didn't throw me at some horror for laughs. I wouldn't put it past him to do that, be honest <laughs> with you. The wolves have been pretty welcoming. The pills Razak gives me really help. I only really drink wine casually, and the stuff the wolves give their mortal guests is heavy-duty stuff. I got to see some of their training drill, which was interesting to watch. I think one of the servant girls is trying to get me drunk. She keeps shoving a new drink in my hand all the time. Won't stop asking me about Terra. I'm kind of burned out in people right now and I just want to watch the Legionnaires spar. I try and answer her questions and be polite. Russ is facing a dozen of his boys in the arena. Servant girl is still asking me questions. Doesn't seem to understand I want to watch the match. Why is she doing this? The Solars could have answered her questions better. I even tell her so. She then asks me about home. I just want to watch the fights. I tell her about home, my family, the state of the world when I left. Holy shit, Russ is using one of his sons as a club <laughs> and the others. The crowd goes apeshit. I'm tired as fuck. I signal to my guards that I'm ready to go to my quarters and rest. The servant girl asks if she could join me. Why? What, what do you think? She's like, okay, come on here. I'm going to sleep. If I wanted to socialise, I would stay here. A few of the sunny dogs are laughing at some joke they must have heard. I was given an officer's cabin and slept like a log. I woke up hungover. The pills didn't fully save me from the drinking, as they were a lot. It could have been worse. I freshened up and head to the mess hall to eat. Just some oats, fruit, and what I think is ale. Razit was too hungover to join me. <laughs> I have another meeting with Russ, but that is much later in the day. I plan to wander around the port and check things out. Everyone seems to give my group a wide berth. We stopped at a few arenas. Some of the dogs wanted to head to a club for the soldiers. I allowed them to, as long as they stay out of trouble. I'm eating when I get a call from said club two hours later. A fight had broken out and I was needed to deal with it. F the fuck, guys? Turns out the dogs used their bonuses from being my guards to party at the club. And said club was actually a brothel under a different name. Hey, that's what I'm talking about, guys. <laughs> Damn, guys, this better not turn into a scandal. What happened? Your men started throwing money at the girls and the other patrons didn't take kindly to them hogging all the women. Fights broke out. You gotta pay the damages. Done. Give me my men. I signed the papers to access my funds. It wasn't even the dent of my stipend. The sunny dogs will pay me back, though. Why did Rathits have to be too hungover to deal with this shit? I had to detain the dogs that started shit. I had them confined to our wing in the port. It was a really light way of punishing them. I couldn't blame them for wanting to blow off steam. They could have just each picked a girl or two and been done with it. Not start a brawl. Whatever, Razzits could handle any further punishments. I spent some time at a range before meeting with Russ. The meeting itself was just an overview of what we would be doing. We were going to clear the sector of orcs, now that the naval forces have wiped out their fleets. We were going to world hop and reclaim the worlds as well as liberate those under siege. We move out in a few days. Our first stop will be lifting the siege of a civilised world called Parth Secundus. Parth Secundus wasn't left to face the green tide alone. The sole hive city that served as the capital had a connected and walled spaceport. They were still receiving supplies and reinforcements, just limited its scope while the Imperial fleets targeted the orc ships across the sector. The Parthi were dealing with the siege and had evacuated the civvies from the countryside. Russ and the wolves would drop right into the major orc camp to devastate their ranks. I was to be the face of the mortal forces being sent to the hive proper to boost morale and to help hold the line while the wolves hunted orc leaders. The army would really be led by a council of generals that actually knew what they were doing. I was to go around and be seen, shake a few nobles and factory leaders' hands and pose for propaganda pictures while looking heroic. As I arrived, I noticed the world had a Persia flavour. The PG was even called the Shah. Pretty sure they spoke a Farsi dialect. They still spoke Gothic, and pretty well too, though only High Gothic, but I had staff for that. The battle at the walls was ceaseless. The orcs had been battered by every passing ship dropping supplies for the hive, but they still came in an endless tide. The defenders pushed them back again and again, but the orcs always love a good fight. The plan is simple. The wolves will kill the war boss and his closest knobs, then push for the hive. The army and PDF will then sally forth to crush the infighting orcs between us. 
Actually seeing the orcs infighting made me really confused. It was every orc for themselves versus an attack from all sides. I rode on top of some massive tank, taking pot shots with my bolt pistol. Near the end of the fight, I picked up a Sunny Dogs banner and started shouting Terra Inviticus like a madman. The troops seemed to love it. Russ and I posed over the war boss's corpse for the cameras. He heckled my own war cry and head patted me like a child afterward. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> we had a victory parade through the hive as the army cleansed the countryside of orc holdouts. The Shah gave a massive speech I didn't understand and whatnot. We stayed a bit to help rebuild the countryside, as well as burn the massive piles of orc bodies. The Shah was literally darkened by the sheer amount of ash from the fires. Party Secundus would face at least a few years of winter from the ash blocking out the local star. But the Imperium was shipping supplies and the hive could produce ration paste so the world wouldn't starve. By the time we were to leave, other Imperial forces had lifted the other nearby human worlds from their sieges. Now was the time to take the orcs worlds. It was a sight, seeing worlds face orbital bombing without concern for civvies. Some of the orcs had the sense to dig in deep. Lehman personally led the charges on these bunkers, babysitting me the whole time. It was amazing watching him and his sons cut loose. Raza and his boys were loving it. After a world was cleansed, the army and wolves would clear space for a primitive bare bones spaceport. A few settlers would be set up in small towns and a regiment left behind to deal with any feral orcs that popped up. Usually the regiment's CEO was made planetary governor. More colonists would be shipped in later. It was nice seeing some of the menials' faces when they were offered some land to settle. We were resupplying at a peacefully annexed feudal world when some of those dog-headed lizard fucks decided to raid the world. The Imperial fleet bitch slapped them back. The locals told us they raided every few decades for slaves and plunder. Russ was livid. We sent word to Terra, as I was meant to head back soon. However, this had to be dealt with first. I got front row seats to the xenocide of the Torellian civilization. After virus bombs cleared the surface, Astartes and armies alike hunted any remaining Torellian presence. On one frontier world of theirs, we found human slaves forced to work under the Xenos yoke. Once we had butchered their military garrison, we buried all the Torellian civilians alive. The freed human slaves were properly settled and integrated very willingly. I had gloves made from the Torellian noble's skin. They would make great conversation starters. Fuck! Metal. Absolutely. <laughs> Metal. Metal as fuck. With the galaxy made a slightly better place, I parted ways with the Wolf King. I had to stay in the medical bay of the ship for a while, as Russ bear hugged me when we parted. I was to link up with Horus on the way back to Terra. Most of his legion would be led by his Mournival while he was away. While I was kicking ass with Russ, a few more Primarchs were found. Fulgrim, Ferris and Khan. They would be on their way to Terra soon, as their worlds were brought properly into the fold. Should be grand. Angron should be in good enough shape to join my guard before he can start his trials. It'll be great to see him again. I wonder what Mal and Emps have been up to. I still need to speak with Horus about speaking to Eldrad. Solomon has been silent for a while. Hope he and his legion are okay. We had a few stops before we linked up with Horus. At one stop, a planetary guard's daughter kept following me like a lost puppy. She was small. <laughs> <laughs> Barely eight standard years. Almost punched the planetary guard when he offered me her hand. Uh, no. What no. the actual fuck? <laughs> yeah, no, cut that shit out, please. The governor was offended. I was offended. Legos dragged me out of the ballroom and back to the ship. That really shot my mood for the next few stops. On a more positive note, I got word from home. My dad is gone. Passed away from a heart attack when he learned the world's name was changed. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually pretty good. <laughs> My eldest brother has revoked my disowning. I don't really care, but it's still nice. I reached the meeting point before Horus. He could be here at any point. Warp travel is a ranged estimate. The local system is pretty barren. One major void point and a few lifeless rocks. The port is at least busy and a main stopping point for the sector. I kid you not, they have a theme park. Razit says he's been here before and is refusing to leave out lodgings. 
More worrying is that a major faction leader here is personally asking to meet me over and over. She claims to be his wife. I don't need this drama. In other news, Angron sent me another letter. Just some minor updates on his progress. Nice to hear from him. It's nice to hear Angron's doing well. Yeah. He was a very sad character in 40k, to be honest with you. But it's it's nice that he's gotten like you know some, well like I don't want to speak too soon because you know finally like, that something it's, might fuck it's up. gonna it's gonna end badly. Yeah. This you know. I have been repeatedly harassed by Razit's lady friend, at least by her lackeys. I have yet to learn her name. Razit won't talk about the situation. I have decided to ignore it till Horace arrives. Then we will bail and forget this ever <laughs> happened. <laughs> nice. If she tries something, I have the army on my side. I have the power of God and An enemy, enemy on, on my side. side. <laughs> I really don't want to get involved. The bitch tried to block our food shipment. The army wanted to talk things out with her faction. I declared the action rebellion and said as such over Vox. The locals backed the fuck down and gave us our shipment. I have repeatedly told this bitch's agents if they want to talk to Razitz to file a request to the army. Not me. I swear to God. Sorry, force of habit. <laughs> <laughs> I swear by the Imperium I will have her shot and punch Razitz for forcing me to deal with this shit. 20 requests in 5 days? Thankfully Horus arrived. We bolted after his ships restocked. I agreed to never discuss this with Razitz unless we were talking about avoiding the station. I spent some time with Horus. He kicked my ass at cards repeatedly. We did some game hunting on a pit stop. This one world had a reserve to hunt feral orcs. Oh, that's pretty cool, actually. Yeah. I like that idea. <laughs> I, I actually, yeah, no, that's a really cool. At least they're getting paid by rich people to have their orc problem dealt with. Horace and I got a lot of kills in. Razitz is a little happier from it as well. I think the planetary governor was trying to get Horace to build a vacation home. Can't blame the guy for trying. We're close to Seoul now. We have stopped at a hive world. Horace was asked to meditate and dispute between two major hives. They have already had some fighting, and both are threatening to resort to nukes. The cause is really fucking dumb. Each governor of the hives had an affair with the other's wife. I am not joking. If the Imperium loses a valuable hive world to this bullshit, I suggested Horace strip them of their offices and allow each hive to elect their replacements, as each hive elects their governors for life. He of course got them both to stand down with his bullshit Primarch charisma. In a week he had them eating at a feast together as friends. Hi! I just want to get back to Terra at this point. We were greeted back on Terra with another parade. I'm a lot more used to crowds by now. Smile and wave boys, smile and wave. <laughs> I had to speak to some propaganda personally. He asked me to talk about my time with Ross and Sons. I talked about Party Secundus and our purge of the dog-faced fucks core worlds, about the slaves we set free and showed off my gloves. I felt it went good. Big E greeted us and we got to chill for a few days before a welcoming feast. I visited Anne Gron at the medical bay for a bit. He's doing great. He's under constant watch by the docks and he's back in his wheelchair, but he's in much less pain. He should only get stronger now and this can be all behind him. Horus and Emps have been discussing my possible meeting with Eldrad. Angron and Legos will be my protectors during my one-on-one -on -one with Eldrad. Horus and his few hundred marines and Big E with his three hundred companions will act as backup if needed. We are to meet at a frontier world out in the space sticks, on a world reclaimed from some minor Xenos colonists that were purged and replaced with proper human ones. The date has already been agreed on, and Horus has some of his marines guard the meeting spot to prevent any funny business. I still have no idea what I'll say to Eldrad. <laughs> Tell Eldrad you're the hacker known as 4chan. He'll be quaking in his little elvish bitties. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Angron is getting stronger fast. He will soon be cleared to spar with marines and custodies in limited bites. He is really eager to be at full strength. Gulliman has finished his trials. A bit later than expected, due to some politic issue on Terra needing his help. But now G-Man is being sent to lead his legions at last. He is being sent out with some Terran recruits to the 13th. I wished him good hunting. Ferris made it to Terra, though I have only seen him in passing. He doesn't seem interested in meeting me at all, but has been polite when we have passed each other. 
If he wants space, I will give it to him. Fulgrim and the Khan are still on their way. Horus went to take Angron sightseeing in some of the Terran ruins that have yet to be reclaimed. Horus asked if I wanted to come, but they could use this as proper bonding time. I hope they have fun. Razit has his sunny dogs running crazy drills to prep with the coming meeting. He wants the men in top shape before dealing with those knife ears. Also, I finally asked about the farseer from the boarding. It was a meal, he thinks. Eldar are weird and Razit has had limited interactions with them. And the farseer is dead. Legos killed him first. Sweet, fucker had it coming. Big E informed me I would have to attend more functions. I've started my formal dance lessons and have been granted a tutor. I will be attending a ball before we leave to meet Eldrad. Angron came back alone. He and Horus find something and Horus stayed with a few marines to guard it. Emps and the custodians have gone out to retrieve it. What did you find? I asked Angron. An armory of Voltkite weapons. Thousands of them. Damn. From some of the pics he showed me, the armory was the size of a stadium filled with relic weapons. I'm totally going to ask for one. <laughs> of course. <laughs> I've been needing a main weapon. Angron tells me to focus on learning proper melee instead. I remind him I am a fucking nerd. <laughs> yeah, like <laughs> he just laughs. I, like I'm sorry to say, but a normal human using melee in 40k just doesn't work. Like let's be serious. Like you know, it's different if you're a moon or a guy mark. Give me the big <laughs> shitty thing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Give me give me the boomstick. You know what I mean? Can I just get the boomstick, please? I asked for a sweet Vulkite gun. Emps shot that down for now. <laughs> what? Come on, just give him one. Just give him one. I have one set aside for me. But Angron asked Big E not to give it to me unless I learned to properly fight in hand-to-hand -hand knife fighting and at least one primary close and quarter melee weapon. That's just not... Let's be honest, he's a fucking nerd, as I he know. says. He wants the gun. Yeah, just give him the gun. Razit carries a sword, but it's mostly just part of his uniform. It's a saber. He can use it, but not well enough to teach. Mal is looking for a chitter for my melee training. The Sunny Dogs will teach me hand-to-hand -hand and knife fighting. This is gonna suck, but was unavoidable. The galaxy is a brutal place. Ferris did offer to make me a weapon after I decided on a type. That's nice of him. I'm happy for him. I Hopefully was... he gets one, you know. <laughs> I was touched. He barely ever speaks to me, but is willing to craft me a weapon. He doesn't just do that for anyone. Fulgrim and the Khan's fleet got pulled into stopping a Xenos attack on a hive world they were passing by. The Imperial fleet wiped the Xenos ships out easily, but they deployed drop pods in a mass to the Agri world. The two Primarchs are purging the scum as we speak, but will be delayed. In other news, the Warhounds are sending a small group of Marines to serve their Primarch. The Legion is tied down on many fronts, but are sending 8 to 10 Marines. We don't know for sure how many. That is still far out, as they're on the fringes of the Imperial controlled space right now. Magnus has also been found by his sons. He was already packed when they find him, and he's on his way. Oh yeah, he's, he's like the psycho one, so of course he's going to know. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> don't worry, I'll go. I'll oh, go they're over. coming. <laughs> yeah, they're coming, don't worry, I'm all good. They're going to take a roundabout way to nab some known lost colonies on the way. The sunny dogs are kicking my ass. I knew some basic self-defense back in my past life, but solar ox don't fuck around. It's nothing fancy. Just brutal basics and getting me used to pain. The knife training is no better. The training knife is basically a short sword. Sometimes Razzits will throw a flashbang into the ring to test me. Fuck's sake. Little. <laughs> I got him back by throwing a duct tape air horn in his room at three. <laughs> <laughs> sure he kicked my ass, but it was worth it. I counted it as a win in my book. We just got word that the 8th Legion has found the Man of Iron STC and blown it to hell. Honestly, that's the best thing they could have done with it. The galaxy is a much safer place. The 8th took a beating, as the machine turned itself on in an attempt to defend itself. They're going to be licking their wounds for a bit, but most of what they lost was replaceable war gear. It could have been so much worse. Today I had a rest day. Emp's orders. I watched Angron and Lego spar a few times. It was fucking grand. When they were done, we went to eat. We sat in a garden slash park dome and watched some of the servant staff kids play some ball game. Angron cheered them on and made their day. We even posed for pictures afterwards, though Legos thought it was pointless. Miserable bollocks. Cold-hearted fuck. I know. <laughs> Ems has called me in for a meeting. 
It's like four in the morning, so I hope this is important. We caught the attempted sabotage of the third gene stocks. Well, shit. That has me up. Cultists again? Of sorts. He nods. Rather than affect the gene seed itself, they tried to slowly arrange protective shields into a subtle ritual circle. Damn, that is long term. I have ordered the gene smiths for that vault detained and interrogated. Without your knowledge, this would have slipped through. I'm just stunned we still tried it after the second legion stock was saved. The enemy will take whatever opening they can. Ain't that the truth? Razit got me back for the air horn. He did the classic bucket of ice water when I was showering. I got him with a surprise pie to the face during a meeting. What the fuck is this? What is this subplot about? Hi, I'm Anon and welcome to Jackass. You know what this feels like? This is like pure anime fucking filler episode. Yeah, it is. Subplot line. (laughs) Tell me it's not. He sent a confession letter on my behalf to some noble widow that (laughs) now won't leave me alone. (laughs) This went on. His officers got sick of us both and tied us to a flagpole at the marching fields. Legos refused to untie us on the grounds we had acted retarded. Angron laughed his ass off and drew on our faces. <laughs> what is this? <laughs> what is this? Some menial untied us a few hours later. Razit gave the dogs hell afterwards. I had a training accident. A dog broke my arm during a spar. Then I hurt my leg in the automatic door in the med bay. My leg's gonna heal fast, but my arm is still gonna be in a cast when we meet Eldrad. Fuck am I gonna look like an idiot. At least my nurse is cute. Too bad she's married. We are prepping for our outing. I got an Eldar to talk shop with. Not being completely dumb, I'm going to be armed to the teeth and have backup out of the wazoo. It has still been agreed that I will have Angron, Legos and a full platoon of sunny dogs and two sisters of silence with me during the meeting. Ah, that's a good idea, I'm getting the sisters of silence. That was a good, that was a good thinking. Horus and Big E will be ready to supply a rescue if needed, as well as kick ass. Eldrad will be allowed nine guards. He will have who knows how many backups. I'm gonna give him half of the soul stones up front and work out a dead drop for the other half once the meeting is over to try and ensure he doesn't try to fuck us over. The dead drop will have a termite charge to help with this. If the space elves try anything and our triggerman is ready. A bit much you say? No, it may not even be enough. I really don't trust Eldar. Emps decided I had suffered enough from my broken arm. He did some weird golden light trick and boom, arm healed. Had the gall to say the pain was part of my training. At least I have use of my arm back. I got another week of training in before we boarded the ships for a meeting with the knife ears. In other news, the tutor that Mal was going to bring in refused the job. The ball's on that one. Mal is looking elsewhere. And now, the models of our website. Brought to you by neckbeardia.co.uk. Get you all some of these titties. Dwarf titties, orc titties, cat titties, fat titties, the gases and we assist a bit. Vampires and goblins and all the buff champions and even hentai, yeah that too. Dragons, manticores, ogres and no some bugbearers and even more to you go still. Undead and demons and then our friend Pally and definitely not 40k. Wood elves, dark elves and lizards and Megan the Slither and James the look cool as he stands. Beholders and kobolds and tyrants and only in a donkey with a frying pan. If you don't want no models, then no need to bother, we now have subclasses and tees. Also, Garbro's book, go have a look, check out the link to Kofi. Thank you for watching our videos and giving our channel a hand. But this is the end, our viewers and friends, so let's get back to the video, man. <laughs> I fucking hate myself. <laughs> Do you even know of Isha Monkey? 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 Likely more than you do, Eldar. He just looks confused now. I seem to have thrown him off. She still lives. Now he is really focused on me. Explain. He speaks with a tinge of feeling I can't place. She and the Laughing God escaped she who thirst birth feast. How do you know this? I'm a nerd. I shrug and I say this. (laughs) (laughs) How do you explain this? He goes dead quiet. After a bit he takes a deep sigh. I felt your first meeting with the Imperium. It was as if the tapestry of fate was thrown into an inferno. The future broke. Shattered utterly when you looked into the sky and saw that ship. It was a big day. Indeed. Care to explain it? No, I'm good. He glares at me. Why is that? It is beyond your kind's understanding, Eldar. We humans have our own secret lore as well. God, I love being the other side of that. 
eh. Honestly, it must be good being able to outmaneuver an Eldar. Because mm-hmm. they just, you know, let's be honest, they're just sky we yeah. no, sky weak fuckers, let's be serious. <laughs> yeah. Eldrad just glares harder. What would your kind know that we would not? Don't talk down to me, Eldar. My people built our place in the universe. Yours didn't even discover fire on its own. I speak with venom on my lips. He just laughs. And we ruled the galaxy far before your kind left the dirt. What of it? He starts pacing and gesturing with his hands while grandstanding. I honestly tune most of it out and wait for him to actually get to the point. He keeps going. I eventually cut him off. What did you want to talk about, Xenos? I'm really sick of dealing with him by now. I will leave if you don't quickly get to your point, Eldrad. He turns back to me. Lorekeeper, how do you know what you know? I saw the future fracture into many possible fates because of you. He steps closer to me. I saw one future where your kind defaced our inheritance and claimed your lost glories. I saw the old foe claim you in the other, and the galaxy was not but a tomb, one in which the Imperium fell to ruin. The races of the galaxy rejoiced until they were devoured by the swarm. He keeps ranting off possible futures to me. I'm quickly getting done with this though. What do you want from me? I cut him off again. He just looks resigned now. The truth. He at least asked. Isha is held captive by the plague god. You need stairs in the warp. And that fucking clown cult has a secret craft world in the webway. It houses your race's complete records. I throw him the sack of soul stones. He catches them without effort. His gaze is even more confused now. I have him fully off guard. Don't bother trying to rescue Isha. You would fail in two ways. One is you get crushed by his demons, the other is she who thirsts would claim her after you somehow manage to rescue her. His face keeps changing as I give him a whiplash. You need might be corrupted, I don't know for sure. Keep an eye out. He goes even paler, a look of horror on his face. Also, the old ones didn't intend to grant you their shinies. Your ancestors looted it from their corpses. As I turn away to walk back to my group, I finish. We will send you the location of the other stones as agreed, once we were in our ships, of course. This felt like such a waste of time. Luckily, I was wearing a mic, so we have this whole rant for us to search through for anything useful later. I really can't stand Eldar. I don't think he really gained anything from that no. interview at all. I just feel like he just gave the Eldar information. What? Now, they would have had information, however, as I did say, he shattered the the current course of how history was going to be yeah, running. Yeah. Um, so there's really not anything but you can gain. But he gave him a lot of information and, there. Uh, well, it could actually backfire on him quite a bit. Uh, if you guys don't know, um, Isha is the Eldar god of like you know health and all that shit. Nurgle's got her caption, captured. Pretty much Nurgle spends all day sitting blue at his pot making new diseases like AIDS and Ebola yeah. and Kruna and whatnot. Nurgle. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and uh, he feeds it to her, um, Isha every day. So he does... Mm-hmm. Although, he sure actually manages to bless it to mortals in the mm-hmm. universe, which she does through, like, divine intervention and shit. Yeah. It's actually quite interesting if you guys don't know. Check it out later. <laughs> Eldar fag. <laughs> Ems seemed really pleased on the way back. I don't feel like we gained anything, but whatever. While we were gone, Mal found me a melee tutor. His name is Ahal. He is a used-to-be champion for hire, as in nobles would hire him to fight trial by combat, as well as honour duels. Guy literally worked his way out of the lower hives to become a well-regarded champion fighter. We've not started actual lessons, he's just had me trying different weapons and is taking notes. Angron has been spending time with Ferris, which is good. Horus went back to rejoin the crusade proper, and the Big E is planning to head out as well after Fulgrim and the Khan get here. I wouldn't mind getting to see more worlds. Sahal has been talking with Ferris and they decided I will learn sword fighting. Not because I have any talent for it, don't be silly because Ferris is thinking a power sword is my best bet. Sahal has been drilling me daily and having me do sets to build muscle memory. Razitz keeps me drilled with... CQC. Close close quarter combat, is that my Yeah, that's a Melgar solid. (laughs) (laughs) And knife fighting. Enz is going to send me to rep him at the Hive on Antarctica. (laughs) Big rep him, I'm going to build. (laughs) He told me he had the 8th Legion kick their shit in during unification. I think I kind of know about that. I hadn't known they had survivors, though. He let them rebuild, but refused to visit personally. Malkador told me the plan is to have them believe they have an in to the Emperor through me. They were on thin ice due to barely making minimum on tithe payments. 
My job is to try and get them on board fully or even just to contribute a bit more to the crusade. Imagine actually like Imagine having emperor- to pay taxes to God. <laughs> imagine 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 the Emperor being working for the IRS. Like actually he coming and knock, fucking knock knock knock, <laughs> knock bitch. The fuckers snubbed me hard. My group had to wait an hour for our greeting party. The governor refused my handshake. At the party his daughter insulted me as a feral world <laughs> feral worlder during my required dance with her. And they charged me for my grip's food. What? What are these idiots thinking? They even made us rent apartments for the night as they impounded our ship. We tried to peacefully get our ship back, but they wanted a huge price. My grip raided the impound garage, reclaimed our ride, kidnapped the bitchy governor's daughter and used her as a hostage to get past the hive ant's air defences. These fuckers are gonna pay. Yeah, they're actually, gonna get, they're actually <laughs> the gonna get their fucking what? shit kicked in. They already got the shit kicked in before. They're going to get it even harder this time. Big E and Malkador had me restricted to the Emperor's wing of the palace for my breakout stunt. They think I should have handled that better and just requested a pickup. I say fuck that. They impounded an Imperial Ambassador's vehicle. They told me that was going to be used to sanction the Hive and force the Governor's family from power. The bitch I took hostage went livid, even calling the Emperor an upstart. It was funny as hell. Since her family has been stripped of their titles, she is now a menial. She is in charge of cleaning the sunny dog's boots. She yelled that it was beneath her. I offered to have her thrown out of the palace and left to fend for herself. She relented. I almost feel bad for them, but like, yeah. seriously, what were this you thinking? Boy, this boy, but, but the Anon seems to like get like really big for his boots. Oh yeah, well like, come on here. Who wouldn't if like, you're like by the Emperor's be side? Serious. Like, you are, that's just, that's just inevitable. Yeah. Um, although I do think the Emperor will dispose of him whenever he's out of yes. Yes, for him, I, yeah. I think he definitely... Yeah. I don't think he's going to survive. Yeah. The southernmost hive got a huge change in leadership. The governor's family was dragged back to the palace in chains. The morons tried to secede after the news of their demotion went out. The other houses pounced on them before the army could even muster. I managed to get the miners out of the house sparred. The governor's wife was shacking up with some rogue traitor and got off in exchange for leaving with him. The rest were executed by firing squad after trial. Before a governor died, he accused me of stealing his daughter to rob her of her virtue. I told him his daughter had none to steal. (laughs) She was pissed at that comment. I was really sick of her shit, so I kicked her out to the streets. Like, I know, I know it must be difficult. Like, you know, the boy is, like, you know, he's governor of a planet. It's a very big job and all that. But you need to remember, the emperor's king of kings. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, you may be a king, but you've got a king above you. You know what I mean? Um, no, you have someone above you. You have someone above you. And there's probably more above you. Yeah, exactly. Um, but it's very easy to think, oh, no, it's sweet. Don't worry yeah. about it. It's like, no, this ends badly yeah. for everyone involved. Like, this is how you get Death Corpse of Krieg. Do you want Death <laughs> Corpse of Krieg? Because this is how you get Death Corpse of Krieg. All right? As two sunny dogs started to drag her away, she begged me for mercy. Mercy, bitch? I already offered you a job before. It was an easy one too. I told her I would give her one chance. She would shut the fuck up, do her duties as a menial, and I would ensure she get a room, board, protection, and I would pay her dowry to marry her off to your frontier world noble. It was her best bet and she knew it. Frontier world nobles were almost always new bloods, and would be eager to get proper lineages to intermarry. Honestly, she should just be happy she doesn't get turned into a servitor. <laughs> like, let's be serious. I'm sorry. Just don't be... Like, that's what happens, though. Yeah. Just don't get turned into a servitor. Even if from disgraced houses. I was being crazy generous. If she started anything, she was to be thrown to the streets. She could become some ganger tribe's new toy or something. Literally the next day, two sunny dogs dragged her to me. She tried to seduce Rassets into killing me. Um, how about no? What a dumb bitch. Yeah. I was trying to be nice. I had her beaten and tossed out. Based. Yeah. (laughs) Be honest with you, I think that's going to come back to bite him, though. It'll be like the McDonald's, I think. Yeah, I think Um, they're going to come back to bite him. As you said, he is getting very big for his bits. And, like, you know, these people do hold a lot of sway and could get him into bother down the road. Angron told me I should have her killed. If she somehow tries anything again, I will. Her two siblings were really young. I was having them taken care of. They would be married off to Frontier Worlds. Emps was making me pay for their upkeep, but I wasn't going to have kids killed if I could avoid it. 
One was a six-year-old boy and the other an 11-year-old girl. They were sweet. I hired a small staff to watch the kids until we can marry them off. Angron has offered to text the boy to see if he can become an Astartes. I think that's supposed to be text. It should be. It? Why the fuck would Angron be texting him? Texting a six-year-old going, here, mate, do you want to be an Astartes? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Angron, LOL. Angron, LMFAO. <laughs> Angron nonce <non-tradition. laughs> edition. <laughs> yeah, I think it's test. So it is. I told him I would allow it if he passed and was interested. The boy was all for it. Mal insisted on screening him first. The girl is sweet but clearly scared by the death of her family and change in status. We've tried to make her feel as safe as possible. Angron is taken to watching her during the night shift. It is fucking nonce edition. Angron's watching the 11 year old. I'm really okay. happy for Angron in this universe because, to be honest with you, he's possibly the saddest character out of um, 40k, I think. Yeah. Like in the 40k universe. Because, honestly, he should have <laughs> just. Yes, if I know anything. <laughs> but, honestly, he should have just died on that planet. You know what I mean? Um, in the actual official, official universe. Official yeah. The new governor of the hive sent me a gift basket. I sent a thank you card. What? Fresh fruit is expensive as fuck on Terra. The boy passed both the gene and mental tests. He's going to be made a son of Angron. I don't know if turning him into a world leader is ideal. Oh wait, what were they called at this point? I don't think they were called Warhounds. They didn't get the name world leader to the leader. The boy stays Warhounds. He's been handed over to the gene smiths for processing. Our wait for Fulgrim and the Khan has been delayed again. Another world was attacked on their route. An orc wah <laughs> <laughs> has assaulted a forge world. They're helping out. This is clearly bullshit, but who's? Emps is pissed, but resigned. A rejoining the crusade is delayed for now. Ferris made me a power sword. I'm not allowed to use it right now, but it looks badass on my wall. Sahal was still kicking my ass. I mean, training me to fight. Raza and his boys have asked me to get them some combat. They were hoping we would be out in the crusade by now. I asked Mal and Emps if there was anywhere they could fight on Terra. I signed them up to assist on a routine underhive purge. This time, it went smoothly. Likely, cause I wasn't involved. I was asked to save the Emps more time and rep him at more balls and feasts. Those went way better. Most of the Terra nobles seem like okay people, if a bit snobbish. But maybe I'm just a bit plebish? Whatever, those went well. I've seemed to earn brownie points for saving the kids. Many seemed outright shocked when I went out of the way to help them. There was a small snag when one of the sunny dogs got to know a noble's mistress a bit too well. (laughs) A nobleman insisted he fight the solar ox tripper in fisticuffs. The fat mad lad actually won. Hey, nice. (laughs) Give him credit. (laughs) The solar wasn't even mad and bought him a drink. I talked more to this guy. His name is Hirio Kirstan. He's a big guy, like really big. He hits like a truck, though. We took him to a few more parties and left on great terms. After we return from our next tour in the Crusade, he wants to spar with the Sunny Dogs. I hope to see more of him. I also met with the head of House MacDonald, Lord Ronald, <laughs> whatever huge number. <laughs> <laughs> didn't you really have to call him? Yeah, you kind of had to call him Ronald, didn't they? He apologised for his various cousins' attempts at angering me. We talked for a bit. I danced with one of his lady cousins and we parted on decent terms. I hope that settles that. Though I think Hero is sleeping with his wife. <laughs> I had to attend some events and shake hands, but things were pretty slow. A few houses have offered me marriage requests or followers. Mal told me to wait on getting married. Biggie might need me to marry to help us with the world or pocket empire. A few houses sent me staff, like a scribe, a few maids and butlers, etc. House MacDonald sent me a young boy as a page slash ward to act as my errand boy. His name is Durin, funnily enough. If any of you guys know what that reference is, please let us know. I have no idea. He's barely ten. I try and make him feel welcome. Durin mostly just runs his water during training and carries low-level missives. My staff have been settling in. The scribe was bored out of his mind. I got him to work helping with some minor busy work for the palace. Two of the sunny dogs got in a fight over one of the new maids. I can tell she's going to be trouble. Durin has taken well to things. Angron took him on the range a few times. Sahal and Razitz are still kicking my ass each day, but at least I can fight a bit. Emps has been painting lately. It's damn amazing. Mostly random murals in the palace. He changes his appearance as to avoid attention, but still draws a bit of the crowd. Mal has been forced to pick up the slack, but Emperor needed a break. Emps seems to be more relaxed lately. I actually find him wrestling with Angron in the sparring area a few times. Ferris seems to be warming up to people more. A bit. 
he at least talks more. Gulliman sent me a letter. Just a summary of his journey in the crusade. I actually quite like this idea with Gulliman sending letters because he's supposed to be like an analogue to Caesar. Yeah. And Caesar's very famous for his letters because yeah. a lot of that's actually still preserved. Yeah. I actually like that. That's a nice wee touch. Yeah. I don't know if that's intended or not, but I think it's a good touch. The Warhound group being sent to join Angron is now on its way. The problem made is at it again. She's been teasing everyone. Even Durin, who she made blush like a rose. The sunny dog seemed to have accepted she isn't anyone's girl. As long as it doesn't cause an issue, I don't care if they treat her as a regiment bike, as long as everyone is consenting. It's a bit weird to me, but the Imperium is a lot more open and it's none of my concern. Durin hands me a note as I'm working on a test Malkador has me working on. I sent him off to complete his runs. The note is from Razitz. Seems like someone tried to sneak into my room. He's asked me to handle it personally. I finished the test real quick, as I was almost done. I checked the charge on my las pistol on the way. You can never be too careful. Someone breaking into my room might be a threat, even with guards. As I walk to my suite, I see a few dogs holding watch. They nod to me as I pass. I offer one in return. Raza is seated on my couch. A squad of dogs have a woman in servant robes strapped to a chair. This must be the person they caught. What's the situation, Razitz? He just walks up to me and coughs. She claims you invited her to your room? It seemed out of your usual habits. I didn't invite someone to my room. I draw my las pistol, but keep it at my side. I walk closer to the binded woman. I speak with a cold voice. Who hired you? How much were you offered to kill me? Anon, I don't... She starts panic yelling, almost in gibberish. Quiet! I yell. I would like to know who sent you. Both Razit and the woman go quiet. I... I was hoping you would take me as your personal maid. So you tried to break into my quarters? Likely story. You could have just sent me a request or approached me normally. I ain't fallen for none of this bullshit. You don't break into your hopeful boss's home and ask for a job. Do you take me for a fool? But, but you took in Tisha. Who the fuck is Tisha? The problem, maid? I didn't pick her. She was sent to me as a retainer as a noble gift. She just looks at me in confusion. This sounds like an infiltration of the Skunashi cult, just saying. Why did you come here? I was wanting to... She gives me a weird look. To take me on as your personal maid? But I have mates. If you wanted me to hire you, you could have gone through the proper channels. She tilts her head to the side a bit and has an even more confused look. You know, a personal maid? Stop talking in circles. What need would I have for a personal maid? I'm getting a bit upset now. Tisha said you could really use one, that you would be really eager to have me. She seems on the verge of tears. I'm so fucking lost right now. <laughs> of course you are. Virgin. <laughs> <laughs> Raza is chuckling to himself. The sunny dogs are clearly holding their own laughter. Then it hits me like a truck gun. I'm gonna have Tisha shot. <laughs> they start laughing like a madman while the poor girl starts having a breakdown. I didn't call this out on Vox for a reason, Anon. I want her in front of a firing squad. Tisha was just trying to look out for you. Calm down. She sent someone to break into my suite. Because she saw you were stressed and wanted to help you vent after you shot her down. Like, honestly, Tisha just wants you to get your dick sucked, yeah. mate. That's pretty much what it comes yeah. down to. I don't recall her ever trying to hook up with me. You wouldn't. I pause. I mean, the problem made teases everyone, me included. I wouldn't just ask her to stop. She would so, no issue. This was just insane, though. The poor servant tricked into breaking in was in tears, thinking she was going to die. I'm hoping to sweep this under the rug. Call Tisha here. I want to talk with her. I calm the servant girl down and have the dogs untie her with a silent hand order to shoot her with any sudden movements towards me. The problem made is brought in. She was smug until she saw the servant girl with clear signs of crying. I told her the situation and asked why she would do this. Because you need to get laid, my lord. <laughs> Excuse me? What's wrong? I thought she was your type. I'm usually good at guessing what men are into. Too forward? The fuck is wrong with this thought? <laughs> you had her break into my suite. You didn't react well to my flirting and advances. I thought it was a too open thing. So you had her break in? To seduce me because you thought I needed to get laid? That's about it. Sarah was looking to get a raise. You needed a mistress. What's the issue? I slapped her. She hit the ground hard. You're fired. I turned towards Razitz. Get her away from my sight. 
The dogs drag her away to toss her ass back to the house that sent her. I would have her kicked to the streets, but she was a gift servant. I would let them handle it. Can I have her job? Fuck it. You're hired. If you never bring this up again. Honestly, I think there's something weird going on here, especially with them making up with House McDonald. Yeah. I think this could be kind of fishy. Now, yeah, okay, Anon definitely does need his dick sucked. However, this could be a very, you know, I think there could be some scheming going on. We've been delayed long enough. We will go to Jagatai and Fulgrim. They have been dragged into another conflict. Again? This is clearly the enemy at work, but none of the foes they have been fighting seem chaos related. Mal speaks up. Can we have Horus go to them instead? The Albion Hives are still rocked by the McDonald slash Kirsten scandal. Both houses are threatening civil war. Looks like Hero got caught with Lord Ronald's wife. <laughs> nice. This is hardly the first time a Kirsten scion has been caught with another Lord's wife. Just let them have an honour duel and be done with it. Emps is clearly sick of the bickering and goes back to sipping his drink as Mal runs more general current Terran politics by us. I soon get an idea. If Emps and Mal are tied here, can't I link up with Pretty Boy and Khan? I will totally have Angron, Legos and the Sunny Dogs with me. Plus the Warhounds Honor Guard have just arrived in Seoul and are resupplying at Saturn. I suggest as much to Biggie and Mal. That could work. I will send word to Magnus to redirect his fleet to meet up with you as well. Mal shifts slightly. This seems risky. Do you really feel Anon is ready? Angron is not yet at full strength. Is sending them out to the Crusade proper wise? We don't have much choice. Anon. Big E glances my way. Needs to step up to his role. And the Warhounds need their Primarch. Seems rather confirmed then. When should we head out? You will leave for Saturn by the end of the day. From there a fleet will be rallied. I go peel. This is really quick. Emps places his hand on my shoulder. Be at ease and all. You have been prepared for this. You will have plenty of support. You just have to be the face of your expeditionary fleet. You can do this. It's just like Parthai Secundus. Raza and the men are eager to get back to the Crusade. They were packed and ready in two hours. Zul is staying behind. He has other commitments planet side. Being my chitter isn't his only gig. Durin is terrified. I ensure him we would keep him safe. If anyone takes him into a combat zone, they are getting in huge trouble. Angron had already headed off to meet the Warhounds. This time heading out was a lot more rushed. There was no parade or crowds. I boarded a non-warp ship to get to a port station around Saturn. It would be a week till the ships were fully stocked and ready. I didn't really get to see or mingle with the ship's crew on the way. Angron and his boys were waiting for us when we arrived. The marines were shell-shocked to have met their Primarch, so they were rather hard to read. I don't recognise any of them though. Our meeting did draw a rather large crowd in the station though. Angron and I took a few pictures and signed a few things for some of the staff and civvies passing through. The Warhounds had their own quarters in the station. It was rather empty right now beside the 11 marines, Angron, me and the Sunny Dogs. While we waited on the preparations, the Warhounds did some drills with the Solars. I did get a few visitors in the way of officers, but nothing big. A few wanted my help with station politics, but I politely shot them all down. It was pretty cool to see the Warhounds train and spar. Even not at full strength, Angron can body a few marines at once. Legos has also been sparring with Angron regularly. For you guys that don't know, it was actually quite big, um, sparring within the Warhounds Legion. It's yeah. a really big pastime of theirs, yeah. um, being like a gladiatorial sort of yeah. knockoff. My fleet has been prepped. My flagship is a Gloriana class, the Grey Citadel. I have 80-ish other ships leaving with us, with more to join us on the way. I will have over 300-ish ships under my command officially. In reality, I am basically a mascot. My real job is to shake hands, wave at the cameras, and inform the Primarchs we will be picking up on stuff we need to know. I'm basically going to be babysitting demigods. The hell even is my life? What I'm thinking is like a scratch record. Hi, this is me. <laughs> this is my life. <laughs> it all happened when Ems met Mal. <laughs> <laughs> my time is mostly spent doing paperwork between meetings. The army leaders aboard are running things mostly, but I have offered to help with the mundane paperwork and have attended meetings all over the fleet. I spent most of the feasts at each planet we stopped at mostly just showing up, make a speech, and shake some nobles' hands and go back to paperwork. 
At least the officers in my fleet seem like pleasant people. They were really tense at first. I had my first compliance. We found a world in the system we thought was uninhabited by Imperial estimates. The fourth planet from the star was the frozen desert world. The locals had settled the system after fleeing their old home during the long night. They had regressed to a semi-feudal level but had a complete record of their people's history. They live in half-buried towns on the surface and large underground cave cities. They had an interesting system of using the planet's steam vents to warm their homes and raise their crops. The clan leaders swore oaths to the Imperium and we left them with some voxes for when a follow-up fleet arrived. We entered the system where we were to meet the pretty boy and speedster. <laughs> Fucking speeds. <laughs> <laughs> Speeder comes that place. <laughs> a frontier world taken from a minor orc empire. Only a few hundred thousand human colonists live there. We were dropping off around 60,000 more. I authorised a number of the army tank units to help clear ground for the colonists and help with the construction while we waited for the Primarchs. This would be where we would leave our charge, the former Hive Governor's daughter. She would be marrying the new PG's son, who was just turning 14. Jesus Christ. What is it with all these stories? Can't tell Governor got daughters. It's always a fucking daughter. <laughs> yeah. It's always up to no good. We had met with a planetary governor, who was a former major in the army, and his family first, of course. I also got a letter from Russ, wishing me luck. I was visiting a town planet side when we got word of a small fleet entering the system. It wasn't one of ours. It was a combined fleet of the Doghead fucks with a few Eldar Corsars. The Dogheads likely wanted revenge on me, wiping their core worlds, and the Eldar led them right to me. My fleet wiped theirs though, but they were able to suicide their way through to Launch Pod's planet side. Of course heading right to the region I was in, because of course they know where I am. Fucking Eldar, I swear. Thankfully the town has defences, and they have to deal with feral orcs. The local militia was on it like clockwork, my solars helping dig in more. We would be ready. Am I getting like Hoth vibes here? It sounds like Hoth. It's gonna give me yeah. Hoth vibes. Yeah. The Xenos didn't get very far. Between the frontier men colonists, orc tribes and Angron, and boys all doing hit and run tactics, most died before even reaching the town. I was in the town's hall bunker with the local mayor listening and acting as an HQ. I had sent in most of the sunny dogs to help at the wall. The dog heads attacked. They were being wiped out. I let out a chuckle as I learned the town proper would be safe. Then I heard a weird noise and turned to see a team of Eldar teleported into the bunker. Fuck! Fuck! All hell broke loose. The few solars still with me opened fire. I jumped down and dragged the mare with me. I crawled and dragged the mare towards the hallway. We had a bit of cover but needed to get the hell out of Dodge. Why didn't I bring my armour? As we made it to the hall, I took a few shots at the Eldar team to hopefully open them up to my solars. It worked a bit as it distracted the space elves and one went down to the solar melters and militia last fire. The rest shot their Xenos guns at me. I was protected by my bright light and my necklace was slightly burning my chest. Thanks Ems. I bolted. That was when I saw Legos punch through the damn wall and drag me through the hole. Once he handed me off to more solars, Legos went in to kick ass. I really have to say, Anon is getting a lot more competent uh -huh. and he isn't just completely useless yeah. as what he used to be. And he's not garnering half as much. No, he's not. Like, you know, he, he is getting there, which is really nice to see. I'm really enjoying it yeah. so far. I was moved to a more secure part of the bunker complex. I was given some carpet plates and a flak jacket by some locals. Not much better than just my robes. The Solars held a lockdown till we got an all clear. The Eldar had hit several buildings, but once the team that spotted me was killed, the rest fled. They of course left the remaining dogheads to die. Such great allies! Legos at least downed one of their escape crafts by jumping off a rip and ripping off a wing. Jesus fuck! <laughs> it, was, it was mental as fuck, and a townswoman caught it on camera. Sway. Lively. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. what, what, what's the equivalent of the 40k life link? Can someone hit it down below? What's the name of it? I would ensure she would be rewarded well. Angron was pissed he missed the ambush. Thankfully, only the local region was affected, though a few areas had Xeno ship parts crash into them. I handed my necklace to Fleet Magos to be recharged. We helped the town rebuild and went back to helping the colonists expand. I had the killed Eldar soul stones taken to my suite. Angron and the Warhounds vented steam and kept hunting feral orcs. Our astropaths gave us word that Magnus would arrive soon, 
followed by the others. Should be a cool meeting. Things were nice and quiet while we waited for Magnus. There was plenty of things to help the colonists out with, so we kept busy. Forests cleared, fields flattened, town walls raised, and fleet tech boys helped give the colonists some production for basic trucks, trains, and tractors. There was of course plenty of feral orcs for the trips to hunt. When Magnus arrived, we held a feast on the Grey Citadel. You're not what I was expecting, Anon. Magnus sips his drink. Our meeting was pretty chill. G-Man said the same. Were you also expecting a scheming seer? He chuckles. Nothing so crass. I was expecting a much older scholar. Maybe a master politician. Father only mentioned you knew a lot of forgotten mysteries. That is an understatement. What exactly do you know? And where did you study such lore? I shrug. I'm a nerd. He just huffs. <laughs> Great explanation. Yeah, I'm a nerd. <laughs> it would be far easier just to let you read my mind once this feast is over. So we'll have plenty of time to go over everything. I'll hold you to that. Magnus and I settled on small talk for the rest of the feast. I made rounds to a great many of the new officers that had been entered into my fleet. I saw Angron and Magnus talk for a bit. Afterward, I allowed Magnus to take an overview of what I wanted to show him. I showed him the heresy, a despotic imperium, and the Black Crusades, the War of the Beast, and the opening of the Great Rift. He didn't react well. Magnus isolated himself for days to process this information. I didn't blame him. be honest with you, it is pretty much Magnus's fault why the Emperor was so... Fuck. Fucked. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> like, you know. We got word that Fulgrim and the Khan were on their way some days later. Magnus eventually worked through the knowledge I gave him and began his seemingly endless questions. I did my best to answer them, but most I couldn't. I was a lore nerd, but not all-knowing. In happier news, Magnus and his legion had learned to play Angron's and I's war game. Angron played Magnus. It had lots of rule bickering, and those were just as hard fought as the actual match, with the bulk of the legion joining in. The feral orcs were pushed to the boonies of the planet, and even more colonists were dropped off. When the last fleet arrived to do the same, this world's population will have doubled, and also be a lot more built up. The Primarchs were having a private feast between their legions. I left them to it. Family business. Once the two other Primarchs arrive, we will be pushing to unclaimed space. We will be meeting a force of warhounds out there. A group that was nearby that requested to serve under Angron. I was hardly going to turn them down. I also got word that Solomon was also attacked by an Eldar force, though its attackers were Dark Eldar. Damn. They took nearly a third of the Hive's world's population too. Nobody deserves that fate. Got word that G-Man faced a pocket empire of human psyker slaves. The witches had a few dozen worlds under their thrall. The Astartes faced some real monsters. Many of their worlds had to be burned. That would probably be the closest to like a chaos world yeah. in this time setting, I think. Magnus asked me to look at some old tombs he had. I knew a few of them, and some were even in English, so I offered to translate them. Made his day. They arrived. I greeted Fulgrim aboard the Grey Citadel. He had an honour guard of Imperial Fists. I guess he and the Khan don't yet have their legions. Sorry that my brother isn't here. He was going stir-crazy and headed planetside to vent. I just laughed. I thought he might. Eager to meet your other brothers? He flashed me his perfect smile. I can hardly wait. We exchanged words for a bit without actually saying any. I pointed him to Magnus and Angron. I now had a few thousand thousand sons. About a chapter's worth of Imperial Fists. Almost a dozen warhounds with a few hundred on the way. A fuck ton of Imperial Army Troopers and my few hundred solar ox. Damn, we had a big force. We leave soon. I'm pretty sure the Khan is snubbing me. I've only met him in passing. He has refused my every attempt at actually talking. He isn't trying to undermine me, so I think he just doesn't like me. I have to go through Fulgrim to get to him to do anything. We have brought three civilized worlds into the fold so far, and settled another frontier world. Magnus and Fulgrim don't seem to get along, and the Khan refused to be in the same room as Magnus, unless it's a formal meeting. Angron took to both as long-lost friends, though. Fulgrim can readily be found sparing or working on some project with Angron while on the ship. The Khan is always right by Angron in battle. In between stops, I have been translating those tombs for Magnus. It's weird to think I'm one of the few people to read and write English in the galaxy. My heart goes out to English majors from my time. <laughs> Time is starting to blur for me. A world is brought in here. Soon we are fighting orcs or something and resettling a world. We stop for a bit above some world that requires some touch or force or top off on supplies. 
Most human worlds welcome us with open arms and joyful tears. Some need to have their faces bloody a bit. It's rare when I have to go give the go-ahead to utterly break their backs. I have a council of the generals and admirals from the fleet, the primarchs, and a few diplomats slash remembrancers, and a few reps from the imperial fists. Angron and Magnus rep their sons. With such a council, I really just listen and follow what they think, and try and use my lore knowledge when it can be applied. I may have final say by right of the Emperor, but these folk know far more than me on how to run this fleet. I may be just some rubber stamp, but I have a lot of paperwork. We're stopped at a rather nice hive world. Theta too endured the long night rather well, finding a pocket empire of nine worlds that fed them food and materials. There was little smog, the water didn't taste bitter, just steel, and crime was low. The Thetans agreed to join after we helped repel a crab-like Xenos race that was harassing several of their colony worlds. Well, that, and the fact that they only had a fleet of a few dozen ships that were all dwarfed by mine. I had just finished a meeting with their leader. He styled himself as a czar. He was a rather blunt and cold fellow, but he was doing great from what I'd seen. I was now seeing some Thetan art museums with Fulgrim, who invited me along. They had some great stuff. It seems that Fulgrim and Angron got the can to give me a shot. I was asked to join him in an attack of the Crab Xenos main forts in a world we were taking from them. That was how I found myself in a landspeeder piloted by a Primarch known for speed. Oh. No. I think I snapped my neck in one turn, but revived before he noticed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, sorry. I, I, look, I don't even like... I don't even do like uh, roller, coasters. Um, roller coasters and stuff, so th that you don't me... even go over thirty mile an hour driving, James. So yeah, I'm not that bad, alright. Mm. <laughs> we killed some crab people together and had a lunch made from the roasted meat. The magos had cleared it as safe. It really seemed to ease the air for him. He had been acting a lot less stiff around me. The crabs have been broken. Their leader and warrior cast have been wiped from the galaxy. Their worker drones will be made a protectorate species. They shall be used as a slave force on a few of their worlds that have potential to become ocean farms. They will also be harvested for their meat. That's pretty brutal, let's be serious. <laughs> That's dystopian yeah, next I don't level. care, I like crab, so <laughs> Yeah. Give me big crab. <laughs> yeah. We oversaw turning their core worlds into agri worlds. This will allow some nearby hive and civilized worlds to have another steady food supply. Plus, we stopped them pirating the local human worlds. We returned to Theta 2 for a triumph they invited us to. They were really happy we crashed the crab folk. The Primarchs and I eat lunch at the estate of the Lady Governor that was holding the parades. She wouldn't stop hitting on Fulgrim. <laughs> Made my night. I danced with one of her daughters. He also showed me around the estate. It was a rather nice evening. The fleet is passing through proper Imperial space now. We are at a mustering point where we are swapping staff, tripper and material. The Khan is leaving us for a while to be granted command over a force of his legion. We will have another few hundred marines. Angron's boys are meeting. <laughs> <laughs> Angron's boys are meeting us here as well. Fulgrim is kind of in a rut over not having his own sons with him, though he is treating the fists well. I've sent word to Big E about having a small force of the Third Legion being sent to us. In other news, one of the generals is asked to be granted a frontier world to settle down. His lover refused to marry him unless they properly settled down. He is kind of too high a rank for that kind of posting. A general would be reserved for ruling a crushed civilized world. I'm going to allow it. The guy has earned it based on his record, and he has already been asked to retire twice now in the last decade. I talked to Angron. I told him properly about my old life and my knowledge. He seemed confused but said it answered a few of his questions about me. He talked about his time as a slave and about how much I have helped him. He also told me he couldn't picture Horus as an enemy, or that Fulgrim could fall so low. I told him that was the point in them picking Horus, and Fulgrim was basically a meat puppet at the time. Also, that it didn't matter now that the future was what we made it. I've got Magnus and Fulgrim to open up over some old designs we find. I tasked them with it, hoping it would provide mutual interest, and it worked. They're still a bit frosty, but less antagonistic now. Now that the Khan has some of his sons with him, he's a lot more cheery. He even attended a dinner with Magnus present. They still bickered, but it was progress. Razid had a minor scandal to deal with when a sunny dog slept with an army officer's wife. Had the solar flogged, but bought him a drink. Durin has grown a bit since we left. Has it really been two years since we left Terra? He's been asking to be allowed to train, which I allow him with some big limits. No running into the grounds like the sunny dogs did with me. 
Emps has sent me word that Fulgrim will get the lead some 200 of his boys. Great. We were going to be losing the Imperial Fists though, as Dorne has been found and is getting his legion right away. Vulcan has also been located and Big E is on his way to him. Russ sent me a bunch of Eldar soul stones, with no context. Just a letter asking me to meet him and Solomon soon, as we'll be nearby soon. By galaxy scale at least. On our way to meet Solomon and Russ, we passed a certain world. It's now a dead world, but our record said it was used as a vault during the dark age of technology. Who knew what kind of loot we would get from it? We had the tech adepts take point, look over every precaution, and ready the fleet to reduce the surface to slag if something went wrong. Slag. Slag. <laughs> Molten slag. <laughs> for you guys that don't know, a slag is a slot from Northern Ireland. Yeah, it's a slot. Yeah. Slag. Slag. Toto slag. <laughs> <laughs> it was just a storage place for really old computers. It was all checked for scrap code and other baddies, but was cleared. In good news, I'm sending Mal an Apple computer and a Pong set. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose they even still have that for the Dark Age technology. Yeah. It, what, forgive me if I'm wrong, let me know in the comments, but when does the Dark Age of technology start? From about 10,000 AD to about 15? I think it lasts for to 20,000. Mm. I can't remember exactly. Let us know in the comments. I, it's been a while since I've went over that section of the war. I watched the gas giant from the Grey Citadel's observation deck. It was a purple ball with bands of green and had two major rings. I could just barely see some of the nearby Imperial ships and stations. A new mustering point was being made here, as the local ice fields in this system were perfect. We had arrived first. Solomon's fleet would arrive soon, followed by Russ. I was eager to finally meet the second Primarch. My research into him and his legion told me they had a huge Abrahamic theme. They had a blend of Crusader themes with the Jewish icons. Hell, Solomon even slew 72 Witch Kings before Emps found him. His personal banner was a six-pointed star with a scroll inside. His homeworld was called New Canon, and his legion were the Templars. Just Templars. I had so many questions. The Templars have arrived! <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Solomon was a cheery sort. He gave me orders from the Big Boss E. The Magnus was to head to Terra. Also, Angron was to leave with Russ. Angron would be escorted to his legion's mustering point and take full control of the Warhounds. I'm gonna miss him, but Angron is totally ready. Solomon told me he had some stuff to show me, but I could wait for now. My fleet will be getting more third legion to make up for the loss of Angron and boys. 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 We've been hosting interlegion games while we wait for Russ to arrive. Our mustering point is fully up and running, and we have a few ships collecting ice from the rings. Solomon showed me some relics. Most I couldn't help with. One, however, was a stone tablet that I knew about. Or, at least one like it. I'm pretty sure this is an old one mural depicting their creations and the war with the Necrons. Solomon was just confused until I explained just who the old ones and Necrons were, including the war in heaven. He's going to send it to Mal for further testing. I had to break up a fight between Fulgrim and Solomon today. Solomon insulted Fulgrim's overly artsy armour as impractical. Fulgrim insulted new Canaanite cultural values. I was cut short after I threatened to make them hug in the corner for an hour if they didn't both shut up. For crazy OP demigods, the Primarchs sure do act like kids sometimes. <laughs> Yeah, they really do. It's because they're, they're all so powerful within yeah. themselves, so it's like, it's a pissing contest between it, a lot of them. I think that's what it is, because a lot of them spent their entire lives by themselves, mm -hmm. and a lot of them are Don't even know their quite, brothers. No. They're quite old at this point, and they're more like, they're yeah. like fully grown adults. Yeah, you know so it, I mean? it's just a massive power pissing yeah. contest. And they've always been like the most powerful by far of anyone around them, yeah. you know what I mean? They've always been treated like They haven't had weird... like equals around them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Russ was delayed due to having to save the world from orcs. Just a pirate force looking to loot some shit. All well in hand for the Wolf King. I still sent the Khan and his marines to help, just in case. Also because the Khan was bored as shit. <laughs> Sounds about that. Like, what else would you be doing? Like, come on. Exactly. Turns out there was a lost forge world nearby. They sent a ship to greet us, nearly giving us heart attacks when it entered the system. The tech boys somehow lost the knowledge of this world. We sent some ships to formally bring them into the fold. Solomon and Fulgrim have taken to having poetry battles. What the fuck? <laughs> These two go on for hours, reading passive-aggressive lines to each other. What is this, some fucking like feminist <laughs> scam poetry contest going on? 
It's honestly really retarded. The Marines are also fighting constantly as well, though thankfully not literally. My threat of making them hug for an hour seems to be preventing blows after just the first time it happened, and they thought I was bluffing. Everyone else thought it was hilarious. <laughs> Russ and the Khan have joined us. The leaders of each fleet met for a massive meeting. We got news Vulcan is training with Big E. Formal orders for Angron to take charge of the Warhounds, and Magnus is needed on Terra. Fulgrim and the Khan are staying with me for a bit, but likely not too long. Dorn is kicking some major ass lately. Emps is having me direct to a new frontier, but we'll be passing through plenty of Imperial space to get there. As the fleet's divided, I give each leaving party a gift. I give Ross a tankard as a joke. Magnus, I give a dreamcatcher. <laughs> Solomon got a ring with the OG Solomon cross. Angron, I give a rather amateur painting I made. Fulgrim insisted I learn some artsy stuff, literally dragged me to lessons. Magnus left a hundred of his marines to help me out. That's nice one. Razitz and I have been cleaning up the cards. Fulgrim can't play for shit. It's driving him crazy. Just can't keep his streaks going. I don't get it. He is amazing at reading people. I have given the okay to the can to get our land raiders tuned to the way he likes. Now he just needs to get the techies to agree. We're stopped at a civilized world. Cthulhu. 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 Thunk, thunk. Thunk, thunk, thunk. <laughs> World is covered in forests of blimp trees, which are planets that have limbs full of gas that allows them to float in the air. The gas is harvested for human use. It's basically natural gas. We had to crush a few of the country's planet side. Some rather brutal communist dictatorships. Nothing of any value was lost. <laughs> Better dead than red. <laughs> yeah. One non-communist... <laughs> Misfit's going to be reading this going, read in the comments. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can see it. Call me the commie. <laughs> <laughs> One non-communist state in the south was openly worshipping Sinesh. 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 That's almost worse. No, that... Mm, What's mm, worse, communism or Sinesh? Sinesh? Let us know in the comments. <laughs> I ordered their cities burned and the troops sent there to be heavily checked afterwards. The Primarchs with me were shocked by the purge and firestorming. I basically told them what I told G-Man. The Khan seems to get it. Fulgrim thinks I'm overblowing a minor cult. I told him he would see more of that cult in time, and why they are such a threat. Fulgrim falls to Skunesh as well, so yeah. we'll see. Cthulhu needs a lot of work to rebuild and bring to standard. We had to put down several riots over my purge of the cultists. The cult ran brothels all over the world. I was getting news of cults being rooted out all over the place. I was honestly considering purging the entire population if this continued. Jagatai and Fulgrim have been arguing about it for weeks now. The Khan is urging me just to order the cities into camps and be purged. Fulgrim just sees this talk as approving of mindless brutality. I remind him I was making every attempt to avoid such actions. I gave the order. We evac'd the rural population and raised the cities. The survivors were placed in work camps to prep the world for loyal colonists and relocate pure locals. Okay, Hitler. <laughs> <laughs> All right, hold on. Let me get the demon guy to go. I know. <laughs> Fulgrim is sulking. The Khan wants me to speed up the deaths, but they can at least be used to make resettling easier. I still feel sick for giving the order, though. Fulgrim and I share a drink over it. Raza and the dogs are mostly helping round up holdouts. Hey, guys. Do you like models in your tabletop role playing games? Because we do too. Do you like having big bitty waifus on your table? Cause we do too! <laughs> <laughs> we got human bitties, we got lizard bitties, we got orc bitties, oni bitties, cat bussies, we've got everything you want at neckbeardia.co.uk <laughs> Check the links down below, it helps us out a lot. Sorry for interrupting the video, let's get on with the story. Many of the rural locals we saved have been partying over the cities being burned and their people being worked to death or outright killed. Seems they really hated each other. They have even been lynching their own that had families in the cities. I have already marked this world to be watched by imps, other agents. If anything goes down, this world will be burned. We moved on. The next few worlds were eager to join the Imperium. I took some pics, gave a few speeches, and danced at some parties. I sent the can out ahead to bloody some orc fleet so we can start mopping up their holdings. It will be perfect as many of the new worlds are suffering from overpopulation and some new frontier worlds were going to be needed anyway. Two birds, one stone. 
Razit and the dogs kidnapped me. By that I mean they dragged me into some club on a spaceport we were at. Basically forced drink on me. Things got blurry. <laughs> Sounds about late. I woke up with a hangover in a cell with two dancing girls from the club. I tried to explain to the guards who I was and asked what happened, but they just laughed and called me a drunk. The girls were nice, though confused on why I insisted I was Lord Anon. Near the end of the day, Razitz and the Khan came and bailed me out. The Khan made a joke about me sticking to drinking milk, and Razitz had the gall to tell me to tone my partying down. The girls were kind of fired for leaving the club during their shift, so I offered them maid jobs. They were happy to accept. One had two kids, a six-year-old boy and an eight-year-old girl, which I offered to hire tutors for. The other had a very sick older brother. I would pay to have him fixed up and offer him a job too. If Razitz and the men try this again, I am hitting my panic button for Legos. <laughs> <laughs> we moved about through Imperium space with no issues. My new staffers are adjusting well. The brother is on the mend and will be offered a butler job. I asked Dern to help watch the kids till the help for them arrives. He is taken to showing them around the ship. Razit asked me if he should start doing a more intense training soon. I told him I would think on it. Most of my fleet is based around a forge world. I sent the can forward again at his request. He had no interest in waiting on a paradise world while we wait. I'm pretty sure Razit is sleeping with the Lady PG. Most of the officers are content to lose their money at the casinos and clubs. What is it with Kantar governors? Like, what is it with the women? They're always stags. <laughs> They're always horse. They're always stags. I've been enjoying the shows, spas and nature walks with Fulcrum. (laughs) (laughs) This planet is a treasure nature-wise. I took Durin hunting before we left. The planet had reserves for giant moa-like birds. Things taste amazing. As we headed back to the forge world, Razit gave me shit about not taking him hunting as well. I told him he was busy with his pants down and to shut it. Khan was back before us. Odd. Turns out he was approached by Eldrad with a warning that a cabal of Dark Eldar were going to ambush my fleet as we pass through frontier space. Damn, that would be bad. Are the Eldar infighting, or is this a trap? Either way, I called a series of crisis meetings. I don't know, it's hard to say. There it's a, a trap! Lot, there is a lot of infighting with Eldar anyway. However, I think Eldar's play wanting something in return for yeah. this tip-off. I think he wants something out of them. We've been getting astropathic messages about Dark Eldar raids. I went with Fulgrim's plan. He and the Khan will hunt the Eldar fleets on each end of the sector. My forces will bunker down in the local capital world, a civil world, Gotland. Once the Eldar fleets are smashed, they will reinforce my grip from the ambush. In good news, the tech boys are lending us a few titans. We've been digging in. Bastions raised or reinforced with guns and all the DACA. I've been helping oversee the evacuation of the rural parts of the planet and the tech boys have prepped mass algae paste production. Got to feed everyone during the coming shitstorm. We don't know when they will arrive, so I wear my armour everywhere. Not making that mistake again. I managed to stop a riot. Large town was next to be moved. Someone leaked that it was the Dark Eldar. How they even knew what they are will be researched later. People panicked. Before the trippers could bash some skulls in, I seized a vox and had a tech boy patch me into every speaker we had. The Imperium is here. We are already securing your home. Two of the Emperor's sons are hunting the Xenoth's fleet as we speak. The crowd seemed to stop for a moment. I ranted about us all coming together and overcoming the Xenos. Most calmed down and continued the evac. The rest were quickly detained. Later, the PG and I did a broadcast about what was coming, asking everyone to pull their weight and circle the wagons, so to speak. There was some panic in looting, but most answered the call. We had more volunteers to build the fences and shelters than we had need of, so we had them doing busy work. Busy people are not panicking and causing more havoc. I tried to keep helping directly, but Legos dragged me to the bunker complex. Most of the Sunny Dogs are prepping to act as a fast support team. The thousand sons with my group are setting up something to ruin the Eldar's day. One of my new maids, Sava, the one whose brother is now starting his butler training, has spa experience so I got a massage. Well, what okay. time for this? Like, seriously. It really helped with the stress of everything. The PG and I had dinner later and continued talks about our overall plans and measures. The tech boys pulled through for us and got us some Skatari reinforcements. Almost 80,000 of them. I hugged the Magos that told me. 
I was having a nice lunch with the PG's family and a few thousand sun reps when we got the news. The Titans are fully prepped. The tech boys want me there when they do a quick walkabout to show the locals. It will greatly help with morale. You could feel each step this mecha made. It was the size of a damn mountain. I knew just how big these things got, but actually seeing it, I fully understood why they were called God Machines now. News from Fulgrim. An Agri world had two thirds of their people taken before the third legion forces arrived. Damn, but at least they bloodied the damn Xenos fleet. Plenty of the Eldar had been left behind as well for Astartes to slaughter in vengeance. I'm glad the foul Xenos were butchered, but them taking millions of humans made my blood boil. The dark city must burn. I had an envoy of Craftworld Eldar ask to talk with me. I agreed and brought a dozen thousand sons and half my dogs. Legos was actually visible. I went for my last idea, of half my soul stones up front, the others in a dead drop rigged a blow. It turned out to be Eldrad again. He brought another Farseer with him. She was the only other Eldar with no helmet. She was damn cute too. I mean, for a damn Xenos witch. Don't judge me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, everyone just wants it. Well, you're an Eldar wifey. <laughs> Her actually moving ended those thoughts. The same uncanny valley effect hit just as hard as last time. It made my skin crawl. I just had to get through this. We meet again, Eldrad. How's you been? <laughs> he just smirks and chuckles. Gonna be like that then? I raise my hand to signal us leaving. Elf boy interrupts. Fine, be that way, lore keeper. I don't have time for your people's games, Xenos. Say what you came to say or leave. He just adjusts his stance and starts. My peers and I verified many of your claims. They so far seem true. He pauses for a bit. Damn drama whore. Komora is in full civil war. The noble houses have several Harlequin bases in the dark city and raided their holdings across the webway. Well damn, that's almost made my day. The Harlequins have in return mustered for war. Several cabals have joined forces to attempt to seize power while the two fight. So a shit show? Great, let the Xenos kill each other. I gesture for him to continue. Each side has placed a bounty in your head, promising massive rewards and glory for the one that captures you alive. Expected. I assumed they would want what I know. Your point? A renowned witch has sworn an oath to take you out. I believed you would want to know. Do you know who? Mm, a Lady Hesperax. I go pale. You know of her? May I ask how? No, you may not. But I thank you for robbing me of my sleep tonight. I toss him a bag of soul stones. The other Farseer steps forward and grabs it. Eldrad gestures to her. I have brought an apprentice of mine and a cadre of warriors to assist you. The younger Farseer begins to walk towards us, but I stop her with a raised hand. So you can kidnap me during the heat of the battle? Not happening. She is the one to respond. We warned your people of the current danger. You dare accuse us of treachery? I glared her. Your kind has a history for a reason. She just smiles. It's a predatory. I thought you were a seer. We have no need to take you as that would invite your emperor's wrath. This is the past of the least destruction for my people. Fair enough, but you will be nowhere near me. If you or your troops enter the same district I am in, we will fire upon you. I will personally chuck your soul stones into a star. She flinches but agrees. I give Eldrad the location of the dead drop and he bails. We gave the Farseer a vox. She had about a hundred warriors and a few hover tanks things. I don't know, I never played Eldar. <laughs> <laughs> Not much, but I wasn't expecting their help at all. Still expect them to try something. The Thousand Sons decided to attach a squad to guard me at all times due to the warnings of the succubus being after me. Well, once I explained just who she was. Makes me feel safer and helps me sleep a bit better. I wonder how long till the crown cult send their own after me. Jagatai sent word that he ambushed another Cabal fleet. His marines waited for them to begin their raid on a frontier world, then caught them with their pants down, killed them in droves. The remainder bolted. The Khan and marines are licking their wounds and linking up with Fulgrim and company to regroup. Our plan is set. Now we wait. I've been spending my time trying to use my lore knowledge to develop my empty Dark Eldar tactics. I know the six Xenos fucks are glass cannons, but they are a bitch to actually pin down. The best I can think of 
is a hard-as-fuck bunker network with supporting trenches geared towards quickly moving and aiming heavy weapons. Easier said than done. We just need to keep them here without carrying off people to be processed. But we can't scare them off too badly, or our trap won't work. I still don't know what the Thousand Sons are up to. Well, that's the end of that thread. However, mm-hmm. there is another thread. Yeah. So don't worry, we haven't came to the end already. No. Um, I really am looking forward to this. I think it's interesting to see how Anon is progressing. I really liked how he was actually dealing with, you know, the you know, the, the communist city. Yeah. Like actually dealing with that and he wasn't like he's really progressing an awful lot. Yeah. He's sense. finding he's really finding his feet. Yeah, he is. That would be the best way to describe it. Um, I, I love this story, and I don't like 40k. <laughs> <laughs> I know, Megan's really not into 40k at all. Um, but no, I think what's really going to work here with the Dark Elder is now the Dark Elder really don't really do psychics at all. The psychers don't really mix very well. So Thousand Sons being the, let's be honest, the psychic heavy um, chapter yeah. region at this point. You know, they're going to have an awful lot to do and they're going to have a few tricks up their sleeves. Uh, let us know in the comments down below what you think is going to happen. And what's worse, communism or what was it again? Sganashi cults? Sganashi cults. Yeah, communists or Sganashi cults. Both are pretty horrible, but tell us what you think is what's the worst one. We're not listening to you, Tommy. Yeah, way. Tommy, by the way, you just keep... You, you can keep to yourself. <laughs> keep, uh, Screech keep, in the keep, corner. <laughs> keep all your communist propaganda to yourself. <laughs> uh, hope you guys enjoyed this one. The next part will be out quite soon. So uh, look forward to that. Remember, like, comment, subscribe. Check out the Wii advert, it always helps us out. We'll see you later. Bye! All those moments lost in time. Like tears in the brain. I was woken up in the middle of the night. Our fleet spotted the Dark Eldar forces beelining right for us. They somehow just appeared right next to the belt near the civilized world. There goes our idea to at least hit them before they started. Whatever, we planned for this. The largest city planet side had already been prepped. The only people there were volunteers, conscripted convicts, and a few regiments of veteran troopers used to urban fighting, and a few thousand sons to act as support. The human troops were all issued cyanide pills, should they be captured. I just hope that any that do get captured have the time to actually use them. Nobody deserves that fate. They took our bait. Their main force swarmed the largest city. Smaller forces spread all around the planet, targeting every major city with at least a token force. We had reports coming from everywhere. The PG, fleet staff and I watched in our bunker HQ as the hologram showed rigged building after rigged building explode hopefully taking some damned Xenos with them. A few cities went dark without warning. Damn it, I knew they had some units that could shadow jump. Why didn't I prep for that everywhere? I thought that was the later tech they stole. Why didn't I study their lore more in my past? I send a general order to all leadership's teams to prep defense for such strikes. They can't have too many of those. Amagos showed me the video feed of the Farseer and her warriors attacking some Dark Eldar craft. Why that one? They passed several groups to target that random ship. Why? I send a message through my son's bodyguards to the rest. Maybe they can use that. We received reports about stealth raids being fought inside some bases, though a few more still went silent without warning. I was both terrified and pissed. I can only hope that they at least still explode and took a few damn Xenos with them. I was going over the pics of the Xenos invader symbols. I don't know many of them. I at least have good reason to think Vect is here. I can only wonder what that fucker is doing right now. A few days have passed. The PG's seat of power has fought off everything they've sent. I, of course, have been under house arrest in the bunker complex, almost a thousand metres under said city. The largest city is now a bombed out ruin, littered with Imperial and Dark Eldar scrap and corpses. Most units there fought till the end, blowing themselves in the Xeno sky high or downing pills before being taken. We're pretty sure those that tried to retreat to other Imperial holdouts were taken captive during the effort. The fuckers somehow hacked our radios and monitors to broadcast some of our soldiers being worked on. Then some overly dressed, important looking Eldar showed his face and spoke. I swear, he sounded like he was speaking Welsh or Gaelic. 
His nearby drone translated what was said in Gothic. Yada yada, I am a great whatever of the house fuckwit, blah blah, and he's offering to just leave the planet if they turn the lore keeper over. Like anyone would believe that. The PG slightly turns to me. You cannot actually believe that offer, right? What is one life compared to an entire world? He asked. The second you hand me over, he would just laugh at your dumbass and keep attacking. I glare to make my contempt of the idea known even more. Also, I would never allow you the chance. Legos doesn't bother moving, but my sunny dogs and thousand sons present bear their weapons. Not at him, but the point is made. A few days later, I received a visit from the PG's 19-year-old daughter, his eldest, as well as two sunny dogs. I was confused until she explained to me why she wanted to speak with me. The governor was actually going to try his luck and betray me. His daughter shot him when he informed her about the plan. My dogs heard her fighting the royal guards and killed those that witnessed the fight. I informed her that her father and his guards were killed fighting off dark elder forces that managed to jump into the bunker. She nodded. Guess the world has a new governor. It was really awkward when she then asked if Durin could stay. Damn it boy, you didn't. Emperor damn he did. We were busy fighting off crazed BDSM space elves and he went and seduced the former PG's heiress. The fucker's like 15? Hi! Damn it, this could have been a huge scandal. Wait, Dern's just my ward. I don't think I can leave him here. I don't need this right now. I wash my face to try and forget this shit. Only to see my son bodyguard that followed me into the restroom dead in the mirror. What the actual fuck? Then everything went dark. I felt myself being dragged by my left leg. Thankfully my armour was keeping my head from being dragged on the ground. I slowly opened my eyes and just knew my day was shot. I saw a witch. She was dragging me down a hall. I tried to stealthily hit my panic button to Legos on my left arm. She shifts, clear startled by the movements. I feel her sword pierce my right arm before I even see her draw the damn weapon. I scream in agony. I feel a burning pain spreading across my body but I managed to trigger the panic alarm. Thankfully, my digi ring is on my left hand. I shot the flamer at her. She's fast as fuck though, and I barely get her overly large hair. She looks livid. I would like to tell you that I fought back and give her hell till help arrived, but my world became pain. I felt her blades ravage my body for who knows how long. Her hauntingly sweet angelic laugh made it all the more surreal. She whispered her pseudo Welsh taunts in my ear seemingly and likely feeding off my pain. To my horror, I see more Eldar arrive. Fuck! A dozen or so witches. My sight is spinning so I can't be sure. I think they have an incubus with them. I feel the temperature plummet. My eardrums pop from some pressure. I pray to the god I'm not supposed to believe in. One of the witches is turned to ash by a lightning strike from across the hall. I fade out for a sec. My vision is even more shot now. I can't think straight through the pain. My throat burns from my screaming. I see four blurs of red dancing between the pale shadows. Warp fire keeps the shadows at bay. I briefly see Legos fighting Lilith, the incubus, and a random witch. He cleaves the incubus in half. The haze of pain overtakes me again. I feel something dragging me. Too weak to open my eyes. I cough between screams and I can feel the wetness of my blood and bile. My armour is gone. I can feel the cold air on my legs and arms. My body is sore everywhere. Sounds like he has the big coof to me. <laughs> Eyes open to see I'm in a med bay. I notice I'm restrained to the medical bed. I panic. Calm down, you're safe. I see a clearly human doctor walk in. I try and ask how, but I'm unable to speak past my coughing. You damaged your throat. You were screaming even when you were unconscious. We had to pump medicine through your throat for days. Days? Calm down now. The Astartes arrived and crushed the invaders, though we are still hunting standard Xenos here and there. Despite my pain, I feel a small amount of smugness and glee from the news. If we won and crushed the Xenos scum, all was well. I could recover in time. With Fulgrim and Jaghatai here, they could run the fleet better than I could. We did think you were clinically dead for 12 minutes, but... That must have been an error in the equipment. Yeah, error in the equipment. <laughs> Let's go with that. The doc undid my bindings and let me up. I was sore as hell, but able to move. I was in a medical robe. As I took a deep breath in, I noticed the air tasted wrong. 
The doctor noticed my paws and asked me if I was alright. What did they offer you to play this part? I forced past my ruined throat. He gives me a look of horror. Then his necklace constricted and tore his head off. The noble Eldar from the videos walked into the room. I just glared at his annoyed face. I clearly just ruined his sick fun. He starts ranting as his drone translates. Blah, 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 something about insects. You will tell me the secrets I wish to know, etc. All while I just felt cold. I guess I'm fucked. Am I at some sick stage arena in the Prix Estates in Camorra? I doubt the clown cult would allow that uncontested. They wanted a turn. I was only beaten and forced into a cage. Tame by Dark Eldar standards. They moved me from holding area to holding area. I saw a few more prisoners. I tried my best to hold a stoic posture. I had to hope I was still planetside. I wanted to at least try and keep the others' morale up to attempt a breakout, even if I knew it was likely doomed. We are confirmed planetside. They took us to an open air camp. In a twisted way, I was happy they only had about 80 captives in the group. I saw some lower castle Eldar fighting over my armour until the noble hit him with a weird ass whip. He then taunted me, asking if I want my armour back. That was when I saw the damn clowns. They hit the camp fast and hard, giggling like retards the entire time. The dark Eldar craft exploded before the warriors could even fight back. The clown fuck then started putting the other prisoners down. It was quick and instant death. While they went cage to cage, their leader just walked up to my cage and stared at me, head tilted. Leave them be! Damn you! I yelled as loud as my throat would allow. I don't think it was even as loud as my normal talking voice. He just started laughing like a madman, only to stop and look to the centre of the camp. The air changed and there was a snap. Looks like the Farseer and a few hundred of her muscle were here now. What the fuck is with this day? The clowns stopped killing the prisoners to circle the craft welders. I could see the Farseer argue with the leader of the clown cult. I swear their language is a rip off of Welsh. This continued for a bit as I tried to stay calm and think clearly, only for an escaped prisoner to tap my shoulder and give me the shush. The trooper showed me a set of keys. Thank the big E the fuckers were using normal cages. I jumped on board what was our chance out of here. I quietly told him to free the rest of those alive. I went to get my panic button out of my armour, which I hope I could come back for. Thankfully the crate also had my las pistol and my bolt pistol. I was still in the medical robe, so I grabbed the tattered remains of my shirt in the crate and used it to hold the little ammo that was there. I met back up with the trippers. He had the last ten others. I handed him my las pistol and we bolted. I was spamming the panic button like a junkie playing the gacha. Only a few of us had weapons. Those that didn't tried to take what they could as we made our way out of the camp. We didn't get far uncontested. A clown got one of our guys and those of us with weapons fired. The Xenos acrobat dodged the first few shots but we put that fucker down. We knew we were screwed so we took what cover we could. We gave the now dead escapee's gun to another and took cover in a burned out ruin of some hablock. The Eldar factions were now fighting. This shit show was bound to draw on some more Dark Eldar. We took pot shots as one tripper tried to get a PDF radio to work. One of the unarmed guys found it in another crate. We saw a Dark Eldar raid ship fly overhead to join this clusterfuck. Miss Farseer and friends fought their way to a ruined shelter. We braced ourselves for the last stand. The few without weapons had taken the time to make makeshift spears out of busted furniture or random bits of metal. We were going to lose guard but not without fighting, damn it. Then she shouted an offer of parlay. Bitch, we're in the middle of a shit show. Just talk. What do you have to say? I grunt out in pain. We are here to rescue you, lore keeper. Bullshit. She tilts her head in confusion. I mean, grok shit. Now she looks mad. I have lost four of my warriors to save you. I cut her off. As if an Eldar would trade their own life for a human. They would, if it would save countless more. I pause. We can clearly hear fighting in all directions. Go on. Behind the cover, a tripper gives me the sign he has reached Imperial forces on his radio. Please, we need this. She starts trying to get me to offer ourselves up to be rescued. This is clearly a ploy to not risk hurting me, so they can get my lower knowledge. As the other forces get nearer, she orders her warriors to move in. We try and fight. The tripper that got us out is gunned down. The other suicide bombs a warrior with some grenades killing them both. I'm pinned down. 
and then taken to the farseer. They forced me to kneel before her. She dragged me by my ear onto her ship. What she did next broke me. She took me right to a force of a thousand sons. She was telling me the truth. Those men died for nothing. What the fuck is wrong with me? The thousand sons patched me up and sent forces to get my armor. I was in a daze. They later returned with one escapee still alive but in critical condition. He passed away two days later. I was transported back to HQ. Razitz greeted me when we landed, briefed me on what I missed. Legos lost a hand and an eye, but killed the witch in the incubus. He even managed to chase Lilith after taking one of her arms. The Primarchs had arrived in a system after my rescue. I don't know how long I was in that Thousand Sun outpost. I wasn't all there. My fleet staff were spinning a tale about me being captured and leading a group of fellow escapees to an Imperial outpost. It was like a spit in the face of those guys at the ruin. But the needs of morale. I need a drink. And a sleep for days. We got plenty of video of the two Primarchs butchering the Eldar fucks. They managed to free some captives. Though the Eldar chose to kill most when they understood they were doomed. I was tasked to go greet the survivors. Greet them and be recorded for more Imperial propaganda. Thankfully I was never a waster. So I wasn't too hungover. I just hope my scars made me look badass and not just uglier. The new PG made some speeches and we started rebuilding. Legos gives me Lilith's capture sword. And her severed arm. The blade will make a great trophy. It now rests on my wall right next to my par sword. That I still can't use right. I'm back aboard the Grey Citadel. Sava is giving me another massage, which I really needed. I was finally able to relax and just let all the stress fade. That was of course when Raza walks in. Damn it, what now? I'm not mad at him. Just to interrupt. Durin is refusing to board. I don't need this right now. Durin wasn't the McDonald's heir, but I did have the right to make a match for him. Fuck it. Send the McDonald's a message about this and we'll help rebuild as we wait. Why was no one watching the teen? And how did he seduce the heiress? I blame Razitz for being the womanizer. Fulgrim has really taken to the rebuilding. He barely rests and seems to be rather enjoying himself. His cheer is spreading among the workers. The Khan is overseeing the movement of the civvies back into rebuilt areas and seeing everyone fed. Jagatai is beyond skilled at this. The food trucks are usually sent before the requests are sent. That's kind of good. I've just been visiting the refuge camp we built once we cleared out the bunker shelters. We got approval from Dern's family to hold a wedding. The boy is getting hitched. At 15. Raza and his officers held a funeral for the boy's freedom. Oh. <laughs> Angron sent word of his adventures. I replied in kind. We moved out after being above this world for months helping rebuild. Our new orders were to head to another mustering point. Fulgrim and Jagatai were to finally take control of their whole legions. Emps would meet us there, as well as Magnus. It wasn't stated, but I think I'm going back to Terra, or following the Big E where he plans to go. The fleet is making great time on our journey. I'm mostly stuck to my flagship. I'm still mentally recovering from my capture. Sleep has been difficult since then. Legos has a new hand and eye. Not that I often see his face. Didn't even know he was black till he greeted me after his operation. <laughs> <laughs> then again, most Kasodis seem to stick to their armour at all times. We almost stopped at the port with Razit's wife, but I pulled rank to get a detour. Not dealing with that again. We sailed straight through past the port. In doing so, we had to ration our supplies. Our officers were pissed, but I had a stash of booze they could have instead. I don't really drink often, but lots of nobles give me free bottles. I had a large selection by now. That really smoothed things over. Besides, the rationing wasn't too bad. Just no seconds until we reached the next world. Everyone still got three meals a day. We lost a bit of time but saved ourselves a ton of drama. The fleet has arrived at an agri world. The whole planet is basically a giant steppe with seasonal rivers and lakes. Locals herd groks across the world. Only has one true city, where the spaceport to import supplies they trade their groks meet for. The city is barely a town, but has large areas for the herds and locals to set camps. The governor was stunned when we showed up, but was happy to trade supplies. The locals gifted me a yurt. I don't know what I'll do with it, but I made the menials and trippers build up some of their earthworks around the capital. We parted both in good spirits. Our next stop was a frontier world. 
Based on what I saw of it, I'm pretty sure this is a maiden world, though it's pretty far out. How far did the Eldar at their highest send out terraforming groups? I mark it for Imperial records. Otherwise, we had a nice time sightseeing the nice vistas and major plantations. The Khan, Razitz and I, went with a few soldiers to hunt some of the megafauna. Sava insisted I take her sightseeing to a major town. It was cool to see the steampunk slash Wild West vibe the locals had. We eat at a mom and pop shop before heading back to the Grey Citadel. Next stop was the Hive World. The place was covered in rad storms that swept across the planet. Only had seven hives that inhabited, at least by proper humans, out of 81 when this world was at its peak. The rest were abandoned ruins, infested by mutated horrors and crazed AI. When the Imperium found this world, it had only three hives left. They have used Imperial trade to aid to reclaim the planet bit by bit. Our forces helped with the push to reclaim another hive. When we left, they were well on their way to properly begin renovating said hive. The world may have been bleak, but the people were full of hope for a better future. Our next few stops were uneventful. I mostly stayed on board. Fulgrim has me working on my calligraphy since he saw my chicken scratch. My hands hurt. Yes, both, because he insists I become ambidextrous as well. Damn space Targaryen lookalike. Razit laughed at me, until Fulgrim forced him as well. We double-stalked at an Igri world. We were going to be passing through pretty barren space for a bit. I wouldn't see another inhabited system for a while. At one stop to top off our water, we entered a system with 14 gas giants. Most of the other stops were in systems that had very little orbiting their small stars. Our proper psychers reported strange sightings. That wouldn't be odd for warp travel, but it's happening during our stops in real space. Knowing the universe, it spooked me a bit. We passed through the region without issue, other than lack of sleep crew-wide. At the next world, we all rested a bit more. It was a nice world, but one with tons of volcanic activity. The locals lived in domes, heated by lava chips. The old human federation used some old as fuck tech to prevent the eruptions at these domes. Somehow this world had feral orcs, but the locals had that in hand. At a feudal world, we helped the locals with some lizard xenos. We made quick work of the scum. Afterward, one of the world's minor kings offered any of Razit's officers a pick of many daughters. The royal had 86 lawful children from his dozen wives, and he had many more bastards. All but four were girls. I could see how he might have an issue marrying them off. One of Razit's officers had taken a liking to one lass and took him up on the offer. After a quick wedding, which the can sang for, we headed out. Guy's got a great voice. We're mid-warp jump right now. I already finished translating Magnus Tombs a while ago, and the staff is refusing to allow him to help with the paperwork since the Dark Eldar thing. It's night cycle on this deck right now, but I can't sleep. I've taken to exploring the ship. Lego's by my side, of course. We pass by a few menials here and there. They're used to me by now. We just nod at each other and keep to ourselves. I found another mural. It has a scene from some historic event nobody remembers. It has some spire shimmering with light, people cheering and a person held up by the crowd. This was made while the ship was unfinished by the timestamp, and the Grey Citadel is Dark Age of Technology make. While I look at this mural, I'm reminded of how much was actually lost. I sit at a bench and just enjoy the view. My mind wanders a bit until someone calls for my attention. It's Jagatai. Anon, it's a bit late for you to be sightseeing. Yeah, it is. Couldn't sleep, though. He just nods and sits on the ground across from the bench. After a bit of silence, he speaks again. What troubles you, Anon? I'm just overwhelmed. I feel so useless. He gives me a weird look. You seem to have been doing fine, from my understanding. Fulgrim and I know you're hiding something from us. We heard talk of how Magnus reacted to whatever it is you told him. What would weigh on both of you so much? Fishing for answers? Yeah, he says with a bit of a heavy sigh. Fine, get Fulgrim. He should be informed as well. Meet me in my suite. As I walk back, I feel a strange rush of purpose. I think of what will help me explain what I will tell to the two Primarchs. As I get back, I'm strangely greeted by Sava. Why is she in my suite this late? Did you need something, Sava? I was hoping to talk with you privately. But you weren't here, so I waited for you. Oh, I'm sorry for being out. I couldn't sleep. Went for a walk. Lord Anon, I... She pauses, but just stops. Sava, I kind of have an important meeting about to happen. Jagatai and Fulgrim will be here soon. 
Our talks will be top secret. Can this wait till morning? She shakes her head. That's fine. I'll talk to you later. She seems down. I stop her and smile. I'm not blowing you off, Sava. I really will make time in the morning. I'm free right after breakfast. That seems to lift her spirits. I go to prep my chalkboard and wait for my guest. I've got some knowledge to bestow and minds to blow. Fuck's sake. <laughs> <laughs> I pulled out the hard liquor. It would be needed. I had a shot glass for me and a tankard for the brothers. Legos let them both in. We got settled. All right, what do you guys want to know first? Wait a second. I put the soul stones I still had into a lead box. I don't know if they could listen to me, but I'm not risking that. Sorry. Feel free to ask what you want. Fulgrim seems to lock on to me with intensity. I rarely saw that from him. You've been withholding secrets from us. What are you hiding? You're going to have to narrow it down a bit. He gives me an eye roll. The calm just huffs. I am a reincarnate from roughly the start of M3. Now they both just look confused. Then the calm looks at me harshly. Is this a joke? No, I'm dead serious. Fogram looks at me like I'm mad. The calm just looks more confused. Hi. I don't actually know. Emps referred to my soul as a trick candle. I shrug. That isn't even the big stuff. Pretty Boy finally speaks up. Are you a sorcerer? Nah, I'm pretty much a normal human. Besides a few details. Such as... I have a ton of forbidden knowledge and Emps boosted my soul. You still have your eyes though. I'm not an astropath or even a tree psyker. Malkador said I'm bare over a baseline. Fulgrim goes quiet. He seems deep in thought. Jagatai asks me a bit about Terra in my old time. I told them about my homeland, the United States. How Earth was at the time. Fulgrim asked how often I had been reborn. This is my second life. Sorry to disappoint you. If you want a summary of each age of man, ask your father. He's been there since, well, before my first go. How do you know about this forbidden knowledge, if you're from M3? Did ancient man really have such insight? No, we were just starting to properly explore Saul. Very few people had even left Earth at all. The moon had only been visited a few times and... No man had yet reached Mars. We also had no proof of Psyker or reason to think they could exist. So how would you have such knowledge then? Pass. You can't just pass. You promised us answers. Jagatai seemed pissed. Look, it's really confusing and dumb. And will only cause harm if I told you. It's best we skipped it. Fulgrim clearly takes that as a challenge. Try me. I just give him a tired look. It really isn't worth it, man. It will just distract you from any important stuff. The can seems resigned, if annoyed. He gives me a sigh to continue. Most of my lore is regarding M40 though, the start of M42. It is really bad. Things were kind of fucked up. Both were caught off guard by that. Fulcrum speaks up. Did the Imperium fall? He has a dark expression. No, the Imperium endured it. It had just regressed and had been twisted by the greatest civil war in mankind's history. How could that happen? Half the legions and the Primarchs turned on the Emperor with many supporting them. Fulgrim stands. Then we must end those traitors before they can strike. He speaks with such conviction. But my face must have said everything. His shoulders slump, and he just goes cold. Jagatai pulls him back to his seat. The can gives me a look, clearly wanting more. I stare at Fulgrim. You were corrupted by a demon blade. You were little more than a meat puppet by the end of the war. A tool of she who thirsts. I went on to explain the heresy. I tried to stress that what happened was a severed timeline, one where I never met the Emperor, that the future was ours to make. It was a heavy night. They also drank most of my booze. I sent both off with a bottle for the trip. I had told both they would learn more when we met with Big E. I was woken up by my alarm, some five hours later for the start of my day. I showered and put on some basic robes. I had a breakfast meeting with a few officers. I was introverted by nature, but my role demanded me to step up. I made every effort to reach out to my officers. Afterwards, I contacted Sava to let her know I was free. As I waited for her to arrive, I drank a herbal drink to help keep me awake. It tasted like mud water, but worked like a charm. I could have done recaf, but I hated the stuff more. I went to sit down and read a while, but I waited. She was here in less than two minutes, but her quarters are in a different deck. I entered the door and was confused. Sava was wearing a trench coat of all things. She usually wore a traditional maid outfit, not the fetish wear, or more casual outfits when off work. <laughs> <laughs> I let her in. I offered her a seat, but she remained standing. So I asked her what she wanted to talk about. She looked at me weirdly for a moment, and was about to speak when Razitz barged in. 
Anon, we need you at- He stops, seeing Sava glaring at him. Never mind, we can handle it. <laughs> Sorry to interrupt. Are you sure? You never barge in unless it's serious. I speak up. No, no. We got this. Forget I even came by. Razit then give us a thumbs up and leaves post haste. What the fuck was that? Sava seems pissed. Razit knows something. Yeah. Razit knows exactly what's going on. I offer her a drink to help calm her down. She downs her glass and asks for another. I pour and gesture her to continue. She tells me that she really appreciates everything I have done for her and that she wants to thank me for it. I tell her all I did was give her a new job after my dumbass got her fired. Helping her brother was part of making up for that and she's been a great help for me. She tells me it still meant a lot to her. Then she pulls out a weird metal tube with a bulb on the end. It flashed green when she hits a button. Legos isn't here, is he? What? He's oh, pulled right. out a fucking, like, mine thing from Men in Black. <laughs> yeah, what the fuck is this? I'm taken aback by the question. No, I assumed you wanted to talk one-on-one. -on -one. Thanks for that. It makes this easier. I turn to put the drink away, only to feel two intense burning pains in my back. I hit the ground hard. I look up to see Sava wearing a body glove and holding a las pistol. Her trench coat is on the ground. For whatever it's worth. I am sorry and all. I really did like you. She started crying and saying more, but I couldn't hear or anything. She then raised the las pistol again, and everything went dark. If Ooh. she breathes, she's a thought! <laughs> I had to add that bit in, sorry guys. <laughs> I revived with a fury. Sava was looking through my records for something. I must have revived pretty quick. Once I'm up, I throw the drink bottle at her and rush her. The bottle hits her in the back and staggers her. I then knock her down with a punch to the side of her head. Once she's down, I kick the last pistol out of reach. Then I hit her and kick her to your side to stun her as she goes for her last pistol. Don't move, Sava, or I will shoot. She's just crying, but I ignore that and hit my Vox for security while never dropping my guard. How, 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 are, you, how are you alive? I killed you. I checked for a pulse. You don't get to ask questions, traitor. I will be taking care of that. Soon a squad of sunny dogs and Razzits burst in. Razzit sees me holding Sava at gunpoint. He face palms. We took Sava to a holding cell. She begged us to send someone to secure her brother, saying he was going to be killed since she failed. I was going to have him arrested anyway, so rushed the team to pick them up. They find him being jumped by some menials and rattings. They killed two of his attackers and captured the other six. The brother was being sent to Medbay. Once I informed Sava of the field attack, she started talking. Told us that when she was a dancer, she also did hits for some gangers on the side to help pay for her brother's medical bills. Well, a pretty face likely made it easier to get into your targets. Told me that she was honestly happy as my mate and that she was threatened into doing this. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't buying them until this was properly investigated. I asked about the other mate, who I didn't hear much from other than work assignments. Sava claims she was just a widow that danced at the club to support her kids. We had her detained, just in case. As we questioned her further, we heard shots being fired. I'm glad I had time to get in my armour before coming to the brig. I put on my armour and distracted the attackers while my solar started butchering the fucks. One menial tried to rush me. I didn't waste ammo and just caved his ribs in with my power armour punch with my left hand, while still firing at those seeking cover with my bolt pistol. I then crushed his head with my boot and yelled, Surrender now or be thrown overboard to the warp. No surrender. No surrender. No one's going to understand that. Reference. Absolutely I'm sorry, nobody. Guys. No one's going to understand that. Keep going, keep going. Several did. The rest were either killed or captured and I followed through with those. I was not in the mood for mercy right now. After the attack, Sava sung like a bird. She claims she doesn't know why they wanted me dead but gave us names of the group that forced her to take a hit on me. I wasn't buying shit. If she thought her brother and her were in danger, why not just tell me? I had taken them into my household. I wouldn't have left them out to dry. I wasn't going to fall for shit after she fucking shot me. I was going to keep her locked up until Emps or Magnus could look around her mind. Until then, we had a list of names to look into. I sat in the meeting discussing what we learned about the group that wanted me dead. It turns out the people that did this was an emperor worshipping cult. It was really fucking dumb. They honestly thought I was some spooky evil mastermind and I led the emperor and his sons astray for my own increased in power. Bitch, I was drafted. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's kind of sweet. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, the cult was being purged from the fleet. We had known about this cult for a while. 
but they were considered harmless and retards by most. When we captured the leaders, they even ranted about how I would never get away with my evil plans. I would have them handed over to the Big E to deal with. We still had both maids under lockdown, though only Sava was in a cell. Her brother was under guard in the med bay. Once he recovered, he would be under house arrest. The other maid was released after a thousand sons checked her mind. Sava's brother died due to his wounds and weak health. I'm allowing Sava to attend a small service for him. He by all accounts seemed innocent, so he earned that. But Sava would be watched and under heavy guard. She broke after and snapped. She had to be restrained after she tried to hang herself with a ripped up jumpsuit. I had her guards punished for not properly watching her and placed her under Astartes guards. I was drinking with Razitz when we felt the ship leave the warp. We both got ready to meet the Emps again. He should be waiting for us. Emps and Magnus were busy when we boarded. We had to wait a bit for them to greet us. We heard you had an attempt on your life. No, pretty sure I died. Not really an attempt at that point. <laughs> <laughs> well, I suppose. I will search her mind personally. We must be sure about her motives. On a more positive topic, it's good to see you again, Anon. You've done well. I did my best. It shows. Emp then walks by to board the Grey Citadel. I turn to Magnus and smile. I got those tombs translated for you. It includes my notes as well. Great news. I have several more if you have time. He calls for some menials and they start loading well over 20 crates of books. Looks like I'm going to be busy. I haven't seen Big E outside of mealtimes lately. Most of my time is spent teaching scholars how to read old... Old Angly. Angly. Old English. Jeez. Old Angly, I, I, or as I, I call it, English. <laughs> <laughs> I, lo- I love some of the old memes. If you check it out, you can actually find, like, you know, some of, like, the... What they na- used to call it? Yeah, like, there's names from, like, the year, like, 20,000. <clears> like, you know, from the Dark Age of Technology yeah. in 40k. And they've got, like, all these, like, really weird names for, like, companies that, like, currently <laughs> exist. Either way, either way, something to check out. You guys definitely check it out. But let's keep going with us. Sorry. Magnus and Emps wanted more guys able to take over my translating work. I'm back on Emperor's flagship, so I got my sweet digs back. Malkador is running things back on Terra right now. Legos received another name for his service and injury. Ceremony took days. Damn, the custodies really read off every name the person being rewarded has earned. Then they do it again, with the new additions. That sounds like something like Treebeard would do. <laughs> yeah. We've just finished saying good morning. Say like, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Em spent some time with his sons, leaving me with even more tombs and records to translate. I'm really getting tired of this, but at least my scholars are getting better by the day. It is nice to feel my personal skills are helping the Imperium. These records Magnus gave me have already hinted at a side beacon in a nearby sector. I think it might be a much weaker proto astronomican used by the old Federation. I try not to get my hopes up. It is likely just a Golden Age war project. Hope is the first step to disappointment after all. In other news, we did find lots of fiction novels that were thought to be lost. We sent out those novels to be re-released. We also used old census documents to find a few lost colonies, one of which had an STC fragment for scholar panels and waste reclamation machines. I feel we are really doing good work here, so I've tried to keep my bitching to a low level. I'm hoping to see some more worlds soon, as I've been shipbound for months. At least I get plenty of visits. The can even made me a goblet made from the former PG skull. Beast. Beast. <laughs> that's like, that is actually a really tr- like old step tradition, yeah. if I remember. Like that's like one of those like ancient things. Mm-hmm. Like you know, like it's just. But you always hear about that, like, like drinking from the, the skull of his yeah, enemies. Yeah. yeah, but like it's one of those things, particularly with like step nomad culture. Yeah, it's just like ingrained into them almost. <laughs> it's like every single one of them. Yeah, if you don't have a skull drinking goblet, why? Why <laughs> are you even in a are you even a local warlord? What's the point? <laughs> Dumb bastard refused to be made a vassal and challenged Emps to a duel. Fuck. <laughs> That's not ever gonna end mad balls. Yeah. Bossman just stopped his heart in the spot. <laughs> yeah. Head Jag- exploding moment right there. Yeah. Jagatai was formally granted full control of his legion. The White Scars marched in triumph in the ruins of the former capital of a world forcefully brought back into the fold. Thakshai was under a sickening caste system. A race of Xenos fish people had enslaved the human locals and used them as cannon fodder in their own wars between each other. The Khan and White Scars freed the slaves and butchered the Xenos filth. I even got to personally see the crowds cheer when we asked the slaves that fought beside us to join the Triumph March. I wish Jagatai well in the wars to come. 
I have a meeting with Emps later today. As I walked down the hall, I noticed several of the ship's menials are circled around something. When they are so engrossed in whatever they are watching, they don't notice me and my solar guards walk right up to them. I look over one hunched over menial to see a data slate. Looks like a vid of some guy talking about something. What are you guys watching? I ask. They all jump a bit and look at me in shock. A solar grabs the data slate while the menials are staring at me. The soldier then passes the slate to me and I finally understand what they're watching. A sermon. A sermon from an imperial cult. Oh, oh shit. She. Here we go that again. That they were watching in a public hall. Fucking morons. We place them under arrest, call the ship's ratings to deal with this. They will not be harmed, just placed in classes to try and educate them on the imperial truth. Unless they have priors, then things get harsh. They could at least try and hide it. That's really not a good sign if they're actually doing it out in public in or, or ready. Yeah. You know... I, I get what they're trying. I, like they, they don't mean harm by doing it, and I guess they could under like you can understand why they do consider like the emperor as like a godlike figure. Yeah. Almost because he does have like, a ex- what he's got is like a next level cult to personality. Yeah. Think like North Korea times a million. <laughs> yeah. But they actually like you know the 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 god they emperor. They actually do like them. They actually do like him. Yeah. And I don't blame them for like falling into this, but I guess everyone knows it's like, look, it leads to chaos. It always leads to chaos. Just don't. We're going to get chaos, guys. <laughs> you guys know where this is going to end up with. You, you, like, we're going to have first heresy tea, and you guys know it, but let's just wait until we get there, guys. Okay? <laughs> we get to the meeting late. Sorry, Amps. Got sidetracked by another of your cults. They are hardly my cults. You get what I mean. He gestures to my totally not a high chair, which I take a seat in. Magnus and Fulgrim are also here. We have some time to chat and sip some refreshments first before we start. We go over how the plans are going. I mostly stay quiet unless I have a suggestion. Emps lets us into what Kurz has been doing. Seems Emps had the Night Haunter hunting Cabal agents and fucking up their plans. Soon Emps is going to send me to help Kurz with a chaos threat he learned about from fighting the Cabal. That sounds fucking terrifying. Yeah, I, I'm sorry. I'm going to turn that one down, Emps. <laughs> that sounds like a, a that's a no not, from me. That's, that's, that's going to be a big no from me. <laughs> if there's one, like, you know, I just don't want to be hanging out. Like, I'm sorry. Even if Kurz isn't like, you know, Kurtz was never, like... The thing is with Kurtz, he never really fell to chaos. He was always just mentally un, unstable yeah. at the best of times, and he just got worse. Me saying, yeah, like, I know 40k. <laughs> I know. <laughs> but, like, you know how it is. We are currently in orbit above a dead world. We are here scourging the planet for some old stash Emps left behind as a rainy day fund. The bunker complex had some nice toys. We are taking a few thousand units of a mass-produced power armor from the Golden Age, Seed vaults and data archives. The tech boys are having a party. Our current stop was to take over a garden world we find. No humans, just a race of frog like Xenos were there starting to explore their two small moons orbiting their home world. We captured their small moon bases and turned the Xenos to their tech boys for study. I feel bad for these pervy frog boys. They're getting stomped at me. <laughs> Imagine the only like, oh, fine, exploring the big new world, just get. The face. <laughs> Not, <here> today. <laughs> Not today! Not today! I actually like, kicked the door in. <laughs> oh my god. Once we bombed all of their major cities, we sent in the army to clear the countryside. It only took a few weeks. Overall, the damage to this world was limited. The planet will make a great frontier colony. The swamps here are stocked with fish and plants formerly raised by the frog Xenos. Tech boys pass them for human use. Overall, a great find. Per frogs. <laughs> I really feel bad for these wee frog boys. (laughs) Another message from Horace. He has found planet murder and is currently waiting for an Interrex patrol to make contact. Hope that goes well this time. The plan is to inform the Interrex about the Chaos Blade and destroy it. From there, to establish a peaceful working relation to the Interrex. In Happy News, Davin and its moon were both glassed. The next few worlds we stopped at went quick. Most human worlds were happy to join. The few Xenos we found were either single planet species or bound to their star system. We uplifted the human worlds, cleansed the Xenos and turned their worlds into new colonies. One of the Xenos races was like the Azari from Mass Effect, but green with no biotech. They were also insane and Nurgle worshippers. Their system had three habitable worlds we had to glass. Such a waste. How can you have a ha- habitable world? And also worship Slanesh. Oh, no. Slanesh. Sorry, Nurgle. Nurgle. At the same time. <laughs> them, two, th- them words just don't add up. Habitable world. Nurgle. Nurgle. 
habitable world. No, no, no. no I'm sorry. It doesn't work. <laughs> we stop back into proper imperial space. We are above a volcanic world called Nova Lo. For a volcanic planet, this place is actually nice. The locals are focused on surface mining the vent fields. Over 60,000 people live here. Now it's ghost time. <laughs> 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 Sorry, I can't help myself. The average person is actually crazy rich here, by most average Imperial citizen standards. That was a tongue twister. Yeah. A few towns here have living standards above what I remember from Earth in my time. As we wait for Conrad's fleet to arrive, I visit the locals. Nice folk. Planet used to be a death world when humans first settled it. It was covered in mega jungles, filled with beasts and acid swamps. Planet got hit by a comet. The few thousand human colonists survived in their bunker complex. The impact actually made the world a lot nicer. That sounds like Fallout. It does sound like Fallout. I'm getting Fallout references <laughs> here, I don't know. But nice, it doesn't add up. <laughs> While we waited for Conrad's fleet, we sent ships to the system's edge to drag back some comet for ice. Novolo was paying us to give them a cut as well, so great. As the crew was processing the ice, a space hulk dropped from the warp. Good thing our fleet is massive. So we surrounded the thing while we sent the Astartes group to scout the Hulk. Other than minor infestation of orcs, it was fine. Some tech boys are going to stay behind and salvage this Hulk. Ems did some strange trick to keep the Hulk from going back into the warp. Looks like Nova Lo is going to have another cash cow. The Mechanicum will take most of the loot, but they will make a killing supplying the techies. We actually find a city of humans living in the deeper parts of the Hulk. They have managed to keep a Gellerfield generator running to cover their section of the Hulk. These people had sealed off most of the Hulk from their city to keep most of the orc site. They were quite happy to see us. They are going to be checked for any mutations and such as relocated to the frontier colony. They claim they were stranded on the Hulk for 400 years, but the section of their city was in was an Imperial design ship. Not sure how that works, but it's not worth my sanity. Yeah, the word's weird. It, like, don't try and <laughs> Don't try and reason. D- don't try and reason whenever, like, you know, the... the t- Space travel in 40k is just weird. Space travel in general is fucking weird. Yeah, but 40k adding the warp and then the time, it just, like, it's all No! <laughs> Conrad has sent word he will be delayed. A world he was resupplying had a major hurricane, and he's helping the relief forces. Ems decided we'll meet him halfway instead. We're heading to a system called H478 that has a gas giant named Gaia with three habitable moons. One moon is a hive world called Hemrit. Another is a reserve world, used as a hunting slash nature retreat for Hemrit's nobles and well off. The last is an agri world devoted to razor grain, which sounds edgy. <laughs> <laughs> razor grain. <laughs> Anon, I have arranged a mentor to assist your training. I was in another meeting with Emps and Sons. Another? What am I to learn now? I thought I was to focus on translating and anti chaos actions for now. Fulgrim nods at the Emperor while Magnus sighs. You will be assisting the 8th Legion with removing a possible chaos threat. While you have worked with the Astartes, you have not properly fought with them. You will be trained for this. I'm guessing I'll be involved with the Interlegion, training between Fulgrim and Magnus Legions. For the record, I do not think Anon is ready for this, but I will withhold my objections due to your pick for this idea, Father, Magnus says. I would like it on record, I don't think I can handle fighting alongside Marines. I admit with no shame. Yeah, there's no shame in saying <laughs> yeah. that. Emps bops, boops, bops. bops <laughs> my head lightly. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, it's okay, give him a wee pop. In his high chair. Yeah. <laughs> you will only be trained in how to properly work alongside Marines. You will not be expected to fight at their level. Oh, thank God. I still want those Luther augments. Emps just laughs. Fulgrim speaks up. And on will do fine. I suggested this to Father. Your mentor is one of my best. Anon, what do you know of Brother Rylanor? En route to Hemrit, I met the Ancient of Rites, and he threw my ass into the grinder. Each legion took turns hunting me down while the other tried to protect me. Rylanor had me adjust to transhuman dread by making me fight bouts with the marines. I got my ass kicked repeatedly, so I could try and understand more of how they thought, or something. I was honestly too sore to think much, but as we drew closer to Hemrit, I felt I was less and less deadweight while running drills for the Legion. Rylanor even told me some stories about the earliest parts of the Crusade. I spent most of my training basically trying not to run away screaming. I may be a perpetual, but I still very much work on a mortal level. Astartes are just... more. They move faster, they think faster, 
Their movements are rapid and controlled. I need to be able to control my awe and dread while being among these demigods. If I freeze up, they will have to cover me for even more. The Solars are joining me in this, and making me look bad. I'm sorry, but seeing a squad of marines charging at me is pure terror, and the bites make me feel hopeless. At least I seem to be past freezing, even if it is just panic firing instead of just standing there like an idiot. Rylanor is slowly beating proper responses into me. Honestly, you, you're not, you're never going to be able to compare them. No. Like, you're just not. Like, Anybody I, I, in his I, I, situation I, I, would do the exact I, fucking same. Like, I, I, I can see everyone watch and be like, Ugh, I would be so much better. No, I, no, no, you no, fucking no, you would. Fucking you can. shit yourself. No, you fucking can. Anybody what, what, would shit what, what, what is, It takes minimum, like, 100 years to become a space marine, and even then, the amount of, like, augmentations, it, yeah. and you're not even a human at that no. stage. You've got to be serious, you know? You're, you're more of, like, a husk than you used to be a human. Yeah. You're something completely different. Notice frontal attacks. Get to cover and haul. Search hall for second ambush while staying against the wall. Snap fire at first sight of an enemy, alerting my allies of the second attack. Retreat to the back of the group using the armoured marines as cover. Snap fire to try and open enemies to allied attacks and exercise. Much better and all. A bit slow in the withdrawal, but much better. I am tired beyond belief, but I feel great at actually passing the challenge. I move as fast as I could. Took too long to spot the second squad. The ancient gestures his approval. Don't look for the enemy proper, just look for movement. Your mind won't process it fast enough. What about risking friendly fire? You have bigger concerns against foes that are so much greater than you. You need to be able to switch to such a mindset depending on the foe you're fighting. Understood. We will continue our drills, but you're free to rest now. You've done well and all. I give him a thumbs up. <laughs> so I'm hitting the hot tub. <laughs> hey. I make my way to my suite. Oh, so ready to soak in the tub. I enter the atrium, only to interrupt something. One of my scribes is getting frisky with a maid in the tub. Hey. <laughs> they look up at me in shock. My solars just chuckle. I just give them a thumbs up and walk past to my rooms. I ain't gonna be no cock block. <laughs> cup bro, cup bro. <laughs> cup bro. <laughs> Luckily, my personal bathroom has a shower I can soak in. I'm slightly miffed I can't use the hot tub. But I have a standing invite to let my staffers use it on off hours. I don't know. I don't want people jizzing in my tub. I'm what sorry. hot tub I, doesn't have jizz in it. I know. I, yeah, I suppose that's exactly. that. Exactly. Yeah. It's just a sip. It, yeah. It's a it's a hot sip. A hot tub of just... <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> yeah, actually, please. Just continue. I clearly need to set a reserving system if they're getting frisky in it, though. That was awkward. After a long shower, I hop into my bed for a well-earned rest. Just as I'm about to doze off. Magnus bursts in screaming. Anon, get up! I think we found the beacon! The way I said that, it reminds me of the taking the hobbits to Isengard! No, no! The beacon! The, <laughs> oh, beacon, the beacon went wrong! The beacon went wrong! There goes my sleep tonight. <laughs> Being dead tired, Magnus basically drags me to the library. We have scribes working on translating text. He calls for a set of records and points at a section. Right here. The Federation housed the beacon in the... Tell me a... Does that say fishy? I think that's fishy to me. <laughs> fishy. In the fishy subsector on the nexus of the old trade routes. We are hoping you could get a more detailed read on where. Being the foremost scholar on an old angle. I down more herbal drink. Gag a bit. The stuff is awful. Give it here. I carefully study the section looking for context clues. I notice the stated need for helium-3 for fusion to properly power the colony that housed the Psy Beacon. I think that means they needed a close-by gas giant if I remember my classes right. Based on this passage here, the colony needed a massive local supplies of helium-3, meaning we should screen for systems with gas giants. They could have imported it, but it's worth a shot. We poured over old records for more hints, and narrowed the search from 89 star systems to 6. I think we did damn good. Eventually I gave up on returning to my suite and slept at my desk. I was awoken by one of my butlers several hours later. The scribes and Magnus are still working on the texts and tombs non-stop. I have been asked to join Emps for breakfast, then I have the rest of the day off. As we walked to the Emperor's personal dining hall, I was informed of which nobles we would be eating with. We stopped by a restroom so I could freshen up a bit. Emps and I small talked with the nobles and enjoyed the food. Emps is damn good at charming people. A few of those nobles heated my guts, but he disarmed them around me like he had done it millions of times. Which he might have, now that I think on it. After the nobles had left to attend their duties, Emps and I chatted for a bit. 
Then I went back to my suite to sleep for a few more hours. We spent a while above Hermit. Emps, Magnus and Fulgrim went on a hunting trip with a bunch of local nobles. I offered to deal with the actual functionaries and got us ready to wait for Conrad. Raza and his officers tried to kidnap me again, but my training kicked in and Legos bailed me out. Thanks, panic button. Though Razitz did manage to talk me into a calmer establishment than a club. The district was higher mid-level of this hive. Basically a rich, but not noble neighbourhood. We went in more casual wear as my armour would attract too much attention. Raza and his officers wore civvies as well. We ate in peace in a private room, then joined the main floor to mingle. Well, they mingled. I sat at a table to the side and read from a data slate. Eventually someone tried chatting with me. I gave them a false name. Said I worked as an errand boy for the Emperor's staff, just enjoying a day off. I talked with a few groups that wandered by or when I went to order more drinks or snacks. Things were nice and relaxed until the staff had a shift change. Then the new bartender called me by my real name. She shouted it at me in shock. Of course everyone heard. Raza and his officers had to form up and keep things civil. I started drawing a big crowd. After I finished my drink, we bailed. Damn, I just wanted a chill day. Not get mobbed by people. We headed back to the ship. As we were heading to the shuttle landing at the port, we spotted some trouble. I have done nothing wrong. Violating the Imperial Truth counts, dumbass. We came across a family being arrested. The father had been caught smuggling in some form of Imperial cult booklets, intending to pass them. The whole family was being detained for this crime. The local house forces had roughed him up a bit. Poor guy. I would report that later. I was about to walk away when the family was pushed against a wall and the guards pulled their pistols. Now hold the fuck up. I shout in anger. You will stop this now. The group officers looked at me in contempt. We are enforcing the law, citizen. Mind your business and move along or there will be trouble. I glared him down. The law requires re-education for those belonging to emperor worshipping cults. Drop your weapons now. The guards sneer at me until my solars and civvies all draw pistols. You will pay for this. We answer the house dirt. You boys are fucked up. Razat talks over them. Lord Anon, what should we do to this lot? Upon hearing my name, several of the guards drop their guns and raise their hands above their heads. The officers look at me in horror. Have the local PDF detain these guards. Place the family under my custody. This will be reported and investigated. Placing the cultists in mandatory re-education classes was one thing. Killing them was not allowed out of hand. If this was the world's or even hive standards, heads would roll. I had to take the family with me or they would be killed to hush this up. The hive's nobles condemned the guards. They were arrested and faced charges. The PG was using this scandal to force reforms. It was a political shit show. They couldn't have the family go back so I took them to my staff. They would be attending those classes as well. The father, whose name is Zach, is convinced I'm a saint. Literally. His wife seems pissed her husband's hobby almost got them killed. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'm just really into this Imperial creep, okay? <laughs> it's not that big of a deal. <laughs> they have nine kids. Seven boys and two daughters. Most were just kids or young teens. They would need shooters. Two of the eldest sons were young adults, and they would be errand boys for now. The eldest daughter was a nurse. She would be heading to the med bay. Ems was annoyed with the scandal. He held a press release stating how things should be properly done, firmly stating he wasn't a god. Somehow, I don't think his cult buys it. Still worth a shot, I guess. Emps really doesn't like people worshipping him. Zack got a personal lecture, straight from Emps. It didn't take. Guy thinks Emps is just humble. I don't... I, I kind of feel bad for these people. Yeah. The reason, like, the reason why he doesn't want to be worshipped is because it can spread to chaos. Yeah. Uh, so what do you do with it? Like, you know, okay... The Emperor probably is a god to a certain extent. Is in quotations. Is in quotations, you know. So what do you do with that? Like, I know. how do you. How well, do you what, the, what, I'm not the Messiah. He's a very <laughs> not like, you know, he's a very but naughty boy. The, the way they're doing it, it like, take them in, do, give them classes, yeah. reform classes. That's the way it should be done, not hold them up the, and try the, and fucking kill them. The problem is, if they try and kill them, they'll just be pushed on the ground. And yeah. then it'll just make the matter so much worse, yeah. I think. I tried to talk Emps into maybe changing his style to help downplay how holy he looks. I've been using those symbols and style long before any of the cults. I will not be forced to change or give up what is mine. I tried to explain how he comes off the normie humans. Look, <laughs> <laughs> like you're upsetting the normies, okay? You can't say these words. 
you know, the whole, he's a giant in golden armor, flaming sword and literal halo of light. He just scoffed, saying that it is purely his preferred style. I could understand where he was coming from. That may have just been his charm though, but I also understood what your average menial saw. Imps was larger than life. Whatever, not my job to handle that. How do you talk the Emperor out of this? You can't. I know. The Emperor is very hard, hard-headed, to I say know. the least. It's in like 2008 trying to talk an emo out of wearing black. You can't <laughs> <do it. laughs> yeah, that's exactly what it is. We are expecting Comrade any day now. We've been allowed to stop my training to be well rested for when I leave with him. My equipment has been triple checked and Emps is assigning me some Sisters of Silence for my mission. Emps told me just what Conrad had found out from the Cabal. The Lear are active far earlier than expected. In canon, they started spreading and taking over worlds for themselves. Now, here they were, recruiting other Xenos instead, and far ahead of our predicted timeline. I was to advise the 8th Legion while they struck key Lear and allied Xenos targets. This would buy time for Angron and Solomon's legions to muster and join us. Legos was being granted command of 100 of his brother Custodes to act as a special deep strike unit. Bravo 6 going dark. <laughs> <laughs> Ems had to prep for the other coming Xenos threats and would be needed elsewhere. We held a feast in the capital hive of Hermit to welcome Conrad. Guy was dressed pretty fuck sharp. Pretty fuck sharp? Yeah. Pretty fucking sharp? Yeah. As were his marines. I didn't get to speak to Conrad right away, as he and the Emperor left the feast pretty early. Magnus, Fulgrim and I handled the greetings. Lots of apologising the Emps left. Sorry he is bonding with his son. He needs to do a toss mate, he <laughs> fucking needs it. Conrad needs his head worked up. <laughs> I did meet some of the 8th Legion's officers. I personally thanked them for knocking out the Men of Iron STC. They seemed awkward as I thanked them. I wasn't sure how to take that. I tried changing the subject to our coming campaign. That really seemed to help with their awkwardness. I couldn't tell them everything, but I told them some basics and promised more info on the Lear later. This led to us trading stories about our time in service to the Imperium. Our group talked and talked until a menial asked us to leave so they could clean the hall properly. We actually talked most of the party. The Astarte seemed to have opened up around me and we continued talking on our way back. We parted ways at the shuttle bay. I offered an open invite to my suite whenever. Despite their reputation, they seem like okay folks. At least when you're not fighting them, I guess. The 8th was mostly avoided by other Imperial forces. You know, being a terror force will do that. But I personally don't care if Xenos dies screaming or if a human leader is punished for wasting the Imperium's time. I wasn't sure when I would be called by Emps and Conrad, so I cleaned up a bit and chilled. I would be ready to go as soon as he needed. I watched some local hermit media. Lots of talk show using Zack Scandal to paint me as a pro-Emperor worshipper or as a watchdog for abuse of power. Also, one crazy host saying he had informants in the army saying I had a Xenos lover. That one kinda pissed me off, but he was really entertaining. Even if he painted me a dark mastermind using the Imperium to expand my own power. Time kept ticking, so I watched some hermit movies as well. It was kinda like watching Turkish rip-off movies. In one local pro-Imperium film, they had a Fabio-looking actor play the Emperor. Me and my dad. <laughs> I can imagine it like, you know, like Bollywood, <laughs> Bollywood stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's exactly what it is. While watching a weird artsy film I didn't understand, I got the call. My guards and I made fast progress getting to the meeting room. Emps and Son were discussing something as I walked in. I nodded to Emps and greeted Conrad. He got straight to business. Passed me some files, identified some Slaneshi symbols and minor demons the Legion had encountered. I told them about what to expect from the lair. Lots of gene edits, sorcery, and sensory assaults. I suggested wiping out their core worlds as they were likely tainted by chaos and only cause issue further down the line. The frontier colonies would be salvageable, but we should be careful. Conrad started talking tactics and strategy with Big E. I mostly just kept quiet till I had something to add. Legos did speak up to ask for some change up of his forces. Emps approved his request. Conrad wanted to leave as soon as possible. The Sunny Dogs prepped and my staff oversaw my moving into Conrad's flagship. The Custodes company was quartered in my assigned section of the ship. I had to smooth some tension from the ship's mortal crew, but it wasn't an issue. My staff was used to that by now. I met up with the 8th Mortal Army Officer attachments, introduced myself, so to speak. I wasn't really here for a leadership role for this operation, just an advisor. This was Conrad's show. 
I was tasked with presenting the Legion's captains with the knowledge of chaos, what to expect from Slaneshi demons and Lear gene sorcery, and how to handle any chaos weapons. Namely, don't touch the dildo swords. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's pretty the best explanation. <laughs> like, if you don't know what it is, just don't fucking touch it, guys, okay? <laughs> just don't. We made a stop to speak with Conrad's informant, a race of snail Xenos, a small empire that controlled a cluster of about a dozen or so stars. They were non-expansionist, and they kept to the treaty with the old federation, even during the Age of Strife, and most importantly, their planets were not candidates for human settlements, without massive terraforming. For their service in turning on the Cabal, they would be made a protectorate species and be left alone. They would pay a small mineral tithe, but a crazy small one. I wasn't happy about this, but it wasn't my call. They sent us the info promised. We parted ways. We had snake chaos cultists to fight. Our first fight with the Lear and their allies was in the Void. They had some of the Dogheads with them, and some squid race I didn't even know about. The Xenos fleet only had a handful of Lear ships, so they were wiped out pretty quickly. We blew up some minor mining outposts and captured a Lear Void station. The tech boys learned a lot of the Lear's navy and major colonies. I was tasked with looking through the after action reports and capture anything for any useful info. Turns out the Lear are planning to raid a lizard Xenos feral world to gather slaves for sacrifices. I pass the intel on to Conrad. We caught the Lear's slaver fleet with their pants down. Their fleet was reduced to orbital scrap and the planet side forces bombed from the skies. We mostly left the lizard folk alone, for now. The Imperium would be claiming this world in time, but right now the lizards got a pass. The Night Lords finished off the remnant swiftly. They left the Lear distress beacon alone and our ships hid in a local belt to ambush an expected reinforcement fleet. They came with more numbers than expected, but we hit them hard. We jumped into the warp and headed to a remote system to lick our wounds. The tech boys worked their asses off, so we moved on in only two weeks. We ravaged a major Lear world. They had temple complexes that were hive-sized. Those had to be taken by planetside forces. The Night Lords took out most of the temple cities by rapidly breaking the temple's defences and blowing their power supplies. The Lear powered their cities doom style by tapping into the warp for power. I helped with identifying such power stations. The walls of screaming faces really helped point them out. Afterwards, we glassed the planet. Sounds like a good idea. Mm -hmm. like, yeah, definitely the best choice. At a captured void station, I was tasked to investigate a shrine. The mortal army force that find it went insane and reinforcement find them fornicating with the snake fucks and eating the flesh of their fellow humans. Jesus, they were burned alive. I was going in with Lego's company of custodies and a squad of night lords. We find a pillar made of arms, still writhing in glowing purple. The hands of the arms would morph into faces and speak nonsense. The pillar tried to sway me with visions of myself ruling the galaxy. Me as the new master of mankind. The galaxy, mine to toy with. It honestly sounded exhausting. Yeah. Awful. Honestly, <laughs> and a ton I, of work. <laughs> <laughs> no, honestly, I, no, that doesn't no. sound like an ideal job for me. No thanks to Lanesh. Not interested in selling my soul. We set the blight ablaze and smothered it in weapons fire. The station was dragged and pushed into the local star to be sure. We spent months pulling hit and run tactics on Lear Navy. They reinforced their world beyond our current ability to take. Their ships were being picked off, and Conrad pulled some daring raids to kill major Lear leaders personally. Normally the Legion's foes would be brutalised, but I had informed them that the snake fucks would only get a boost from that. Damn sickos would also likely get turned on by it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the Lear did something that was preventing us from getting word from the Warhounds and Templars, though we eventually ran into Warhound forces ravaging a Lear core world. They were trying to actually take the world until we informed Angron's boys on just what they were fighting. We linked up, finished off the planet and headed back to Angron's base in the sector. It would be good to see him again. En route to Angron's staging point, our fleets ran into a massive Lear and allied fleet. It was a shit show. Warhounds and night lords boarded hundreds of Xenos ships and blew them to pieces. Our ships were vastly better than most of the Xenos rabble. Only the Lear ships could match us and the 8th's earlier actions had heavily hurt the Lear's navy. This barren star system was now littered with shattered ships, both human and Xenos. We spent a few days afterwards rescuing escape pods from our downed ships and hunting the Xenos survivors. 
We arrived to find the Templar's fleet assisting Angron's forces to fight another massive Xenos fleet. Turns out the force we fought was meant as a second wave. This was an attempt to push Imperial forces from the sector, to buy the Lear time to build more ships. Now with the Lear navy crippled, it was time for the legions to start putting their worlds to a torch. I was dropped off planetside to pore over captured records, so I didn't get to reconnect with Angron or Solomon. Pity, but duty calls. Solomon shattered the Lear spell that was preventing us from properly communicating. I was able to find some intel on key Lear targets that was forwarded to the Primarch trio. I spent the rest of the campaign on this desert world, searching the records for any useful knowledge to use against the Lear. Angron was the one to deal with the Lear blade that was meant to turn Fulgrim. He used a massive thermite charge to melt it down and then glass the world. Solomon managed to stop a ritual to drag a moon into the warp to doom a sizable portion of our forces. That would have majorly set us back. Conrad personally killed several Lear warlords which led to their remnants starting to infight. The snake fucks were broken. Now they just needed to be finished off. I don't know what Legos was up to. He and his force just showed back up one day, missing a third of their numbers. Oh, is that a good thing or a bad thing? I don't know. Could have been tainted. Where were they? Yeah, hopefully we'll find out more. No Legos! Angron escorted us back to the Emperor's fleet. We traded stories along the way and caught up. It was rather short, but fun. Once back with Emps, I subjected myself to intensive mental scans. I had been dealing with tons of Lear records and didn't hurt to be careful. I talked with Emps about my vision from the pillar. He found my reaction quite funny. That's because nobody wants his fucking job. <laughs> oh, so you see anyone says, oh, I love the Emperor's No, you fucking signal. wouldn't. No, Absolutely fucking not. Lying. No, thank you. No. <laughs> Angron was redeployed against an orc empire and we went to link up with Horus. We had several army units corrupted by chaos influence. I was tasked with overseeing the task force to deal with it. We burned journals, edited records of the corrupted to having been killed in action, and contained the taint. Only a few dozen cases, not bad for what we faced. We did try and limit mortal forces to taint. Still, it pays to be aware. I had some units under low-key watch and other under full lockdown. Legos and his former unit have been sent back to Terra. I was assigned two custodies to guard me while Legos is unavailable. Emps told me they are to undergo a purity ritual regimen. They fought something, took heavy casualties, and were taking no chances. It's weird not having Legos around. Swear to God, don't you be fucking with Legos. Don't be, fuck don't don't be fucking with Lego. Legos is not going to be turning fucking be corrupted by chaos. No step on Lego. <laughs> <laughs> no step on Lego. <laughs> Magnus and Fulgrim have rejoined the crusade proper. Fulgrim formally gained his legion while I was gone. Emps and I have been bouncing between worlds. On one world, he showed me a ruin with a mural he made before the Age of Strife. We helped one world repel some orcs. While I was leading a scarring of some grey lookalikes, I was approached by an Eldar for seer. Told me a few craft worlds had a council and agreed to ask me some questions. Asked me to explain Exodite world spirits. I was taken back. Well, why would they ask about that? I told him how it was like the infinity circuits. Just that planets with life could form a temple in the warp. The Eldar left in peace, and I reported this to the Emperor. We passed a ton of Stone Age feral worlds. We dropped off people to help uplift those worlds. Razit got injured by a poison bone spear. Fucker got lucky. Razit will be fine. Just bed restricted for a few weeks. One planet we passed had a fallout vibe. Had several factions fighting over ruins and a nuclear wasteland infested with mutants. Had human nobles ruling over beast folk majority. Many beast folk committed mass suicide when we arrived. Seems they had a cult that believed they would be reborn as proper humans once the stars danced or something. It was honestly kind of sad. That is kind of sad to be honest with yeah. you. Poor beast man. Oh. Oh. Each world passed quickly to me. I was buried in work. Teaching scholars English. Teaching passing sturdy captains about the great enemy. And what to look out for. And the report systems that Emps, Mal and I set up. We met up with Ferris and caught him up as well. I also started receiving reports about the captains asking me advice on the great enemy. It finally hit me that I was slowly becoming the guy in charge of anti-chaos operations. I already was for a while, but I didn't really see myself as that. I'm so tired. The Emperor sent me on a small detour to assist some ultramarines purging a cult. The PG willingly joined the Imperium in exchange for fighting his openly chaos rivals. The Imperial forces crushed the warlords quickly, but the cults went underground. I helped identify chaos symbols that were hidden in plain sight. 
I wrote rules on how to deal with possible cultists. I trained shock troops how to properly deal with cultist relics. I oversaw the mass burning of bodies. When the cultists grew desperate, I led the marines to deal with the demon they summoned. Ultramarine chaplains asked me how to explain what the marines fought. To me, these foes were expected. But to even the Astartes who faced the worst scene as possible, just were not prepared for actual demons. I tried to explain their nature, but I could see the worry in their eyes. Things calm down a bit as we travel. We still fight here and there, but most foes are pathetic. I have been trying to relax more, so I don't snap. Ems is going to have a stop at a paradise world to de-stress a bit. It's a Christmas party. <laughs> hey, staff work day. <laughs> I have some of my staff watching Razzits and his officers, so they don't try to actually drag me to your brothel like he's been threatening. Oh no! <laughs> no. I've been dragged to the whorehouse again! <laughs> oh! <laughs> I tried to stop the sunny dogs from their plan, but my staff turned me over. I tried to fight, but they literally dragged me to a shuttle. We even passed the Emperor. He just told them to bring me back in one piece. <laughs> Traitors! All of you! <laughs> they thankfully just took me to a feast. I guess there were lots of scantily clad women serving the food, but whatever. Space hooters. <laughs> yes. We saw a few shows. Saw some sights. It was refreshing. Emps joined us for the games. Just a show of beast tamers showing off. I'm back. We're going to focus on Malkador for a bit and then back to Anon. Meanwhile, deep in the Imperial Palace. In a vaulted room, kept in a near-perfect darkness and protected by arcane wards. An old man preps candles. The room slowly lights up as he circles the area. The sigilite finishes his task and moves to a runic ward with a table in the centre. As he reaches out for the deck of cards, a figure appears across the table. Malkador ignores his master's projection and continues to shuffle the cards. The Emperor projection is sombre. He and his friends have played this game many times, but this will be the first time since the full card changed from a blank card to a visage of his cupbearer, Anon. Malkador places the set and roles were played. Emps chooses the Angel as Warmaster, as was Anon's suggestion. As always, the Warmaster falls. As Malkador continues to play, the Emperor orders him to stop and restart. This repeats itself as he chooses a different war master each time. Malkador grows colder with each round. Ooh, now this is interesting, mm, guys. This is, interesting. this is really getting into it. No change. No matter which of his master's sons, the war master always falls to chaos. Malkador narrows his eyes. Since Anon graced the full card, Malkador's card now survives each time, even as his master remains bound to the golden throne. The stagnation is drastically lessened, but still a march to ruin. Each playthrough leads to the full breaking as he desperately tries to replace Malkador's role as he finally succumbs to age. They play through the last of the Primarch's path. Mal goes to pack up the cards. No, we have another round to play. Confused, Malkador still does as asked. When the choice of War Master comes, his master chooses the full, and the card catches fire. Interesting. The Emperor vanishes. No doubt to think on the new rounds. Malkador puts each candle out and leaves the room. He moves through the lower levels of the palace back up to his study. Legos is waiting for him. Legos, I see you're well. How fair are the others? Two of my brothers had to be put down. Far less than what we were expecting. Anon's cautions prevented the worse. The custodian and the sigilite discussed the threat that was removed. Only to be interrupted by more custodies with a certain prisoner in tow. Ah, Sava, we have much to discuss. Back to Anon. Emp sent me out to lead a splinter fleet that was being tasked to bring a sector into the fold. It was rather tame, mostly feudal worlds with the odd civil world here and there. Most were happy to see us. A few worlds attacked our diplomats and were punished harshly. One king challenged me to a duel. Had me face his best knight in single combat. No guns. Good thing my digi weapon is not a gun. <laughs> I didn't leave the poor guy to burn, and quickly mercy killed him. The king was kind of miffed that I cheated but held to his honour. One of Razit's officers is staying behind to settle down with the king's heiress. We moved on, crushed one world that refused to call and rejoin the fold. We limited damage to the civvies, as they were clearly being forced to fight us. As in, literal slave callers. Once we took down the tar network, keeping the callers working, the leaders got Order 66 by their slaves. We left behind the Imperial Fist attachment we had with us, as this world needs it more than us right now. I have directed several worlds to prep food aid to be shipped to help. It felt really good to put those fuckers down. 
I oversaw some basic charters, mostly sticking basics. I made one civil world the sector capital, mostly because they actually had a starport and a history of peaceful trade in the area. We headed back to the main fleet, which was currently beating the fuck out of a minor orc empire. Emps was chilling watching an orc world be bomb cleaned. I joined him, offered him a drink and sat in a nice chair. He accepted the glass, but was focused on the world below us. The floor in his deck was a see-through crystal, looked like we were standing in the void over the world. Eventually Emps downed the glass, and we discussed the sector I'd brought into the fold. We were closing in on the Interrex and Horus, who was working out a deal with him. A nomad fleet had entered the talks as well. A group of humans and allied Xenos. I will admit, I did not trust the Xenos. I knew what kind of galaxy I was in. The aliens of the Interrex and this nomad fleet had long histories of working peacefully with humans, but it put me on edge, like I was open to a knife to the back. This planet was a trash heap. I was with Emps, planet side as Imperial forces hunted the Orc holdouts. The Greenskins had dug in and dug in hard. The mortal forces had this well in hand. As we cleansed each area, we would build fold fasts and clear areas for landing zones. Most of my work here was approving base layouts and settling tensions from the Imperial Diverse Forces and overseeing the mass burning of orcoid bodies. Like, you gotta do it, you know. Fungus spreads rapidly. <laughs> the last orc holdouts on this world are being finished off. This world is suckish now, but it is a nice location for connecting several sectors together. Because of this, we're going to leave behind a crack team to build this world up. This world will one day be rich from trade, and will be a keystone for the Imperium in this region. Truly some good work. Angron sent word to us. The craft world that sent me an envoy have formally formed a coalition. Well, more like they agreed to agree to a coalition. The Eldar have approached Angron's warhounds to evacuate a maiden world with human colonists that have agreed to leave. Angron is asking Emps and I how to proceed. I'm at a loss. The idea that the Eldar would properly organise and send a proper diplomatic team to deal with such an issue confused me. I know the Eldar could be diplomatic, but they were always underhanded. This was them forming a possible long-term collective of craft worlds and trying to keep the Imperium peaceful. I will just have to trust Emps on this. Emps agreed to the Eldar's request. Angron was tasked with overseeing the worlds, two million colonists relocated to three frontier worlds. In return, the Eldar have agreed to help defend those three frontier worlds and agreed to further talks with the Imperium once they formalised their coalition. We went about our tasks of running the fleet. I had to put down a riot on one ship when two regiments started arguing. It started with heckling, then yelling matches during meals, then fist fights in the halls to fill on brawls between regiments. I had the general in charge of overseeing those regiments reprimanded and had each regiment reassigned to different ships. I had marks added to each CO's records and had one trooper flogged. Fucker threw some fruit at me. <laughs> <laughs> okay then. I finished dealing with the bullshit and settled some matters with my scribes and staff. My suite called me. The siren of sleep called. As I approached my room, I noticed something off. I signaled my custody guards to send word to the sunny dogs. One of the custodies go in first, then waves me in. I do in fact have visitors. Conrad and some Night Lord captain I don't know. Conrad came by to pass a warning. The Cabal is gunning for me. I kinda guessed that. The latest Cabal agents Conrad faced had files on me that were... strange. They knew I was a reincarnate from Terror, but they somehow found a bunch of old videos and thought I was the generic protag from... <laughs> Ezekiel. Ezekiel. <laughs> <laughs> I thought these guys were meant to be smart. They also showed me some videos of some new Xenos they fought. Fuckers looked like mini Cthulhu clones. That was worrying. Also had what looked like herd with them. The 8th were pretty sure they were scouts of some kind. Conrad did not take my answers well and stormed out to speak with his father. I chatted with the captain for a bit. After a bit, I explained I need to sleep and offered to talk later. I woke later to a maid tasked to get me for a meeting. I splashed my face with some water and ate a ration bar as I walked. Tasted better than I thought it would, but still tasted of steel caramel. Emps was in the meeting hall early. Joked about getting me a katana to play up with the Cabal's mistaken intel. <laughs> <laughs> I rolled my eyes at him. How does Emps know about anime? Oh, come on, you know fine lately Anon is quite... No, well, the, uh, the Emperor's been alive since, what, 8000 BC in, like, universe, so, like, you, you know... Emps had manga? Do you reckon he did? Do you think he had manga? 
I don't think know. He I, watched JoJo. I think the MCU. Oh walking no! Oh my God! He did. He watched walking JoJo. And he, oh Chico. my God! No! <laughs> <laughs> oh no! That's where he got the space wing idea from. <laughs> I rolled my eyes at him. We chatted about nonsense in English as the rest of the leaders of the fleet filtered in. We switched to Gothic as more people arrived. Emps went over most topics fairly quickly. Conrad was tagged in to discuss the new Xenos and new measures regarding mental effects. A few officers are being sent to integrate a pocket empire that approached the Imperium for annexing. Smart, they will get a much better deal that way. Afterward, Conrad and Emps joined me for a quick meal. After a nice meal, Conrad leaves to hunt more Cabal agents. Nice lad. Emps and I are going over some basic plans for after he deals with the Interax. Looks like he wants me to get Sad Boy Pert. What? Pert 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 I can never say his fucking name. <laughs> I can never say his name. Like the guy mark of the Iron Fists, isn't it? Sad Boy? Yeah. No, sorry, not Iron Fists. It's Iron Warriors, isn't it? Oops, looking amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Look, you know how it is. I think I can handle that. The thing that really stands out is Magnus is going to be tasked with searching near the Halo Stars for Alpharius and Omegon. That's a gay. <laughs> That's a gay. Omegon. <laughs> Omegon. <laughs> Sounds like a headache. Poor Magnus. I spent the rest of the trip helping with more translating records. We were greeted by a waiting Luna Wolf force alongside a few Interact ships. The Interact had about 40-ish worlds. Their ships were rather civilian looking. They were dwarfed by the Imperial ships. The world we were taken to was really great though. They had actual arcologies, not the hives I was used to seeing. The world had 40 billion humans and 12 billion Xenos living, but the environment looked better than Earth in my time. The capital threw us a warm welcome. Massive parades and crowds of humans and Xenos cheering us on. Abby, the not yet armless, sorry what? Yeah, he's got two, like, cyber, cyber arms. Oh, right, okay. Abby, the not yet armless, greeted us and brought us to Horus. After Horus greeted us, Abaddon and I chatted while Emps and Son caught up. Abby is a charming guy. After that, meetings began. We met with the Interrex diplomats. I mostly shut the fuck up. It was already mostly handled by Horus by this point. We were just here to finalise and sign treaties. The terms were simple. One. The Interax and their civilians, humans and Xenos, would be protected by the Imperium. 2. The Imperium and the Mechanicum would be granted access to the Interax STC archives. 3. The Interax would be allowed self-rule as long as they followed the ban on AI and allowed the black ships to do their duty. There was more, but that was the simple version. That sounds pretty fair to me, to be honest yeah. with you. That's not a bad one. We met with the Nomad fleet next. They wanted to settle a series of worlds and wanted protection. Emps allowed this, on certain conditions. The Xenos allies would be left alone, but restricted to the sector they would be forming with the nomad humans. They also had stockpiles of special materials and minerals that were rare as fuck. Those were to be handed over. Meetings with both the nomads and the Interex went on for a while. Emps has decided to oversee the STC archive data transfer personally. I was being sent off with Luna Wolves, Emperor's Children and Ultramarines Detachment. Abaddon was leading the Luna Wolves group. I would also get some Night Lords later. My new flagship would be a newly refurbished Gloriana class that I would get the name. And I had the perfect name. Oh god, oh god. Is this is gonna be bad. I was planet side eating at a local cafe. I could see the massive ship in low orbit with my unassisted eyes. It was still being prepped and its name was still a series of numbers. I eat my food and enjoyed the sight. Several passers-by were awestruck by the sheer size of the ship. Ah, Emp's flagships was even bigger. A Gloriana class is just about 20 kilometers long. Emp's ship was well over 30 kilometers. In a few hours, I would be granted a tour of my new digs, the Ally of Justice. Oh, that's not too bad. That's actually pretty good. <laughs> I, I thought like it was going to be something whack. I thought it'd be like <laughs> meet this grok, meet this beast, <laughs> or some shit. You know what I mean? And now the models of our website. Brought to you by neckbeardia.co.uk. Get you all some of these titties. Dwarf titties, orc titties, cat titties, fat titties, the gases and we assist a bit. Vampires and goblins and all the buff champions and even hentai, yeah that too. Dragons, manticores, ogres and no some bugbearers and even more to you go still. Undead and demons and then our friend Pally and definitely not 40k. Wood elves, dark elves and lizards and Megan the slither and James the look cool as he stands. Beholders and kobolds and tyrants and only in a donkey with a frying pan. 
If you don't want no models, then no need to bother. We now have subclasses and tees. Also, Garbro's book. Go have a look. Check out the link to Kofi. Thank you for watching our videos and giving our channel a hand. But this is the end, our viewers and friends. So let's get back to the video, man. <laughs> I fucking hate myself. <laughs> Anon, your fleet has been delayed. I pause from my meal. Imps and I are eating at a very nice establishment. Horace and his current Morneville are eating with us. Good news or bad news? I asked. He chuckles. The first. I have confirmed the lion's status. Caliban should be cleansed any day now. I want to rally the first legions, me and elements, to your fleet, and detour to reunite them with their father. I whistle. Damn, the first legion is huge at this point. Well over 230,000 Astartes. This would put me in charge of the largest fleet outside of the Sol home fleet. We return to our meal. Horus told me about some grey look-alike species while I finished my meal. I was chilling in my room in the new Imperial Embassy. I was trying to just relax and pleasure read before I was swamped in fleet paperwork and politics. Problem was the Interax elite kept trying to invite me to such and such or get me to listen to some political spiel. I tried not to be an ass but I was quickly reaching my social limits. Seemed like every socialite and bachelor wanted to be my friend. Like, come on here. If there's one way to get, like, into the Emperor's ear. Yeah. Like, you know, that's not, like, a weird superhuman warrior that's fucking, like... You know what I mean? Like, yeah. you know, you're not going to be make, make friends with many space marines. Let's be serious. <laughs> <laughs> Seems Horus and Imperial Meteor really have talked me up. Even with my history of Xenocide. I was well liked by the Interax population. Seems like they like how a normie human like me has risen so far. Same. <laughs> Still was really killing my already strained free time. Damn it, I just want to read something fun for once. Emps talked me into attending an Interax talk show. Well, more like Emps told me I was booked. I whined, then Horace and boys hauled me off. Horace and I entered from backstage and greeted the weird host. Lady had green hair made to look like a nest of eyes. Horse was in a very nice suit, even if he still wore beast hide over his shoulders. <laughs> I was wearing a toga with a red sash. I looked retarded. Thank you both for joining us tonight. It's a pleasure to be back, Shavi. Sha she she Shavi? Shavi, yeah. Yeah, we'll go Shavi. Horse has been on our show twice before now. I give a short bow. I'm glad I could join you. I lean on my training and try and appear chill and charming. We sat on a weird couch across from the hostess. She had a hover chair. Horace, how's it been? Spending some time with your dear dad lately? Yeah, we just had a lovely dinner last night. I showed him and Anon some of your local dishes. It was quite good, I speak up a bit. Their food was great. And you, Anon, I heard a lot about you. Really now? Yeah, we've heard you went from pre-electricity planet to being the Emperor's cupbearer overnight. Must have made quite the first impression. I laughed at the memory. <laughs> you could say that. Care to share the details? It was just simple, really. He's an extremely high-level psyker, and I have studied things he wanted to know more of, like grief from there. I used the utmost of my bullshit training to weave a bit of the truth into my story. And just what would a sixth son of a juke on a, forgive me, a backwater world possibly know that would interest an emperor of an interstellar power? That's classified. I give my biggest shit-eating grin. Some smartass had a laugh track. I don't know about you guys, but that sounds sketchy. That sounds sketchy. I think this is going to end up in hot water. Yeah. You know, asking questions like that, and then he can't actually... Answer? Mmm, that's not good. Because there's a lot of people, like, you know, earlier on in the story, they were saying, like, oh, yeah, he's, like, you know, he's hypnotized the emperor or some shit. Yeah. Mmm. The rest of the show was mostly fluff and bullshit questions. Horace later told me he had basically given the studio a script to stick to. We had a meet and greet with some elites and a few common people that had won tickets to the show's event. One kid straight up asked Horace if he could be a space marine. Horace actually agreed to test the kid if his parents agreed. The dad was honoured but the boy's mum looked horrified. Yeah, I don't think I'd want my child <laughs> turned into a space no. marine. I had plans to see a few sites afterwards and asked Horace if he would like to join me. He had a meeting soon but would catch up with me afterwards. It was late, but I was boarding in the early morning, so I could sleep later on the Ally of Justice. I saw a few monuments, took some pictures with people I met in the street. Razitz got sick from street vendor food. He got wee <laughs> <laughs> 
course met up with us for a theatre show. A classic local comedy. It was nice. Billy Madison or something. Ah, uh, I imagine. <laughs> I was getting ready to board the shuttle to my ship when Emps visited me to see me off. He was in a far more casual form. He looked like an old man. The staffers didn't even notice him. Mate, he's like 12 foot tall. (laughs) Have you not noticed a 12 foot tall man? (laughs) I waved to show I saw him. We walked to a more private area to chat. Ready to head back off on your own? (laughs) I will hardly be alone. I just need to play the middleman and let brighter minds hold the reins. That and try and lighten our paperwork load. You know very well. I would just let you act the figurehead. You don't give yourself enough credit and all. He places his hand on my shoulder. It's kind of strange to see the Emperor like this. I'm slightly taller than him right now. Oh, well, there you go then. He's not actually in his 12 foot tall form. form. You have really taken my call to action seriously. It has really brightened my days. I could hardly do elsewise. How would I live with myself? He smiles. Most seek only power, others be damned. Few reach for the greater good, or can even see it. I chuckle at the greater good bit, reminded me of the Tao. Emps clearly reads my thoughts. Are they worth the effort to uplift? Right now? No. Maybe someday. If we don't wipe them out. We mostly chilled with some chest and talked till my shuttle landed and was loaded. We wished each other well, and I headed off. I settled into my suite on board the Ally of Justice. I had the same space as a damn manor here. After I settled down and rang up the ship's officers, I asked when would be a good time to meet. They would be busy for now while we prepared to jump, but I wanted to let them know I wasn't avoiding them. I'm the kind of guy that could go weeks without talking and be fine, but my role demanded I be social. Gotta step it up. Razitz, Abaddon and I eat lunch together. Note to self, try and meet more of the Luna Wolves I have with me. The plan was to meet up with the elements of the First Legion as we went. Take some planets as we headed to Caliban. Pick up the line and set Caliban under the First Legion's direct rule. Then go find Pert and stop him from being salty all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Should <Yeah>. be fun. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm just not into Pert Lapo at all. He's not a, he's not a Primarch that I find interesting. No. I what, me, I don't, I don't fucking know. <laughs> yeah, well, you know. After we were mid-jump, I called a general meeting for the fleet leadership. I made another council-style board that went over the fleet's needs. It had served me well so far. The first few meetings I mostly spent explaining how the council worked. Most Imperial fleets were very top-down focused. After that, I actually found myself bored. My scribes for the Emperor's fleet had taken over most of the translating jobs. I had already finished my portion before I was assigned this fleet. Guess I better find a hobby. Our first stop was a barren system. Only had random chunks of ice and rock orbiting a dwarf star. We waited a week for another fleet that was joining us. We passed around supplies between ships and jumped. Things went smoothly until we had to deal with some dumb fuckery. A tripper got lynched. He was some Chad type sleeping with any willing lady. (laughs) Some Chad type. (laughs) His last hookup was another tripper's wife. Ooh, that's going to end badly for anyone. The cuckolded tripper and his new friends threw the man whore out of the airlock, mid-warp. Ooh, that's a horrible death. The area of that ship is now cursed. You can literally hear the poor guy's screams when the lights are off. One of the friends turned himself and his fellows in. He told us they were only going to rough him up, not throw the offender into the warp. The cuckolded tripper was shot by firing squad for murder. His friends were assigned to penal regiments. That may as well be a death sentence, let's be serious. The wife that cheated on the tripper just joined one of the officers harm. This was fucking stupid. Things calmed back down a bit. We find a habitable world, not on our charts. We had it added and set up a few settlements. Planet was a colder world, massive ice caps, lots of Falkland type islands. A few regiments from Ice World were happy for the land grant. I named the world Fuel and we moved on. We came across a stranded ship in one system. The ship had to throw their warp engine into the star as it started to fail. The ship had been stuck in this system for over two years. They'd set up an actual farm on their ship. One of the crew had experience on treating soil and had basically saved their asses. The gal literally saved the crew of 20,000 people. We took them with us. A delay held us back. A pocket empire of beast folk. They had conquered their planet some time back and wiped out the remaining humans. They had managed to get ships from an old federation vault and were ethnic cleansing the human world in this sector. Six human worlds were occupied and the local humans being worked to death in camps. We hit them like a hammer. 
We had several Beast Folk detected before fighting even broke out. Seems that the current Beast Folk leadership was unpopular. Once we had the area under control, we exiled the defectors to a frontier world. The rest of the Beast Folk were wiped out. That's actually a pretty good deal. <laughs> like, that's genuinely nice of them. For the, um, uh, for the Imperium, that is, anyway. <laughs> Rebuilding the sector took a while. We started having First Legion elements joining us over time. While rebuilding an agri world just called 3GK, I was asked by the PG if I could relocate some of his people. The world was just not able to house them all right now, as most of the habitats were scrap heaps. I agreed, of course. When the refugees arrived in the fleet, I was stunned. Turns out the PG was from a reform faction that iced the nobles and let the world get conquered. The refugees were not farm staff that knew how to settle a world, but nobles. Their families and harms that have never worked a day in their life. They had hidden bunkers while their people were butchered. What was I going to do with a bunch of posh gits and their bed warmers? I had every exile tested for skills and assigned quarters. Several complained I was mistreating them. I told them if they didn't work, they would not eat. Many of the harm girls quickly find new patrons. Asked to work for me, I gave them maid jobs. The children of the exiles were given classes. If the end of this series doesn't end with Cupbearer getting his hole, I'll be so sad. I think he has got no, his he hole. Hasn't. Has he not no. still? No, I'm pretty sure they dragged him off to a whorehouse at one point. Yeah, but he didn't do anything. Yeah, Cupbearer deserves a bit of sex at this point. <laughs> Things were calm for a while, but busy. I oversaw a lot of settlement rebuilding, integrating local structures into imperial standards. My new maids kept causing issues with my old staff. One maid didn't take no for an answer and tried to blackmail me into taking her to bed. One of the custodies cut her down right there. That caused me even more paperwork. The maid's death was pretty dumb, but it stopped a lot of the bullshit. Her blackmail wasn't even that bad. Just her threatening to spread rumours of me being a eunuch. Honestly, though, you're getting on like you're it, getting though. On like a you're you're getting on like You're getting on. You know, that's just. <laughs> people start asking questions if you turn it down that often. <laughs> it was hardly going to make me want to sleep with her more. I also didn't care if people thought I was a eunuch. I mostly ignore the issue till it died down. With the sector mostly rebuilt, we headed out. Most of what we passed was empty space. Not actual void, just systems of rubble. Things calmed down in the fleet. I joined with the Astartes elements for a feast and interlegion games. Abby even kicked my ass in a bite. Thankfully he went easy on me so nothing broke. I even got them to play tug of war with chains. They really got into that. We came across a jungle world. It had very large predators hunting megafauna. We of course used it as a hunting retreat. Army and legion teams hunted their fill and we stocked up on our meat supply. I overheard a tripper Trevik say the world was a steakhouse. So I formally named the planet Trevik Steakhouse. Honestly, <laughs> that's what it would end up turning into for me. Yeah. If I was put in this situation, eventually the planets are going to get silly names. <laughs> yeah. Eventually it's going to happen. Eventually it's going to like, oh yeah, that's a... Uh, that's a Gobby McGob over there, or, you know what I mean? Like the Booty Big Boot Face or <laughs> Planet McPlanet Face. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That I know. Planet McRoin Body. <laughs> yes. I got spooked a bit. I was approached by a watcher in the dark while minding my own business. I have no idea how it got on ship mid warp, and I don't want to know. It asked me to delay my fleet a few days, warning that something was trying to ambush us soon. I thanked it for the warning and called a crisis meeting. I'm always interested in them watchers. They're really interested in part of 40k lore, but there's really nothing about them. If, there's, if you guys have any got like you know, any sources where you can actually read about them, let us know because they're an interest in Xenos faction that the really has nothing to know about. My council decided to hold up around an ice world we stopped at. We told the crews we were stocking up on water and taking tally of stores. Fairly standard stuff. Two weeks later, I was contacted again. This time by two watchers that informed me they had handled the threat. I had no idea what to think about this. After a few jumps, we stopped at a system littered with derelict Xenos ships. The tech boys couldn't find anything to identify them. I called off the searches and we headed out. Abaddon didn't take this well and insisted I have at least a squad of marines with me at all times. Honestly, that's not a bad idea. Let's be serious. Legos isn't a bait. Yeah. You guys should have something. As we scouted out a garden world we find... Shit went down. I was planet side after a week of army forces scouting the world. I had a company of Luna Wolves, the Sunny Dogs, and my two custodies. I was checking out a ruin with murals. Looked like human made it. Maybe a lost colony that dwindled? We hadn't contacted any people here. 
but they could have easily regressed to tribal levels, and we just haven't found them yet. I was voxing for a team of scribes to record everything when it happened. I heard a mental scream. Weapons fire and something jumped out from the shadows in the corner. My custodies cut down whatever the fuck that mass of tentacles was, but was rushed in evac. We fought our way to the landing field, but as we left the runes, the beasts just faded from reality. It was clearly fuckery, so I ordered the runes shelled from orbit. As everyone was being checked, we had to mercy kill two sunny dogs. They reported headaches, and we find something in their heads. Several more turned themselves in for checkups, but came clean. Still spooked the shit out of us. We marked this world for censor and moved on. Yeah, it's just gonna get glass, let's be serious. Yeah. One of my new maids asked to be reassigned. I asked why. She was one of the new maids that had not caused issue. She said she didn't actually want to work, but be arm candy and a bed warmer. She thought I just had a maid fetish, and now wanted to find a patron as I clearly wasn't interested. <laughs> I wished her well and she moved in with one of the ship's officers. To each their own. Honestly, this guy. <laughs> Wait, like, come on here. Are you tell me after a long day. Get your dick wet. Are you just saying, like, oh, you know what? You know, I'm, I've been having a really busy day. Fancy just giving us a wee wank. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, just, just, just give us a wee chuff. Like, you know, just something to sort of say after a long day. <laughs> you know, like, anything, maybe? My council was dealing with day-to-day -day tasks when we got an odd request from some menials. Seems like they wanted separate habitats for men and women. Why? We sent teams to investigate the strange request. Turns out an imperial cult had taken my lack of love life as a sign from the emperor. They were preaching that I was a saint and the sexes should remain isolated unless for procreating. What the actual fuck? I'm just socially awkward. <laughs> How did they even reach that conclusion? <laughs> Mate, <laughs> that sounds like celibacy to me. I know, I know. We broke up the imperial cult and posted flyers detailing why the cult was disbanded and wrong. Also, why I wasn't a saint. It was weird finding all the religious art of me in Emps. They had at least made me look like a badass in the art. One shrine had Emps and I looking a little too passionately oh, at each other. Oh, for fuck's sake. Oh, God. <laughs> Some very, like, Michelangelo-esque artwork, I imagine. <laughs> I had the head priest of the cult brought to me. Guy was big. Was a bodybuilder during his free time before converting. Guy literally tried to kiss my boots when the guards brought him in. I tried to reason with him. He started ranting about women being the source of all human weakness and other nonsense. Oh my god, he's from fucking K. <laughs> he's from fucking K. Oh my god, it is. As my guards dragged him away, he started praising my bromance for the Emperor. I needed a drink after dealing with this Lin. Razitz broke out his personal stash. I woke up in my study. I was on the ground and was shirtless. My desk was upside down and the sword first made me stuck in a leg of a desk. What happened last night? I mixed a herbal drink from my stash. It really helped with my hangover. Damn, Razitz, what did you give me? As I walked out to the rest of my suite and noticed the mess. Butlers, maids, scribes and sunny dogs were passed out everywhere in the mad party. I started waking people up. We had a mess to clean up. How much is the damage going to cost? I asked with dread covering my face with my hands in shame. The scribe looked abashed. Around two and a half million credits, as well as reassigning some staff to do the awkwardness. Dear God, sorry, my bad. By the Imperium, what have we done? This got really out of hand. Half my staff were on leave from injury. What? The fuck? <laughs> what the fuck happened? Fighting pets? Yeah. <laughs> and it looks like many of my maids would need another type of leave soon. Maternity? Oh god. Oh, for fuck's this sake. was insane. I had Razit's stash seized. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking shit, Pete. <laughs> he was actually okay with that. We both think someone spiked his liquor. Yeah, okay, Razit. Sure. Yeah, okay, sure. Razit. Sure thing. Jokes on you. I'm into this shit. <laughs> <laughs> his liquor was just expired. It had aged into super booze. How does that even work? Razit blames me. Says it was me not taking a harm as the cause of all this. I threw a book at him. <laughs> Uncharted Garden Worlds, towards the Halo Stars. Magnus and his legion are restocking on food and water, readying for another outing into the Halo Stars to find the 20th Primarchs. While the fleet staff and menials gather supplies and goings-on, Magnus and a few of his legion's newest order prepare. Are you sure Brother Regis is ready for the Anonite Codex, Father? The visions are hard on the mind. 
He hears his Jean son's words and sighs. Regis has been properly vetted and was with Anon for several cults being purged. He is strong. This will be our last chance to induct him into the Anonites safely for possibly years as we look for my brother. Then let him not be found wanting. The Primarchs and his four accompanying marines prepare the prefab warehouse being used for his ritual. Incense is burned, wards raised, and the bindings for Regis set. Magnus gently tapped the book chained to his armour. The Anonite Codex, the tomb the Primarch himself sealed the vision of the dark future Anon saw. The future the Anonites themselves have been founded to stop at all costs. These four were the only current members. Magnus had them removed from all other Legion rankings, to the shock of many of his sons. Thadok, bring him in. Said Marine bangs on one of the side doors twice. Regis enters the main room, wearing only linen robes. He walks to the restraints and kneels. Sire, I am ready. Magnus nods, and wordlessly Regis is stripped by his brothers and anointed in oils and handed a mouth guard. Regis is then secured in the bindings. Magnus then steps forward as he prepares the codex. As the text opens, the temperature plummets. The air feels unnaturally heavy. Regis, you will have your eyes open to the truth of what my father fights. You will soon understand the approaching darkness and know the great burden his cupbearer carries. In unison, the four brothers stomp their boots twice and shout, We are the shield that guards the realms of men. Oh, for fuck's sake, oh, man. <laughs> Can't be like them. <laughs> <laughs> Stay strong, Regis. Magnus then places the codex above the restrained marine. It hovers in place above his head. Regis lets loose a crazed scream. Regis had been honoured to be offered a special post at his gene sire's side. He thought he had an idea of what to expect, as he had been by the cupbearer's side and seen the dangers of the warp. He had heard the lessons Lord Anon had given about its nature. Regis had been so wrong. He saw the heresy. The master of mankind made a living corpse. The rampaging Xenos and vile crusades from the Eye of Terror watched in horror as the swarm came from all sides. He screamed until he could no longer do so. His brothers had to force him to swallow his own blood lest he choke on it. Rest, my son. Recenter your mind and soul. Then we will finish. His Primarch's words hit him like a hammer blow. There's more? Hey guys, do you like models in your tabletop role-playing games? Because we do too. Do you like having big bitty waifus on your table? Because we do too. <laughs> <laughs> we got human bitties. We got lizard bitties. We got orc bitties. Oni bitties. Cat bussies. We've got everything you want at neckbeardia.co.uk. <laughs> Check the links down below. It helps us out a lot. Sorry for interrupting the video. Let's get on the story. Elsewhere, aboard the Imperial Blast Cruiser, Light of Reason, currently orbiting the resisting civilized world of Krath Primus. By what right do you think countermanded my orders, Acolyte? Scribe Jessen currently stood before Admiral Jackus O'Kana, commanding officer of the fleet. By the contingencies put in place by Lord Anon, my lord. Jessen tries to keep his cool, but subconsciously fiddles with his patch bearing the stylized cupbearer's icon. Jessen had been one of many scribes attached to fleets to keep an eye out. He didn't understand exactly what for, but he had a list of things to report and how to act. He had been assured that he would be backed if needed. Jessen's team had confirmed sightings of strange symbols in Resistance Temple's planet side. His orders in such a case called for limiting Imperial casualties and calling on the aid of the nearest Legion. The Admiral screamed at the scribe. What could His Majesty's cupbearer possibly have planned that caused you to bypass my office and call a hold on the offensive? This could set us back weeks. We may now have to hit the world from orbit and lose out of the local factorums. Again, my lord, I'm sorry. My training was clear. Protocols have been set into motion. We are to wait for the second legion to respond. That could take weeks. What could possibly warrant such a delay? A message runner hands a missive to the clearly fuming admiral. The lord takes a deep breath and reads it. He freezes. The second legion has responded. The Primarch is leaving the interrogation of Hecus to army officers and is coming to relieve me of the command to personally deal with Krath Primus. The deck is silent for a moment. Just what are we dealing with, Acolyte? Something beyond my pay grade, my lord. 
Fulgrim looked out the window of his ship down at Krath Primus. It was as he feared. The world's leaders were cultists of the so-called Blood God. He resisted the urge to spit. Some poor menial would have to don chemical gear to clean it up, and then have to repair the floor of the deck. Anon's plans to limit the Blood Cult's access to heavy fighting had worked. The resistance elite troops had fallen to a crazed state and were like rabid animals, just as dangerous to their own. Reports had confirmed the field attempt to summon demons, though a few regiments had to be detained afterwards. He resisted the urge to order this world glassed. Fulgrim had a burning hatred of chaos, but this world could very well still be cleansed and have its resources benefit the Imperium. No, just fucking, no, just burn it. Even if it had to be resettled, with the summonings denied, the purge could truly begin. Several cities had rallied to the support of the Imperials, and would be spared, after being confirmed clean of taint and relocated elsewhere. The rest would be offered no quarter. Fulgrim silently watched the world below, waiting as the assault was prepared. The fighting had been brutal, but clean, so to speak. The capital was purged, artifacts destroyed, and shrines torched. He and his guards were stopping at a camp for those locals awaiting relocating. As he walked the camp to personally speak to the same locals and offer protection and assurances to everyone that complied. As he healed his transport, he saw it in the edge of his vision. A major he had served with for years now killed a detainee that was asking for a different bunk. He was wielding a bizarre red axe. Change of plans. Lock this camp down. Order the soldiers to disarm or be fired upon. Protect the detainees. Upon the ally of justice, Colonel Razit's suite, Razit sat at the table with several of his officers. The ones not too hungover to attend anyway. The pussies. Two of the higher ranking maids stood at the wall. Operation Nightcap was a failure. Clearly. I had to bribe the Magos testing the spiked liquor. Luckily Anon brought it. The others only grunt. So any idea what went wrong? Razit looks each of person in the eye. One of the maids even rolls her eyes back at him. Are we sure he isn't a monk? One asked. Yeah. He honestly pulled a sword on the maids that volunteered to swarm him. This is getting out of hand. And how did Jack manage to spike every drink? How did he fuck that up? Remember to have Jack assign menial duties for the foreseeable future. Bastard cost him a shit ton of booze. Settle down, men. The Emperor has tasked us with getting a nom to finally relax. Poor lad already has the weight of the galaxy in his head. The boys grumble more. Razitz knocks on the table to get their attention. Any other ideas? We're the finest mortal soldiers the Imperium can call upon. Surely we can handle this. Face it, sir. He might be a lost cause. Hold your tongue. We're the solar ox. We don't admit defeat. Quiet down, yells them down. Many of the boys were starting to take this as a personal challenge. He gestures for someone to speak an idea. We could try other ways to get him to relax. One of the others throw his shoe at the speaker to shut him up. <laughs> Razit give up in the meeting as it became a brawl. Fuck it. I'm not saying frack. I know, it's too I'm gay. I'm not saying frack. Fuck it. He could offer to help Anon with his paperwork. It was better than dealing with these crazies for a while. Maybe he could sneak a drink too. I pace through my atrium. My scribes follow and ask me questions relating to the paperwork, dealing with the aftermath of the party. Razit's offered to do some of the workload, and then walked off with a bottle of some ale I got as a gift somewhere. One of my butlers waves me down after a while. My lord, you have a meeting with Lord Abaddon in 30 minutes. I nod and go get ready. We should reach Caliban any day now. Emps had set a plan and provided me with some interesting cargo to see it through. Abby will want to know what's going on. I wash my face a bit to wake myself up. Paperwork is soul draining. I've not eaten in a while so I eat the ration bar as I make my way to the meeting hall. The first legion is massing in system. Once they have, we will jump as one directly to Caliban. I bob my head in response. Have you been informed as to what the Emperor entrusted us with? I don't actually know if Abby has been informed about our special cargo. Cargo? That answers that. <laughs> we have another mission, but we're not just getting the line. Our cargo will be useful. What has Horus told you of the Great Enemy? Only that they're beings in the warp, and that they are hostile, and that you're a specialist in dealing with him. I sigh. That's an understatement. I sent for one of the custodies to bring the Emperor's care package. As we wait, I tell Abby more. There are indeed things in the warp. 
Every emotion of every soul-bearing species feeds them. They seek to increase their food source and increase in power. I can tell you more later, but for now let's narrow our focus to just what's under Caliban. Abby gestures for me to continue. I explain that I'm not fully aware of the true scope of the entity, just that the Watchers have contained it, that our cargo should assist in dealing with, or at least weaken, the threat. Have you ever heard of the Spear of Destiny? The custodies hand me the case. I open it to reveal a rather plain-looking spearhead. I push it across the table to Abby. Is this a joke? No. Belief has power. Thousands of years worth of belief has empowered the spear. It should be able to harm the entity. And you plan to lead a team to its anchor? To this material realm yourself? That's quite the task. What? No. I plan to attach the spearhead to your very long stick and make the lion do it. <laughs> I ain't gonna fight the thing. <laughs> I ain't gonna fight the thing. Are you crazy? He gives me a confused look. Then why send you here? Because the Emperor is busy dealing with STC archives. I know the threat and could be trust to oversee it handled. I wouldn't stand a chance against the damn thing in combat, but the lion will. Why entrust someone you've just met to this task? Because he's a Primarch. Trust me, he will prove of being trusted to deal with this. Abby's mind is clearly running on overdrive right now. I offer to answer some of his questions and spend a good hour talking about galactic history in the warp. I eventually tell him to ask his gene father for more later. Afterward, I sent word to the First Legion to decide on 100 Marines to be the ones to welcome their Primarch. That was a mistake. The First Legion are now holding a long series of duels to decide who gets the honour of being chosen. Tournament arc. Sorry, <laughs> couldn't help myself. <laughs> but really, I did add another week to your wait. Another Watcher spooked the shit out of me. Asked us to wait two days extra to jump. No problem, man. Just... Don't appear at the edge of my sight when I'm on ca <laughs> when I'm on the cam. Rude. <laughs> I nearly had a heart attack. I had to come up with a bullshit reason for the hold. I just told everyone that I wanted to make sure we were all ready to jump. I handled the spear to Amagos to ready for the lion. While I was wandering the ship, I ran into some trippers playing mine and Angron's war game. I asked for their thoughts and took notes on some of the different house rules they used for different types of rounds. I think I startled them at first. I felt the ship leave the warp. It was always weird going in and out of the warp. I never got used to it. The fleet took time to gather. Some ships had galler fields issues. The crews are checking everything. Afterward, we make burn towards Caliban. Soon we had our massive fleet orbiting above Caliban. I didn't actually know where their capital was, so I sent a dropship to every major city we could see. Messengers were sent back and forth. I offered to meet the lion at a place of his choosing. I went down with my sunny dogs, the two custodies, and a squad of lunar wolves. The First Legion Honor Guard came too. We brought some staff as well. I could see a walled city from the camp we set up. I had set up a canopy with chairs for Luther and I, and a Primarch sized one for the lion. We just had to wait for them now. I met with Luther first, gave him my best greeting and offered refreshments. I answered some of his questions about the Imperium. He told me a bit about the Caliban, that the lion would join us soon. The Primarch was still on his way, and should be here before nightfall. Luther asked to see some of the Astartes, wanting to get a measure of them. The First Legion offered to run a series of spars for him, a single 1v1 and a 3v3 to showcase their melee abilities, then a weapon show. We made sure to send runners to the city to inform the locals ahead of time. I was showing Luther the Force Sword when we got word of the Lion's arrival. We greeted each other. I introduced the Primarch to his sons. I was asked many questions. How the Imperium function? How do we travel the stars? Questions about his space daddy. I explained just what he was, what the Astartes are, and what would be expected of him. He was quiet for a bit. I let him mull over what he had learned, while I greeted more of his retinue. A feast was held, of course. It was a merry and glad affair. The tech boys brought fireworks. A joust would be held in the morning, to the cheer of many. I didn't get to approach the other reason why I was here yet, but that could wait. A local teen asked to speak with me, a third-born son of some local noble house. Poor sap got on his hands and knees and begged me to take him with him when we left. I had several questions. Told me a tale of woe. Daddy wanted him to marry an old crone so he could be kept quiet. The boy was gay. He had been caught by his father with his lover, who was then crucified. 
damn. I would ask the lion if I could take the boy on. I didn't want to risk a huge scandal if I thought it would cause a rift between me and the lion. The lion didn't care about me having the boy sent to the ship. I would have him tested and assigned a job. The boy was in great shape and Razitz mentioned training him if he could pass standards. I was eating some local bird roast when Luther asked me to show my skills with my sword. He didn't take my refusal well so I explained I wasn't very good at the blade. This was a mistake because he insisted to help me train. This led to the lion being disgusted with my sword skills. Both made it their mission to teach me how to properly sword fight. Both our retinues basically dragged us back to the feast. I met with some more locals and told them of some of my travels. Soon I grew tired though, so I settled in my tent. In the morning I eat a quick meal with Luther. The lion didn't wish to eat. He and his sons had started sparring last night and they were still at it. The nobles' house staff were setting up the joust. Luther asked me about the planned uplift, such as when it would start and whatnot. I told him we could start as soon as we got their go-ahead. After the lion's bonding time with his sons, I asked to speak with him. I told him of my other task here, and the threat to this world. The Spear of Destiny would be delivered to him when the time came. Until then, we focused on the uplift, and plans for Caliban. Hey guys, do you like models in your tabletop role-playing games? Cause we do too. Do you like having big bitty wifeys on your table? Cause we do too! <laughs> <laughs> we got human bitties, we got lizard bitties, we got orc bitties, oni bitties, cat bussies, we've got everything you want at neckbeardia.co.uk. <laughs> Check the links down below, it helps us out a lot. Sorry for interrupting the video, let's get on with the story. We spent months planning. Tanks were outfitted for tractor duty until the tech boys could get local manufacturing up. The locals had some tech, but it was mostly artifacts and jury-rigged copies that didn't actually know how they worked. They were, however, eager to learn and were drinking in the tech boys' knowledge. The plan is to get the First Legion set up and send the Primarch and an escort to meet the Emperor while the Caliban is converted to a recruitment world. The Watchers have approached me twice. They're preparing for Lion to gank a bitch with his spear of plus one damage. When I'm not working on the uplift, the Lion or Lither are running me into the ground in the yard. My arms might be sore as hell, but I'm getting better. I couldn't ask for better teachers, honestly. Most of the work on my end is lessened, so I can focus more on actually learning to use Ferris's gift. I offered to show the Lion and his foster dad aboard the Ally of Justice. Their reaction to seeing a local gas giant was great. While we were off-world, we were called back early. Two of the Lion's higher-ranking vassals were fighting over land rights, some long-standing issue that never actually got discussed due to the world dealing with monsters at the time. Now, however, the force both claimed was cleared for a factorum, with both wanting control. Both were threatening to raise levies. The Primarch threw them into the yard to settle there. One got knocked the fuck out, and that was that. Much better than a court case or civil war. One of the lords asked to take me hunting. We killed some six-legged boar thing. It put up a good fight, though we were only using spears and bows. We dragged it back to the village to share it with the common folk. We caught some deer-looking things as well, so there was plenty of meat to go around. I was chatting with the village elder when I saw it. It was right at the door. A chicken. An honest-to-god chicken. I dropped my glass in shock. Caliban had chickens? I had not eaten chicken since Earth in my first life. Mate, that sounds well grim. I know. I bought a few dozen of them. I was going to ask the tech boys to test them. The villagers were confused at first when I asked about the birds, but were happy to sell me some. The Lord asked me why I was so interested, and I told him I thought this type of bird might have been from Old Earth. He asked me to keep him posted on the results. I had the fattest chickens set aside to be cooked later. Get the nugs in. <laughs> the tech boys took the chickens with gusto after I explained my thoughts. I was offered to be compensated for the funds I used to buy the chickens. I declined. I was doing this for mankind, <laughs> not reward. <laughs> if only I had the secret herbs and spices. Oh, oh. oh my god. That, see, that's a work. That's the most grim dark thing about 40k. No, I want KFC. The birds are confirmed chickens. Kinda. They are recreations, made by exactly copying the DNA of Terran chickens. So as close as we can get. Efforts are being made to mass breed the birds and ship them far and wide. Emps and Mal have been sent an update. It's small, but a great find. Only the tech boys and I seem to care. <laughs> Whatever. We are approaching the point where the First Legion can fully run Caliban. 
I was expecting the Watchers to approach me again, to have the Lion deal with the Elder horror under the surface, but I've not seen them since. After asking the locals, who seem stunned I have several encounters with the Watchers already, I've decided to be more proactive. Luther, the Lion, a Custodes and I would go into the woods alone. We found a spooky looking clearing about two and a half hours into the forest by foot and waited. Just at dusk, the drama majors came. I had expected this, so Luther and I slept until just an hour before dark. Got to know your tropes. There were around 20 of them in a circle around us. I did my best to welcome them into our really basic camp. I spoke with one, showed them the spear and explained my plan. The rep asked for time to discuss my offer. I had wanted to have the majority of the First Legion join their Primarch. As I didn't fully know what to expect, they shot that down. They wanted us to act tonight. Just us four. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. Luther and I are mortals. Well, kinda. We can't fight this thing. The Lion eventually talked me into his plan. Luther and I would guard the cave slash portal to the Abyss, as the Watchers called it. We tell them we are ready and they teleport us, I guess? Or something close enough. The Watchers led us to a normal looking cave. They led us down. Really glad I brought lanterns. We were led to a mural of an Ouroboros. Wait, what? We all check our gear, and then the lion nods to our Watcher rep. I hear a sound like a howling wind. The mural becomes a mirror. The Primarch and Custodes walk through. The Watchers vanished thereafter. Luther and I stood vigil. Several minutes later. Anon, is your reflection trying to speak with you? That was concerning. No, it's not. Is yours? It's begging me to strike you down. His voice is clear, more confused than worried. What does it refer to me as? My false self is calling you the Outsider and Fate Breaker. Interesting. Both are kind of true titles for me, but I would advise you to ignore the shade. Be ready for a fight. I have a really bad feeling. He just scoffs. I ready my last pistol, as using a bolter in a cave is a really bad idea. Ah, my power sword. I feel something inside my mind telling me to speak to the mirror. I start chanting the Battle Hymn of the Republic in English. Luther seems to understand what I'm doing and starts singing some shanty I don't understand. I look at my false reflection and see it start twitching. Then it melts with a look of horror on its face. I'm pushed to the ground. Snap out of it! Fight! We're surrounded by nine horrors. A blend of eyes, claws and snakes in a humanoid form. One is turning to ash clearly been killed by Luther's blade. I bathe two of the freaks with my flamer ring and start picking myself up while blasting with my las pistol. Things become a frenzy as Luther and I start fighting these horrors. More keep coming. My las pistol runs dry and I truly put my sword work to use. I still have my bolter, but I don't want to cave in. We keep pushing them back, but more keep coming. This doesn't make sense. How are they- wait, what happened to their ashes? Are they reforming? At least not that I can confirm. Something isn't right. I try and look around at the cave in between swings. That's when I see it. Or more like, don't see it. I know I missed a few shots. Why are the walls undamaged? This isn't real. I blink and I'm back to staring at the mirror like a portal. My reflection is gone. Luther is out of it. He's still standing staring at the portal. I try and smack him out of it. He's lost to you anon. I look back at the mirror to see a giant eye instead. I steady my breathing, trying to calm myself. This is a trap. It wants me to speak to it. I bite back the urge to make a snide remark. The back of my mind screams to speak. I will not falter. Your resistance is meaningless. I see past your mind and soul. You're an open book. Blank. That was my name on earth. No, do not falter. Why do you fight for them? These people are not yours. But pages in a story. Surely you would prefer a kinder story. I have a duty to act. You are miserable. You will feel them anyway. Why not at least be happy? They are doomed anyway. I will not feel. If they aren't real, neither are you. The eye cracks. I feel a yell of rage. Luther collapses. The mule returns, but bleeding. There are several thuds behind me. I turn to see the lying kneeling with the custodies being carried on his back. There are several watchers laying in the ground. The custodes is missing a chunk of his arm and chest, but seems alive. The lion lost his left eye and is holding the spear of destiny in his teeth by the snapshaft. 
He just looks at me, nods, and speaks. It's done. The lion and I drag the custodies and Luther out. More watchers arrive to take their own. We drag them through the woods for hours until we find a clearing. I guarded our comrades while the lion gathered wood for a signal fire. It had been well after noon when we exited, but that doesn't make sense. We went in right after dusk, and were only there for an hour, by our timepieces. We kept the fire burning through the night, and the landing craft came to pick us up in the morning. I was dead tired, but refused to sleep until Luther and my custodies were in a med bay. The crew that flew us back was stunned, and it was quite a ride back. I think I earned a day off. So we come to the end of Cup Anon. For the night, I do hope that the author comes back and does write more. I feel like Cop Anon is one of the best 40k fan fictions since the All Guardsman Party, and that's that's quite a pedestal to have. So I do hope the author does come back and continues to write more, and whenever he does, we will cover them. But yeah, if you enjoyed this, definitely check the links down below. Um, the models, subclasses, t-shirts, all that stuff. It really does help us out to no end. If you're not interested in any of that sort of stuff, please consider sharing the video with your friends. It really does. It, look, it is the best way to help us out. YouTube is always a bit of an uphill battle, especially when it comes to the parts of the internet that we enjoy, you know? Hey, look, that's enough from us, as always. Hope you guys enjoyed, and we'll see you next time.